Friday. We made it, Johnny. Yes, we Good did. week here today. Friday, baby. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Hello, friends. Hello, fellow traders. And, of course, everyone else. Welcome to Top Step TV, the biggest and most watched futures trading stream that you will find anywhere. We have each and every day all-star guests, uh, all-star lineup each week. Real traders, real educators to give you 100% transparency and just about anything they do you're not going to find another show here on this planet like what we offer here at top step tv especially when you got the hoga on your team i mean come on it's a it's a blessing <laughs> uh we offer everything in one little package here at top step tv education support good looks and cool swag and of course trade entertainment i'm any horn uh and uh well actually He's Hogue, and I'm Horn. We have an exciting, informative, educational programming for you today and throughout the week. We will be your trading buddy, your trading mentor, newscaster, fellow trader, good friend, and even that voice in your head that keeps telling you a little more persistence, a little more effort, and what seems hopeless failure may turn into glorious success. Basically, keep working to, towards your goals. You'll get there eventually. Let's get ourselves ready for some top-notch, up-to-date market know-how. Johnny, is your game plan ready? Game plan's ready. How about that checkity checklist? Checklist checked. Journal? All ready to go. Ham sandwich. Always prepared. Ham sandwich ready to go. <laughs> All right. Can I have half, please? I'm hungry today. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, no problem. Let's say hello to everybody's friend. That good-looking guy next to me and trading mentor, John, A.K. the Hogue Hoagland. Johnny, good morning. Good morning, Eddie, and good morning, everybody. Happy Friday, April the 12th. Uh, <clears throat> as always, we're going to be focusing on context, risk management, and patience in our trading this morning. Happy Friday. Uh, you know, let me see what these markets have to offer today. You got it. All right, let's dive into the news here. First quarter earnings season starting today with a series of major banks reporting. Uh, also, the crude market set to end the week lower despite elevated Middle East tensions. Looking at crude here right now, um, actually taking some tops here right now off the high, made a new high here in crude, 86.96. So keep an eye on that. Uh, first quarter earnings season set to kick off in overdrive with a number of reports due uh, U.S. banking sector later in the session. Uh, the focus on all the major banks will be how the shifting view on interest rates will impact the funding cost and holding of commercial real estate loans. U.S. stock futures steady today. Uh, besides seeing that some of these markets here, gold, uh, I was talking to Johnny earlier, gold just sort of turning over, looking for a belly rub. We'll see what happens there. Uh, but we did earlier see that the Dow futures were up 45 points, S&P dropped three, and the NASDAQ fell in its belly by 25. Now, yesterday, we saw a sharp rebound in S&P and NASDAQ as the tech shares led a comeback from Wednesday's inflation-fueled sell-off. S&P gained 0.7, nor, uh, NASDAQ 1.7, uh, and closed with the record when the blue-chip Dow Jones closed just lower. So we did see the large caps um, saw $15.8 in outflows in the week uh, to Wednesday, while the stocks in general saw an outflow of 19.6. Bank of America said in its weekly flows, rounding up using the EPFR data. And I read that, I'm like, okay, what is the EPFR data? Do we know that? Anybody know that? Well, uh, EPFR, you ask. It's the data that enables portfolio managers, asset, uh, asset allocators, strategists, and research teams worldwide to better understand where money is moving, how fund managers are investing money, and what impacts those shifts uh, on geographies, sectors, industries, and securities. So that's the EPFR. Johnny, what do you got for us today? All right. Well, as far as economic numbers this morning, at 7.30, the import-export numbers came out. Um, import... Uh, is more expensive. Uh, this is the first time, well, in 2023 and 2022, uh, imports were, <clears throat> were lower, were trending lower. Now they're starting to trend higher again. Export prices 
of course, uh, came out lower than expected. Uh, at 8 o'clock this morning right now, Fed Collins is, is supposed to be speaking. I haven't had a chance to see anything that he has said, if anything, just yet. Uh, I don't see anything here right now. So he is speaking as we are, are speaking here. Uh, at 9 o'clock this morning, the Michigan sentiment is due out. 12 o'clock, another talking Fed. Schmidt is due to talk. There's also the rig count at noon for you crude traders. One thirty. Fed Bostic is due to speak, and the, the final talking Fed of the day at 2.30 is one of the t- other talking Feds daily. The VIX this morning, I saw as, as we were coming into the opening call here, was up about 5%, 15.66 last I checked. The dollar index just under 106 at 105.95 last I checked, and the yield on the 10-year right smack in the middle between 4 and 5 at 4.5%. Yes, uh, we have to be careful today. The, 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 the situation in the Middle East is more and more tense as the days and, the, and seemingly the hours go on. Uh, so just be careful. Make sure you're paying attention. Make sure you're protecting yourself with stops. Uh, anything can happen, ECH traders. Um, let's, let's finish the week strong. Hmm? I'm all for that, Johnny. I'm with you on that. And hopefully mm-hmm. our community and traders are with us always. Uh, crude prices uh, rose today, political risks. Uh, the oil-rich Middle East remained elevated, uh, but are set for weekly losses on concerns over U.S. monetary policy. We did see that the U.S. crude up 1.1%, 85.94 barrel crude, climbed 09 at 90.52. But both contracts uh, are still expected to end the week around 1% lower uh, as the Federal Reserve keeps stepping on us with the interest rates. Um, the the IEA cut its forecast oil demand growth by around 100,000 barrels to 1.2 barrels per day and its uh, monthly report. And uh, Global Watchdog said it's expected uh, of the pace of expansion to decelerate to even further 1.1 million barrels per day. Now, Johnny, um, you like a good cookie, don't you? I do. Who doesn't like a good cookie? <laughs> a good old cookie. Well, an owner of a bakery in Leavenworth, Kansas, is asking customers to chew their cookies with care. Now, she didn't lose a nail. Um, she's hmm. missing a diamond from her wedding ring. Oh, no. So Don Monroe of Sis Sweet Cookies and Cafe. Uh, at some point during the recent work day, she looked down and noticed the center diamond of her wedding ring was gone that she had for 36 years. Uh, her best guess, it came off when she was making a batch of chocolate chip cookies. Yikes. Mm-hmm. Watch, your, watch your teeth, ladies and gentlemen. Either you're going to find that out, or later the next day you're going to find that also saying, oh, oh, something hurts. <laughs> so oh, it's not right. Um, yeah. But anyway, it is, <laughs> it is Friday. Yes, it's Friday. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, James, I just want to give James a prop here, having a great week with James. James, what's our tip of the week? I, obviously, we know it, but what's Friday's? Take a break. Take a break. Have a cookie. Make sure there's not a diamond in it. Overall, overall, folks, rest is essential for traders to maintain their focus, decision-making abilities, emotional stability, and, of course, physical health. And uh, remember, take a break. Even if it's five minutes, get up, stand up, stretch, take a walk, do something. But definitely don't sit behind that monitor from bell to bell. Even though we do have some bell to bellers, speaking of that, hint, hint, something's going to be coming up here very shortly. But uh, take a break. Johnny, what do you got? Yeah, I, I, you know, it's Friday and we all look forward to Fridays, but those of us that are passionate about trading and and continuing to trade, uh, the weekend kind of forces us to take a break, thank goodness, because, you know, I could I could see myself trading all, you know, seven days a week and uh, that would probably wouldn't be that healthy for me. So again, take a break, have a ham sandwich, take a walk, do something a little bit, uh, you know, throughout the day just to keep the blood flowing, keep yourself fresh and to uh, and to uh, pick up that mental capital, right? Yes, sir. All right. Well, without further ado, our Friday charts. Johnny, what do you got for our contestants today? All right. Well, starting as usual with the daily in the S&P is 
the market has really remained range bound all week this week. Uh, we lost 5,700 in open interest on that pop to the upside yesterday. Maybe we uh, saw some trapped shorts down there near the low. That weekly kickoff low yesterday was a really nice opportunity. I'm hoping some of you were able to take advantage of that. Uh, we're still in this kind of upside digestion um, market state. Uh, we're seeing these markets come off pretty good here, heading back towards that kind of tough zone there between the last week's low 51.91 half and, and the weekly kickoff low 51.80 might see some decent opportunities for some executions down around that weekly kickoff low again today. Again, direction is going to be unknown. Uh, and there is a lot of geopolitical tension right now. You got you to gotta keep your eyes and ears open. You got to protect yourself with stops, folks. Uh, so volume was pretty slow yesterday. And not a whole lot of volume on that pushback to the upside. The 30-minute chart looks like this. Okay. So yesterday we tested down to weekly kickoff low. We take we were within just a few ticks of it on the low here, and again, hopefully you were able to take advantage of that level because it really just put in the low. We know this market kind of rallied throughout the rest of the day. The volume again wasn't that great, and we lost open interest. So it's not like new positioning came in yesterday. It was old positioning. It was old shorts probably getting squeezed out on that move to the upside. Uh, late in the late in the session yesterday, the range here on the tenth. Okay, we just kind of reran that whole range, uh, and now we're starting to come off again. Um, the overnight inventory, of course, we can see that is is pretty short at this time. Uh, maybe starting to see some some shorter, weaker hands traders barrel into some shorts, looking for something to happen here today. Uh, the, what this tells me is, you know, if we were to open in the middle of the range from yesterday, I would say repair is likely. We're going to look at the profiles here in, in just a second. And I, I'm going to show you what I mean by repair. So this is the market profile. Okay. This is the profile from yesterday. I'm going to shrink this down a little bit so we can get a little bit better view of this. So, the, you know, this was the, the, the range here on the 10th. Uh, this was the range yesterday. It's a double distribution trend day. And what does that mean? It means that the market started the day with a range here. This range was then rejected and a new range started to accumulate here. So in the market, and by here, I'm just talking about kind of between 52.39 and 52.55 approximately. Uh, so we, you know, we had the earlier distribution. We have the late distribution. If the market opens between them, there is a possibility of what we call repair. Price will come to this distribution, and it will also come to this distribution. Well, look at what happened in the overnight. This is the overnight profile. We started the day at this distribution, and now it looks like we're going to be opening in the lower distribution. So you could say with the overnight range that repair has already occurred. Try and stay patient. The market is going to be opening in the lower distribution and also inside value. So I'm gonna try and stay patient this morning with any opportunities. Um, really kind of looking at the repair area, 52.51 half probably, and an assumed point of control down here of 52.10, 50, 52.10 half, 52, this, just this 52.10 area. And we're now, through that, we've tested both both uh, both uh, areas of distribution from yesterday. Anything can happen now. Anything can happen. We could turn around and and repair those levels in regular trading hours. Again, watch that fifty one eighty weekly kickoff low for some possible opportunities today. If it is revisited, revisited. All right. Um, here's the Nasdaq remaining a range bound six weeks now. Tested to the weekly kickoff high in the NASDAQ yesterday, 18,500. It's coming off of that in the overnight session, right in this, right smack in the middle of the range right now. Market is, is, is looking for new information. Uh, we did have the earnings come out uh, with some of the major banks. Most of them look like they, they beat expectations on those. A lot of digestion going on in the investment world as to what that's going to mean moving forward. And again, we are right at the front edge of earnings season. 
So yesterday, a little bit lower volume. We did add some open interest, 6,800 approximately in the NASDAQ yesterday, indicating some new buying came into this market on that late rally yesterday. And if you were a late buyer and you bought the highs there yesterday up against that weekly kickoff high, you're currently kind of taking some heat, aren't you? If you're a new weaker hands long up here, you're not liking what's going on here. And again, you know, the market much more centrally located inside the range than the S&Ps. S&Ps are, are testing down to the low end of the range as we speak. So the NASDAQ seems to be holding up a little bit better. Taking a look at the 30-minute chart now. All right, so here's, uh, here's you know, yesterday's range. It, it was another double distribution trend day. And this was, this looks more like, quite possible repair from, from, from yesterday's range. Uh, overnight inventory we can see is short. The market is inside range and inside value. So try and stay a little bit patient this morning. Take a look at the profile in the NASDAQ, including the overnight session. Let me smush this down a little bit so we get a little bit cleaner look at this. So this again was the range from yesterday. We had, a, we had an area of distribution with the high end of that distribution, 18273. And then we left that, we rallied really strong, and then we started another distribution of time and volume up here, 18475 up to 18511. 18, Loosely, remember, there's nothing finite in futures trading. These are all loose levels. The market opened hung around in this upper distribution, rejected it, and is now coming back down to, to retest the lower distribution. Again, that lower distribution, 18,273 down to, let's just call it 18,201, 18,200. I would be looking for the market to come to an assumed point of control down here, possibly 18,241 half to repair price back to that level. Uh, the, you know, the, the, again, this is this market looks to be opening between those two distributions, and that's going to lean a lot more towards potential repair. Monday, we'll see how these markets treated these repair areas and how things played out. Uh, crude oil, crude oil. This might be the last day for May crude. Next week's weekly kickoff levels will be the June contract. The, we're, we're the May con the June contract is quickly. Uh, catching up to the May contract as far as volume is concerned. So we'll we'll let you know on Monday morning, you know, how the volume has stacked up from the overnight session and whether you can safely move to the June contract or remain in May. I would say either is probably going to be fine on Monday, but by Tuesday for sure, you should be trading the June contract. It is in rollover. We are seeing some tensions. We are seeing some changes going on uh, fundamentally, possibly in crude oil. Uh, this is what I'm calling the rollover range. We've tested that back up to that 87 level, which was a previous weekly kickoff level that I left on here because I felt it was going to be impactful. Well, it put in the high Monday, put in the high Tuesday. Uh, we're right at that level now. If we can, if we can see some meaningful participation above that level, ninety dollars is the weekly kickoff level for today. I don't know if that's going to happen today. And of course, everybody, please pray for peace. Uh, we, we, you know, we don't want anything, anything getting worse. Okay. Um, so, uh, we added another 19,000 in open interest yesterday. That's 49,000 contracts added in the last three sessions. That my friends is a function of rollover. These, these longer time frame crude traders that are using these products for hedging, they're moving those 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 May contracts into future contracts, and sometimes they leg them on. They'll get into the into the future contract and then get out of the front month contract. So this whole this whole rollover with volume and open interest makes things very blurry. Uh, we're going to take a look at the thirty minute chart here, and even with these big increases in open interest, I'm kind of viewing this as a market that is largely short time frame controlled. We're, you know, we're not seeing. Um, any big moves on this, you know, and, you know, a lot of people are just kind of holding their breath, waiting to see what's going to happen. You know, if there are supply issues, anything like that, of course, that's going to affect the, the, the cost of crude oil. So kind of looking at the balance room, the balance uh, extremes at 87.33 approximately, that's this point of control up here from the fifth 
looks like we've kind of tested to that level already. Our high is 34 right now. So that's one that's the upper extreme of this area of balance. If we can break out and have meaningful participation again, that's when I would look to see this market head up towards that $90 level. Nobody wants $90 crude, but uh, this is uh, this is uh, you know this these are the markets. We don't get to choose where they go. Um, 8480 I'm looking at as the kind of low end of this area of balance here. So if we're going to be trading, you know, balance rules and we're fading the extremes, we're selling against the top or buying against the bottom until proven wrong. Are we going to be proven wrong in our range bound hypothesis today? We don't know. We just have to trade what we see. And if that's one of your hypotheses, you are able to limit risk at the extremes when the market is range bound. And I'm still calling this market relatively range bound really went right to that 8733 level, which is that point of control, which is the upper extreme of the area of balance. Again, if we break out above it, we want to see some good continuation. Okay. All right. Um, the profile yesterday was a, nor a normal variation trading day, very even. Uh, the market, you know, after days like that, the market will have a tendency to go seek other levels to facilitate trade as it is right now. This upper extreme looks very interesting to me. One way or the other, there may be opportunity there. And looking at gold now, the upside auction continues. Volume was a little bit light yesterday, but we did add 18,000 new contracts in that move to the upside yesterday. 18,000 new longs came into this market at, at the highest level it's ever traded at. It's so hard to do that, but in, in certain cases, it's the right thing to do. I'm still giving this auction process a B, a B for how good it's doing. It is doing pretty well. Maybe even a B plus. 2440 is weekly kickoff high. Traders seem to have that that uh, that higher level in their sights today. Uh, 18,000 new contracts yesterday. Man, oh man, this is a really healthy, tasty looking upside auction that has lots of weak structure down below. Boy, if this thing does whirl around, there's a lot of things to go clean up down below, but we can't anticipate that. When, if, that, if, that if that occurs, that's another hypothesis and we'll have to adjust our strategies if that's the case. Overnight inventory, obviously, to the long side. Well, gap rules apply. If we can't close the gap to the range high, from yesterday, which is 237490, we're looking for this market to continue this move to the upside. If you look at the profile, it did put up a late spike. The base of the late spike is 236530. It was a normal variation trading day with a late spike. The late spike rules, well, if the market opens above the late spike, it's indicating acceptance of higher pricing. Well, I could I guess you can say that we've opened above the late spike and it looks like this market is just kind of coiling here looking for the next move is it going to be back, back up towards that 2440 weekly kickoff high or are we going to get a pullback to close the gap which one we don't know we don't know but that late spike indicates and where we are now is indicating continued acceptance of higher pricing Take your deep breath, ladies and gentlemen. It's a long trading day. It's been a it's been a good trading week. I hope for everybody. Make sure you remain humble, grateful, creative, and centered in your trading today. And please, by all means, pray for peace. Be kind to yourselves. Be kind of uh, be kind to others. And uh, let's have a great trading day. I'm with you, Johnny. I'm with you for sure. Um, real quick here, we've got. Uh, I mentioned bell to bell. That we're going to have something coming out next week. All right. Next week. So don't be asking here today. Uh, we will be having that next week. So if somebody asks, uh, uh, be a friend and let them know not today, next week. Don't know when. I honestly don't know, but we will be having it for all you, uh, Bell to Bellers. Um, <clears throat> coming up here for fast markets, Andre Hogue, Coach Dakota. Yes. And Coach J. And we might have a special guest popping in. All right, all right, all right. And it's the only <laughs> clue I'm going to give you. Um, power players. We got Dolby. Uh, Peter Tuckman is going to join us today here with Dolby. And then after that, uh, Robert and myself uh, will join Dolby to see if we can put some trades on. Jack and Brooke for top quiz. We got uh, Roast My Trades. Remember, we're doing that uh, Friday. So I'm going to join Mick on that. 
And remember, it's not all about the bad trades. We're going to see some good stuff. So um, we'll have that at, uh, that's going to be at uh, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock high noon central time. Uh, group coaching with Robert and JD. End the day here. We got Robert Hogan Henry for Strategy Lab. And to end the day, the dynamic duo, Dolby and Andre and Max Maserati. We're going to take a break right now. We'll be right back with Fast Markets. Johnny, meet you at the coffee machine. And All welcome right. to Fast Markets here on Top Sub TV. Sorry, ID, you're going to ring the bell. Do it, do it, my <laughs> man, Eddie. I love you, brother. Happy my Friday, bad. man. My bad, I was man. Gonna, I was going to say, let's get our cookies in the gates. <laughs> and we're going to be opening up here very shortly. Thank you, Eddie. I'm Thank sorry, you, man. We, we literally talked about it 30 <laughs> seconds before we got on air, and I just, man, <laughs> my apologies, man. <laughs> Welcome to Fast Markets, everybody. We got an all-star cast today. We got John Hogan up top there. We got Coach Jay, and we got Coach Dakota. What's up, gentlemen? Hey. What's going on? How we doing? Okay, okay, John. Let's go to you first, man. Uh, Pre-market open right now. Stocks are a little bit down. We we're talking the – no, no. They just open here. All right, let's go, guys. We're open. Uh-oh, yeah, we did. We just opened. Hey, it is. Oh, John. Do anybody you have a trade on right now? I'm flat. Nothing on right now. Nothing right now. I'm going to wait the first three minutes of the opening range uh, to play out uh, before I take anything. Okay. Cool. Man, the market's been in a big sell-off. Is that right? Yeah, it's it has. Been, yeah. It's, yeah, pretty much since last night. Uh, that 500 level couldn't hold in the NASDAQ um, overnight. Dakota, right where you were taking that short yesterday, um, we rejected <laughs> at that level again uh, and sold right back down. If we keep going, there might be room down. Yeah, to one of those we'll where you're like, happens. man, you you wish we could have just hold, held on to it, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. But we'll get some opportunities this morning. 
opportunity yes, to short it? What are you looking we at? Uh, we'll see how it plays out. Um, right now, we have uh, on a 30 minute chart, what I had was uh, 18,360 was a level, which was pretty much 50% of uh, where we shot up from yesterday. Uh, we held it initially this morning, but then we broke through it pretty strong today. I'm going to see if we can bounce back up towards that level. If it doesn't hold, I'll take a short from around there. Okay. Yeah. So you're just looking range. short. One, it looks like we're going to sell off. Um, man, it's yep. been quite the day. I'm just waking up. Like I said, I, I did slow markets <laughs> last night. I'm not a morning person at all. So it might take me a few minutes to, to wake up, get everything ready. So give me a minute, guys. You could keep everyone entertained. Got <laughs> to warm up. Yeah. 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 Trying to get into the rhythm. <laughs> That's right. Prime the pump, baby. Prime the pump. I like it. John, opening well, range. the one-minute opening range has traded both sides, so I, I, I did not take it for a reason, and that's I was looking for it to, to not work today. Hmm. Fair and understood. Uh, Jay, um, after yesterday's double distribution trend day, you know, there's a time, yeah. there's volume and time down here. There's volume and time up here. Right. You know, I, lo I look for if the market opens between those two distributions, the market to repair to at least one of those distributions. It Makes really sense. did that overnight. I mean, we I have to see if it happens, you know, during the day session today. We did open right. in range inside value. So, you know, that to me is a is a sign to just, you know what, the better trade locations are coming as the day goes on. So I'm trying to be really patient here. Now you're yeah, looking at I, I definitely uh, agree with you. You're looking at this 18,300 somewhere level for a. Uh... Yeah, I'm looking at right, right now, 18,300 held pretty well there. Uh, right now, for whatever reason, I'm leaning towards the short side. Uh, I'm going to take whatever the market gives me uh, and I'll let this three uh -huh. minutes play out. Uh, but if we get up towards 18,350, 18,360, and I don't see buyers coming in there, I might start a short. I see what I think I see what you're seeing. Just that 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 low there before it kind of popped a little bit. What was that about? Yep, six five thirty this morning. Correct. And it's it's right in the middle of the uh, single TPOs there, so there's a value gap there. I took a long. I'm in long in my live account. That didn't take long. Good. Let's go. Yeah, it didn't take long. <laughs> he woke up. He woke yeah, up. Yeah, no, I was trying to share my screen. I'm long my live account. Three contracts. Eighteen oh. two ninety one and a half. Eighteen two. Nice trade. 291 and oh nice 291s well you, you picked the bottom there didn't you damn son <laughs> he woke up he sure did we got 82 percent long in the ym here guys 75 percent long es 82 percent long nasdaq so heavy long bias on all three of the equities here we do have that uh michigan sentiment number at, at uh at nine right Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. Um, sure. While we're speaking of it, Eddie, real quick, while uh, we watch this uh, long play, we'll hear Dakota. Eddie, if you're there, what do we got for uh, eco numbers today? Yes. And speakers. Um, coming up in about 25 minutes, we got our sediment coming Michigan consumer. They're looking at 79, pr prior 79.4. Also, 12 o'clock noon for you crude traders, if it matters, U.S. Baker's oil rig count will be happening at 12 o'clock. And we got the CFTC later on in the afternoon. Not much today, but mm -hmm. uh, you never know what's going to happen. Awesome. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, Andre. The man. Sorry about that intro, Eddie, man. We talked about 30 seconds before the damn <laughs> oh, I tell you, it's oh. a, I love you, man. That was, yeah. that was, Beat myself up about that stuff. That's good. That's good broadcasting. Just having friends and <laughs> live TV. It's we got crude TV. oil five, five cents off the highs here with a high of 87.42. Obviously, there's a major bid coming here in oil with uh, what's happening in the Middle East. Tensions are rising. Something sounds like it's inevitable. So we have to be very cognizant of what's happening over there. Yes. Uh, your long, long equities, John, sh uh, short crude. You can keep it light and tight for the time being because we are susceptible to headline risk right now. There's just no other way around it. Big time. Big yeah. time. And remember, everybody, pray for peace. I'm, I'm gonna, just going to keep saying that. That's all we can do no, is pray for peace. Oh shoot! Gold yeah. above twenty four hundred. I see overnight, man. They love to make new highs overnight in gold. Yeah. All right. All the As commodity prices. Commodity prices. I mean, eventually this is going to start leaking into these inflation readings. I think. Obviously, PPI came in a little lower than expected yesterday, but oil creeping up, gold creeping up, the other precious metals creeping up. Eventually, it's going to bleed in. But uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Yeah. Import prices rose for the first time since twenty twenty three and twenty twenty two. There we go. So I mean, there's also an inflationary signal right there. Inevitable. 
Mm. All right, Dakota, we're above that 18,300 level here. Yeah, I, I'm seeing if we could hold 300. Th this 300. is a key area in the market. Um, if we're just going to make a higher low from the open or if we're going to br just break down. It looks like we're going to make a higher low. I I'm feeling really bullish about this. Maybe we could get a push back into the 350s is what my my main target is. It's 18350s will be my last target for this trade. I'm managing it. I have my finger on the button. We'll see. 350, roger that. Yeah, 350, maybe 360. That's the next resistance that I am seeing on the long side. So cool. um, I might trail this one up to see if I could catch 18360. But this is a key area. If we do continue to push up, then you know I, I feel like we could start to build some bullish momentum um, in terms okay. of just price action and market structure. You guys can see on my chart, um, we have this pivot here at the open. And essentially, this is another key area over here on the five minute. There's that one pivot. We had the, the five minute opening bar, like you guys say. And if we do break above this and we start breaking out, then technically we have a higher low and a higher high ever since we opened up here in the New York session. And um, to me, it would be buy. Yep. Yeah. Dakota, okay, when we look at you. Go ahead, John. Target. Please your target on on your five minute chart there that long wick there yeah, right is here. your target right there that's it yeah, right yep that's yeah i might close them out as we get up into this area that showed some resistance before um mm -hmm. i'm in three contracts so that gives me the flexibility to close out partial and hold on to mm -hmm. run hold on to one very nice well, you really, you really doubt, you really low ticked that that entry. That was that was that's, a, that's yeah, that's impressive. a great, great entry there. <laughs> yeah, damn, it's like, it's no, like Dakota no tells the market there. what to do. There we go. <laughs> nope, not even close, guys. There's a lot of luck involved sometimes. You never know, right? You never um, know, trying man. to position myself to where if we do get a turnaround or a pivot, um, I'm in a good position. And it looks like we just ran some stops, and we could. Mm -hmm. Just push higher. Got a uh, 76 long YM, seventy six percent long YM, seventy percent long ES, seventy four percent long Nasdaq, fifty fifty in crude, fifty fifty in gold. Dakota, what what I'm so impressed by you is it, it's it's so simple. You're you're not overcomplicating things. It's just not at all. You know, higher highs, higher lows. Right. We See how clean his charts are. His charts are very yeah. very clean. Yeah, I mean, yep. The kiss, right? Keep it super simple. Yep. The less I have to look at, the less I have to think about, and then the easier it is for me to to manage uh, manage my risk. Hundred percent, Jay. What are you looking at over there? I know you said you set out the first three minutes. Obviously, we're nine minutes into the session. Anything catching your eye? What yep. are you looking for in terms of levels? Hey, new highs and crude here. So, trying to be patient here in the equities. Uh, one thing I look at with the opening ranges, um, we haven't broken out and closed outside of an opening range yet on the three minute. Uh, and then I anchored VWAP to the New York session open, and it's yeah. you can see it, it's right in the middle of it, uh, which mm. to me means balanced market fade the extremes until it, it until it breaks. Uh, so I'm I'm waiting for that. Uh, so I may take a short at the high of it and a and a, and a long at the low of it. Um, but right now we're right in the middle. Uh, Going to be pretty hands off with the equities. I do see a setup. Uh, I talk about this market all the time. Maybe not a fast market uh, market. Uh, but lean hugs, uh, I have a long in there at the half of the opening range. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I love it. 150-point <laughs> risk. Uh, I'll just put it on, and I'll try to leave that one on all day. But Sling them hogs, that. baby. Love it, love it, love it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I got something I want to show you, uh, if <laughs> I can find it, if I have it here. Uh, about about hogs, John? Yourself. Let's see if I can find it. <laughs> Look at that. Who says we don't trade all markets here on Top Sat? We got hogs. We got a bid being placed in hogs right now, baby. I love it. Uh, we're not just yeah, only we'll equity just traders here. Stuff. Come on. Uh, what about you, Dre? You seeing anything? Nothing yet. Uh, nothing yet. Okay. I do like the. I would say I'm a perma bull, but with what's going on with the headline risk, it's uh, it's you know tiptoeing. We're tiptoeing around right now. Yeah. I mean, Washington crude continue to make new highs on the march to ninety bucks a barrel. I mean, eventually it's going to creep into equities and push some downside break. pressure. Let's go, Dakota. We're starting to get that break. We now have a, a really good chance to push back up to the 20s. Yeah, let's the, the, the only thing I'm seeing right now in the NASDAQ that I, I, I like the long side 
too, right? Um, yep. I think there's room up to that 360 where I was looking to potentially take a short. The only thing I don't like is the volume right now. Um, yes. Right now on three minute candles, we're trading less than 4,000 contracts. Um, normally on the NASDAQ, I'm looking for somewhere around 5,000 uh, to give us a direction, but it makes sense. Uh, we had huge moves last uh, yesterday and we have a number coming out at 10 o'clock. So I could see market participants waiting for that number. Um, it almost feels like a wait for the initial balance day uh, and then take a trade okay. after that. And when's the initial balance established? Uh, 10.30 Eastern, 9.30 Central. Thank you. Boy, gold trade 2400. Man, I, I was tempted to add my long right here, but I, right. I didn't. I'm going to continue to be patient. I don't want to get in too big. Yeah, you can see we started to break this downtrend. Um, if we could hold this, and as soon as we, uh, this has a really good chance to break back up into the 20s, um, is what I'm looking for. Um, if we could continue to hold this and hold above this support line. This is on the 100 tick. Uh, I don't trade the New York session very often. Um, so this is the first time I've traded it in a while. <laughs> I got I a feeling we're going to so see. I, I, I got be. a feeling we're going to see more and more of you on the uh, train the New York session here, <laughs> Mr. Dakota. Hey, but actually, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, man. You got right. the, uh, Mr. Slowmark. New. All right, here we go. Uh, gold making new highs here. Well, I scratch that. I'm the way to make new highs. Dollar off. Two cents off the highs here in crude. I mean, these asset price. I mean, these commodity prices are just rallying hard. Yes, they tricky. are tricky. You got silver almost at $30. Uh, silver's pretty expensive, though. Uh, yeah, new highs, it, new highs. Wow, gold on the move, guys. Just really about three bucks there in the last 30 seconds. <laughs> wow, it is, it, look at gold. Gold is on the move, yeah, guys. Like auction is doing very well. Holy moly. Okay. Nice catch, Lido Bombs. Yeah. All right. Jay, in your honor and uh, Coach yep. Paul's honor, I got to show you something. You can put it on All my right. charts for just a second. Got them hogs, baby. Sounds good. Exuie, baby. Aw, <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at those can things. On a T-shirt. On <laughs> a T-shirt, right. My dad, uh, my dad had a really good uh, hog trade back in the day. Yeah. And one one of his buddies is well was Orion Samuelson. Anybody know who Orion Orion Samuelson is? Orion Samuelson. No. Why is it named no, something? He was on WGN Radio for years and yes, years. He did like yes. the top of the morning shows. And uh, he was our next door neighbor, so he gave my dad this this picture that uh, that that hung by our, Hogs our are beautiful our pool table in our basement for years and years. And when when we when they moved, he he kept it, and I kept it. And when he passed away, I took it. That's cool. It's hanging in my office right now. <laughs> That's dope. Yeah, That's I'm, I'm going to cancel my bid. Uh, it actually, the market's leaving without me. Uh, we closed outside of the opening range in hugs and just not stopping. So cancel that order. If we get a pullback towards the high of the opening range and it holds, uh, then I'll go ahead and mm -hmm. enter another order. Okay. Hey, Andre, are you going to join me during slow markets with a house account so we could do I, kind of uh, a heard whispers about this. I, session? I think, we could, I think we could do something about that. Yeah, let's talk off air. But yes, I think uh, that could be done hopefully next week. Let's take a look at the calendar and see what's popping on the economic calendar and earnings calendar. Yes, let's do it. You got I mean, the that, that's you, you know, um, we have a house account access. We have the Nikkei at night. I mean, yeah, it's no one's setting up for a perfect storm. No one's watching us. No one's no no none of the boss are watching us either, Dakota. We can party. So we can party. So we can They're party. all sleeping. <laughs> yes, let's definitely do that next week. I'm looking forward to it for sure. Mm. How did uh, how did slow markets go yet last night? Um it was good. I got long the Nikkei. It you know, it worked out really well. Um I had a stop loss. I moved to in profit and it it hit, which is fine. Um <laughs> Yeah, so right now I'm sitting up about eight thousand dollars in my live account. Um, oh, man, in, including yes. this um, in fuego, dude, mm -hmm. absolutely in fuego. This trade's looking really good. Uh, yeah, it is. Put it. Yeah, S and P's catching a bid here. Mm -hmm. Dow, Dow kind of stuck in the mud a little bit, kind of like yesterday, kind of like all week actually. Mm. 
Nasdaq looking for some momentum here. Maybe we can follow the spoo uh, spoos. Got to quit calling it the spoos, John. No one knows what the spoos are anymore. The S&Ps. <laughs> right. S&Ps. <laughs> <laughs> S&Ps trying to see if we can drag the Nasdaq and Dow to the upside with it here. Yeah, well, I, I think we're going to keep breaking to the upside maybe. We, we're down almost 1%, right? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Here we go. Here it is. Here's that push. Um, now we're nice going. Here. Testing that Dude, opening range. If we do, like I said, 360 is what I'm looking for. I might close out one for take profit here in just a moment, um, right into the 330s. And then hold on to the to the next two. Nice trade. So, gonna you get out at the ask, getting out at the uptick. <laughs> so there's one. I'm out of one. Beautiful. Great trade, man. Also known as the offer. Yep. Offer ask. Yep. <laughs> yep. Exactly. S and P's creeping up to view app here. I got a view app at fifty two twenty. Currently trading mm -hmm. 5217, 5218 ish. Let's watch this NASDAQ, though. Let's get another push here for Dakota. Let's see if the Dow can wake up as well. We got this little five minute range it's been in. Cruising a bit of a pullback off the highs, trading 8733 with a high of 8760. And gold looking to make another push to the upside, just about a dollar off the highs. Here we go. Gold making another run here. All time highs of 242180. Currently trading about 90 cents beneath that. I know Lido Bombs caught that move to the upside. Well done. Might have another one going mm -hmm. here. Nice job. Yep. Uh, there's a question here, Dakota. Do, uh, they're asking if you use VWAP. Obviously, you do not. It's not on your charts. <laughs> no, nope. The way you see my charts is the way I trade. Dakota I style, went through a man. phase, though, Hogue. I, 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 of course, just like I'm sure... Almost Try everybody everything. else went through a phase going through so many different indicators. But yeah. uh, ultimately, yep. after all this, I'm just basic, simple price action is is good enough for me. It doesn't mean that they're wrong. I have nothing no. against And I say if, if the indicator works for you and it helps you make a decision and manage your 100%. risk, then 100% go for it. Nice job, Andy. Catching that long land queue. Yeah, I've blown plenty of accounts. Um here at top step uh, i've blown my personal life accounts <laughs> i've lost oh, well over a hundred thousand before yeah that's live to tell, live, just live to part tell of the game you. isn't it P part of the journey right yes it is yeah are I've you lost, really a trader I've... if you haven't been cur curled up in a ball crying in the corner of your room <laughs> <at one point? laughs> you have to be you have to be i mean <laughs> <laughs> Very well put. <laughs> Thirty-five years at this, I've been I've been to the mountain yeah. and I have been to the valley several times. Yeah. It is just it is just something uh, that uh, is wonderful when it's going well and horrible when it's going bad. But yes. I can't stop. I know, man. We can't quit it. We come back for more. Yep. It's too much fun. Right, we got a number here in 10 minutes. University of Michigan sentiment number. Eddie will jump in when we get that. Yes, coming here in uh, in a few. All right. Jibo says, you are not a real trader if you don't have the scars. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah, like Mike Tyson says, everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. They get punched in the face, man. <laughs> It's the, it's such a perfect. It's so true. Yeah, it is true. It's so true. Oh, I know exactly how this should go. It yeah, it's exactly. <laughs> well, here we go with gold, guys. Uh, we just uptick to new highs, all time highs. I've got a feeling oh. we're gonna be saying that a lot today, unless something. It's the news and reverses. We did see making new highs, all time highs. Yeah, not all time highs, but new day highs yesterday, midday. Then we just see a sell off, just to see a rally again, making new all time highs in Power Hour. We'll see if we can continue that trend here in gold. Crude seen a bit of a sell-off here. If you think we've got an uptrend going, this might be your pullback to get long. Right up to uh, last week's high, 87.63 in there in crude oil. Yeah. Oh, yeah also, by the way, I hope... NASDAQ price action, too. 
I'm gonna put the levels in. I'm gonna I'm gonna put the levels here in chat. Yesterday the levels were spot on. Everyone, make sure you have these levels up somewhere on your uh, some real estate on your screen. It's a must. These numbers, these levels have been hitting. Whether it's eighteen thousand five hundred. 5250 in the S&Ps or to the down tick. We even saw that anomaly trade the uh on the close yeah. yesterday, John. What was it? 524175, right? I want to say. We went right to the damn thing to the tick, all right? Him and Dan were talking yeah. about this in Power Hour. Sure shit about yep. 15 20 minutes later. 75. We, yes, 75, yes. Yep. It, to the damn tick. Make sure you have these make sure you have these uh in your uh, in your in your uh, screen there. Very valuable. Uh, I just got long one platinum. Um, just Hello. risking the other Ooh. side of the, other side of the opening range. There, uh, it looks like it has a little bit of catch up to do if the metals are going to keep running. Um, so, uh, long one there. I like the fact that the VWAP is leaving the opening range, uh, and we're testing the high of it right now, uh, and then looking for the daily high uh, as a target. Uh, I'm not sharing that screen. That that one's over here. But there you go. A trade there. Very interesting. Nasdaq's pushing the highs now. I think we yeah, could a break above 30s and up, okay. into the 40s. Let's see if we could see those 40s play. We're breaking a new pivot high, or at least we're testing it anyway. New high is gold. Unreal. <laughs> it is. This is everything's uh, going up. Then, huh? Like everything's going oil, up. <laughs> gold, oil, oil, Nasdaq. Well, not Nasdaq. Um, since the market opened, yeah. anyway. Yeah. Man, new highs gold. We'll be saying What's that a lot. Twenty four, twenty three, twenty four, twenty four. Now, scratch that. Twenty four, twenty four. Two thousand four hundred twenty four dollars for an ounce. That twenty four karat gold. Twenty four forty is weekly kickoff high. Here you go. Get those levels up. Yesterday. Uh, Someone SMP's asked if we're, if we're getting new highs in gold. Yes, we are. Yeah. If we're getting new highs in gold, why aren't the equities pushing down? Question. Good question. Things don't always have to be correlated, have to right? Sense. Or... Yeah, no, Jay, uh, <laughs> we're on the same thing yesterday with also with crude oil prices approaching 90 bucks. I think Dolby said once we get in the $90 range, it's kind of a yellow flag. Right. And uh, as we approach 100 bucks, it's more of a red flag. And eventually, equities are going to have to take note of where these, uh, these commodity prices are. We're getting there, I think. We're getting there. It's inevitable. Yeah, it seems like... At least every single night, there's a you know one or two traders that ask me like, is Nikkei correlated with this? Is gold correlated with that? And do I look at correlation? And to be honest, even though there are some great traders that do trade based off correlation or spreads or you know whatever they have, I hardly ever look at other markets and how they affect the market I'm trading. I just keep it as simple as possible. And you know what? We're making new highs in the session and. This is the market I'm trading, and this is the market right. I'm going to focus on. Fair enough. But I think to that point, though, Dakota, you do have to be somewhat cognizant of what other markets are doing around you. Of course, there's not a direct correlation. Correct. Like, oh. I will agree with that, Andre. Is it, 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 you do need to be aware of what's going on, but from whether or not as that as, affects my trade. Right. As, as far as a one for one trade, no, absolutely not. All right, we got the Dow turning around here, moving to the downside. NASDAQ still catching a bid. We're seeing that divergence that we've been seeing the last few weeks between the Dow yep. and uh, the other two, the S&Ps and NASDAQ. Seem to have a mind their own. Eventually, they'll kind of get their act together and start uh, trading with a bit of a correlation. But for these open the first hour of the trade, nah. Kind of, they just yeah, kind of do their own we're thing. We're into the 30s. The 18330s yeah, in NASDAQ. Yes, we are. The um, Dow is on the, uh, is, has been really under pressure lately. A lot of the big cap stocks have seen a lot of outflows lately. Gotcha. Thank you, John. Hey, John, no, when we get a second. About it this morning on the opening call. Yes. When we get a second, you mind taking a look at some of them, the Mag 7, Mag 4, Fabulous 4, whatever they're called. Got them. Just to see if we can <laughs> kind of break it down. Apple screaming to the upside. Right? Higher. Well, it started yesterday. Yes. Yep. That's good. Yep. It's up around 178. Damn. Gonna buy from one plus than one fifty. Yep. 
Uh, that's really the only thing that's moving. Uh, that's Microsoft is a little soft. Uh, five video a little remaining. bit soft this morning. Meta a little bit soft this morning, but Apple is just screaming to the upside. Okay. Thanks, John. Mm -hmm. uh, Taking a quick look at tilt here. 76% long bias in the NASDAQ. 73% long bias in gold. Everything else is in the 50-50 area. You just heard Eddie... Here's the five-minute warning till University of Michigan sentiment number. University of Michigan sentiment number. Is that what you said? I did say mm -hmm. that, yes. It's, hmm. uh, for whatever reason, it does carry weight. It can carry weight, I should say. Yeah, it can. Let's see here. It gets a... A, a red um, I saw that thunderbolt on financial juice. So that's saying that it, it can be impactful. <laughs> so <Yep>. interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Red means important. <laughs> yep. <laughs> hey, Jay, how's that platinum? How's that platinum trade looking? Uh, it's all right. I'm down eight ticks right now. Uh, just okay. kind of hanging out. It feels like everything is, is waiting for this number to come out. Um, all right. But just hanging out right now. Up on my screen, I have the wow. NASDAQ, but Platinum's just hanging around that range. Yep. I'm the same. I'm just hanging out with my two contracts long here on the NASDAQ. Um, nothing's changed. Market structure still is showing me that we could continue to push higher. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it's ever since we opened up, we've been buyers, right? You know, market's been trying to push higher. Mm -hmm. We have... Uh... Alphabet, Google hit two trillion in market value. Nice, fifteen percent rally this year alone. Jeez. Man, I got all my money parked in bonds too. I could be getting fifteen percent. Oh god! You said you get fifteen percent annual year yield right? on that, Andre? No, bonds are doing like five percent. It's garbage compared oh. to fifteen percent already in Google. Mm -hmm. Okay, but it's obviously a little bit more risky. Okay, less than two minutes, guys. Like. Less than two minutes. Right at the top of the hour. Mm -hmm. We did have Collins talking just after 8 o'clock this morning. He says he now sees yeah. the Fed cutting later than previously thought. Uh-oh. Um, BlackRock CEO is saying he sees maybe two rate cuts this year, but he doesn't get to make that decision. No, he doesn't, John, does he? <laughs> no, he doesn't. You guys, not. Hope, did you see BlackRock? I think now has like over $10 trillion of assets under management. Oh, man. I saw they just bought that's some $10 billion real estate. Well, that's nothing. About, that's nothing. Talk about too nothing. big to fail. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, NASDAQ testing the highs again of the session. Uh, I'm still looking for a break into the 40s. Oh, there, there we're getting some of it now. Yeah. There you go. S&P's traded right to VWAP. Uh, Come off that a little bit. Well, we touched 40s for a moment. Eddie Morse code in when you got it. I got it. Got your brother. My man. I owe you one after that open, man. I still feel bad about it. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Literally 30 seconds before that, we talked about it. <laughs> Jumped in, ready to go. Man, uh, Paul, I was are like, you seeing anything you like? It's getting thin. Look how thin this is. Look how thin the S&Ps are getting for this Michigan number, John. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unbelievable. There, look, yeah. Look how this. Oh, here we go. Jeez. Yep, there we go. All right, coming in here at 77.9. They were looking at 79. Ooh, and nice. um, what that's going to tell us here is if it is lower, um, expected to be taken negative bearish for the U.S. dollar. Anything higher, obviously, positive for the dollar. Back to you, Andre. Thank you, Eddie. It's kind of a mess there, guys. Yeah, yeah I'm out now. I'm yeah. out now. That, was the that stinks. Yep, so I'm done. Uh, I'm flat on the market, up 7,400. <laughs> oh, nice. How does he do it? 
<laughs> He's a wizard. Yes, he is. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. Let me know another end. Yeah, let me another trade coming up, Dakota. But nice trade. Nice Played job. it smart. No gambling. How did moving uh, platinum over there, Jay? Anything move on that number? Uh, or is it just kind of shrugging we're off. We're still in the range. Still cool. in the range. I'm, I'm risking about two hundred bucks on this one. Uh, the low of the opening range, uh, but it's holding right now. Just let that All one right. play out. I do like the fact that on that drop in the Nasdaq, we held. The opening range there though 50 percent of the the three minute opening range looks like we wicked right down to it right around 300. Uh, what does that tell you uh if this you is want, still pretty strong <laughs> if you guys want to see i'm not the best trader look at my chart i got stopped out at the bottom tick of that <laughs> <laughs> happens to the best of us man how about it yeah I, I was the liquidity there <laughs> mm. so eh, hey happens. Shout out to Backer no, Sultan here. Out. Just past the combine. Boom. Good job, Backer. Nice. Boom. Good job. Yeah, it did. It took, <sighs> took it right down to the, to, the, to, the, to the tick, to the top of the one-minute opening range there in the NASDAQ. Yep. Hogue, are you seeing anything you like in the S&Ps? Um, well, I, I mean, I like that. I like that, that, that VWAP tap because yeah. it's, it's pretty close to the high of the IB from yesterday. Okay. But I'm, I'm, you know, busy watching, watching you guys. <laughs> right. <laughs> Quick update on the poll here. Five minutes in, uh, do you use the market correlation in your trading? 52% say no, 48% say yes. Close to 50-50. I don't think you need to use it in your trading. Just like we were saying with Dakota here, just, just be aware of what's going on in other markets. Obviously, and we always we have that chart, that matrix we can share in a little bit that uh, kind of shows you where the correlations have been happening over the last 30 or 60 days. John, yeah, John introduced me to this chart. It's fascinating. I'll just on the weekends, I'll just take a look and just stare at it on a Sunday or something, just stare <laughs> at it, see if anything pops up. <laughs> Right, try and get it's something out cool. of it. Right, yeah. There you go, John. Thanks for putting that link in there. Give that thing a look yep, uh, when the market's slow down. We got new highs here in gold, uh, twenty four twenty five. My God, is we are just pumping higher. But uh, yeah, that link that John just put in the chat there. Give that thing a look over this weekend. Let's see where correlations may or may not be happening. Sometimes you think there's a correlation happening, but you got the data here to back it up in that matrix. Really good stuff. Really good share. You can also you can also do it by time frame. It's like a thirty day correlation, sixty yep. day correlation. 90 and 120 day correlation you can see you can see how they change with the time yep. frame i love that damn matrix all right got sellers here in s p sellers in nasdaq you did not get bottom ticked anymore there dakota as we are selling nope. off in the nasdaq so nice <laughs> out there that was looking like a freaking home run trade until that number came out it's always looking yeah, good it happens. it's not yes it does especially in those Nikkei's selling off as well. Nikkei's down almost 2%. Overseas news. Overseas news. I don't see it yet. Eddie, if you see anything coming out overseas. Right you here. said un hostile aircraft intrusion. Okay. Hostile aircraft intrusion alerts sounding in northern Israel. All right, guys. Mm. We don't have – all right, we got liquidity here in the S&P. It's a 450 lot on the 5205 bid. That's the biggest order we've seen in there. In a while, it's super thin. 450 on the bid at 5205. I said that wrong, John. 05 on 450, I should say. Other than like that, that, Andre, look at how thin this dome I is, know. like all the way up and down. What do we do? I know. You know, it's 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 geopolitical risk is what it is. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. Is that okay? You know what? That makes perfect sense. That's exactly what it is. No one wants to be susceptible. No one wants to get blindsided. Yeah, it is. Uh, Mike stands tough to trade right now. It is. So you got to be nimble, maybe dumb down the size a little bit. Uh, it's just the environment that we're in trading. Um, we don't have a take one way or another. We don't trade the politics behind it. We trade the economics behind it. And this just is what the, this is the environment we're trading. So like John said, very, very thin. Geopolitical risk will do that. So we need to trade accordingly and adapt. It is so thin. It's almost looking like NASDAQ. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> getting there, man. We're getting there. Uh, 
Nasdaq's pretty thin right now too. Uh, Man, it was like one up. I'm not seeing any anything that's like usually there's like a fifty somewhere, a fifty lot somewhere within you know twenty five points of where the market's trading. I don't see anything mm-hmm. like that uh, okay. up until four hundred. Good stuff, Jay. Yeah, it's uh, this is what we're trading in, guys. Yep. We need to adapt. Oh. Also, the NASDAQ is sitting right in the middle of that three minute opening range. Um, so r- range bound traders, uh, this might be the opportunity to identify what the extremes of that range is uh, and then fade the extremes of it, right? Buy at the low, sell at the high until that pattern breaks. Um, cool. Cool. I'm a, a trend trader. I like to identify a trend and right now there isn't one. Um, so mm-hmm. I'm not expecting much as far as breakouts go. Uh, 20 point moves here and there. Uh, seems like what we're Don't getting right now. Uh, and like we said to start the call, maybe maybe wait for that initial balance and then we get some more opportunity outside of there. Good stuff, I, like the way, I like the way you think. Yeah, good stuff there. It's just hands on my butt for me. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was the yeah, trade man. for this morning. It didn't play out the best. I mean, I still made money, but... Um, it was looking really pretty too. For me right now. I'll take it. John's, you think, John, is this going to be a, like a see profit, take profit kind of day then with what with what we're dealing I with I would here? think so. I yeah. would think so. You know, that yeah. in the S&Ps that move up to VWAP and the, the IB high from yesterday, that was a really nice opportunity, but I'm watching watching these guys. and But right now, as thin as it is, and with, you know, uh, alarms going off in Israel, I'm like, yeah. I'm going to keep my hands on my butt, I think. Hands on the butt. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're yes. session loads. Session loads. Grabbing my ask. <laughs> oh, your ask. Well done. <laughs> well, the done. Oh, trader was saying that. <laughs> twos. Wow. It's volatile right now. Ooh, baby. Very thin. Seventy <laughs> percent long gold here. 66% short in the ES. John, when you have a chance, let's just do a Delta reading to see if we've got anything brewing as the day progresses. Minus 100, and, minus 100 in the S&Ps. Ooh. Positive 200 in the NASDAQ. Okay, not a whole lot going on there. <laughs> no. But we'll keep an eye on that just, as the day progresses. We just see, what, minus 20,000 yesterday? Minus, or was that two uh, days ago? Sometimes we see big, big days ago, I think, yeah, it was yeah. minus 24,000 at the end of the day. Yes, it was. Yesterday, the day it ended minus 8,300. 8, yep. Thank you. And today, nothing. I mean, we're on the lows here. We got no delta, no nothing. Tilt is getting a little short, 65 in the S&Ps. It's just Uh-oh. coming over the wire. Hostile aircraft intrusion alerts sounding in northern mm-hmm. Israel. Uh, we'll see if we can confirm anything like that. But uh, as mm-hmm. you guys are expecting... Um, expect the unexpected. Well said, Eddie. That's exactly it. All right, dip yeah. beneath fifty two hundreds in the S. Well, scratch that. Just I say that we go fifty two hundred one bid. <laughs> <laughs> and I know I'm on a ten second delay, so by the time this hits YouTube, I will be way off as we're trading fifty two hundred two. <laughs> Crude oil played out nicely last night. You guys were talking about chart patterns in the morning um crude oil has a beautiful chart pattern that i was looking at during my slow markets class and sure enough it played out really nice as a bullish flag here on the 60 minute chart we broke up above it and yeah if you guys are brave enough to take that pattern it worked out pretty well or it's still working out yeah anything popping in platinum there jay Nope, kind of still just hanging out in this range. The low of the opening range held. Uh, I'm probably seven ticks away from my stop, um, oh. but still going to hold on to it. What do you think the average duration of your trades are, Jay? Are you a long-term uh, trader? Well, a, I don't – go on, please. That's a good question. Uh, if I'm trading the equities, uh, it's you know anywhere from three to five minutes usually. Uh, yep. but, uh, with something like platinum, uh, or if it's in the hogs, uh, just kind of innately the way those markets move, uh, you're going to have to wait a little bit longer. Uh, mm-hmm. I I'm still working on being patient with those moves. Um, so those are anywhere from like a, a half an hour, uh, to maybe an hour, uh, gotcha. if I can't hold them. Gotcha. Sometimes it's, it's not doing what you want though. And you just go ahead and cut it. Uh, I'm going to be patient with this one. I'm okay with the risk and, uh, we'll just leave it on. Yeah. 
Uh, Trader AJ was asking about that range we were talking about in the NASDAQ. Uh, right now, I would call the, the range, we just extended it, um, but I would call the low of the range 274 and the high of the range 344. We're kind of right back to where we started the week off on Sunday night. Yep. Um, 300, 18,300. It's been um, barcoding since. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Eddie. White House says we will not comment on reports of imminent Iran attack on Israel. It is a viable threat. And we're watching mm. this very, very closely. Okay, guys. Hey, new highs in gold. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you seen this john 24 27 new highs just tap just I'm ticked just just like put record yourself saying that and, and put it on every five minutes <laughs> i wish i had a button for that just save my uh new save my voice gold. a little bit new highs and gold <laughs> pretty much richard harris i think you're right Man, take a look at the gold, gold tilt here 80 percent long 80 percent long gold 81 percent long in gold and then yeah, we keep so. going. And we keep Broke, going. They're good, congruent with market direction, John. Very strong auction process. Very strong. Here we go. 2428. Gold is the star of the show right now. 2500 question mark. Hoop says. 2429. Yeah. I mean, it's just fun to watch. I can't <laughs> Who's going to short this? I'm curious on the the 20 percenters. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, now it's uh, now it's 16%. We're seeing 84% long in gold. 16% <laughs> are saying, nope, this is as high as we go right now. When it gets to 100, sell. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't That's know. That's sell. If you, you know why? Because they're going to have to sell, too. Going up. <laughs> silver, fly, silver flying as well, Michael Stanton says. All right, guys. Is platinum moving, too, Jay? Come on. Why is uh, act together. like a turtle. God, get your act together. <laughs> it's moving, but yeah, it's all right. Uh, the reason I traded platinum, I am trading the XFA that is uh, in a little bit of drawdown right now. Uh, normally, I would trade gold, um, but the risk management kind of built into platinum. Um, if it's going to move with the rest of the metals, um, I'm okay with the the smaller profit side. Uh, it helps me manage my risk a little bit more. Okay. Could have traded micro gold. I guess that's an option. We have it. I saw that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Silver is screaming, man. Holy smokes. Did is we hit yeah. 30 yet? Close. Close. 2961. Gold, 2430. New highs 20. and gold. <laughs> new highs and gold. Dakota, you take it from here. Anytime we have new highs and gold, Dakota, you say it. <laughs> What are you gonna say? <laughs> uh, okay, sounds good, Jack. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Oh wow! Broke through thirty-one. <laughs> Dakota, take it from here, my man. <laughs> I'm watching this. Thirty-twos. Like, oh my gosh! Do I hear thirty-three? Do I hear thirty-four? Thirty-four. Thirty-four. Thirty-three. Thirty-two bit. Thirty-two bit. Thirty-two bit. Thirty-one bit. Do we hear thirty-twos? <laughs> my goodness. Oil catching a bit of a bid along that. Look at the five minute here. here. Dow selling off near, it's kind of near the lows. Uh, S&P chop around that 5,200 level. Key level right now, guys. 5,200. Just beneath it. Oh, my gosh. Hmm. What do you think? House count <laughs> short, 2440. Gold? 2440. Weekly kickoffs uh, high. See, I mean, <laughs> yeah. You jumping from a free train. Board, sure, but oh. probability is not very likely. Not good. <laughs> Maybe a feeling, right? right? Maybe you put on a one lot, and then yeah. if it goes, then you add to it. I wouldn't go 15 right off the bat. Yeah, I mean. Bring me my BC headache powder and a glass of water. Good <laughs> <laughs> man. As many times as I've jumped in front of a, a, a strong market, I don't do it anymore. Yep. Even if it is my level. We learn the hard way, don't we? Yep. Yeah, I mean, if it, if it holds and we get a return back to it to limit risk, that's that would be something I would think about it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Bobby. <laughs> uh. Uh. King of the Hill. 
Very funny. All right, we're selling hey, off in Nasdaq. Ice to cold again. <laughs> ice to cold. See if we find this some music. We're just, just going. going. Yeah, oh my right. gosh. Nasdaq's starting to sell. Yes, it is. Come on, Platinum, wake up. Dow lows. S and P is beneath down trade fifty one eighty six. Wow, markets are moving this morning, fellas. On a Friday. Got some liquidity to the downside here in the S and P's three hundred lot. Uh, where'd they go? And I got well, I take that back. From block from fifty one ninety five. Got between oh. five and six hundred showing on the bids there. We know how the VIX is up almost eleven percent right now. What's it trading, John? Sixteen and a half. Okay, approximately. All right, VIX is That's a delayed quote too. Dixie too. All right, we got a lot of stuff going on here this morning, fellas. Yes, we do. Keep praying. Cody, you seeing anything you like, or are you going to wait it out? I'm that guy that's sitting here waiting for a short on gold. <laughs> 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 I, I, I want to get in a short on gold, very, very small, if we get closer to 40. Um, yeah. And see any type of just relief pattern. Um, it, it, this very well could keep rallying, but there could be a, a sense of exhaustion for just a really quick in and out, um, good risk reward. Um, even though it's very unlikely where I could lose, I, I typically lose 75% of the time on, on trades like this, but a lot of the time I could get a good four to one risk reward, which will have yeah. a positive expectancy. Um, it's mm. just not for the faint of heart where we have to know that when you're shorting something like this, you're going to lose a lot more than you're going to win. Yep. Yeah. I think it's about. Now this just coming over the wire. This is probably something we have to watch. Uh, security consultation uh, begins with the participation of Netanyahu, Gallant, Gantz, and Eisenkot to discuss the possibilities of an Iranian response. Oh so uh, we'll keep an eye open here. Uh, be very careful. Make sure you're using stops because this market can be a rodeo today at some point. Call if Eddie. it's not right now. Great call. Eddie. Back thanks to you, Andre. Man. Yeah, thanks, Eddie. Keep thanks. us posted, man. And uh, here we go with gold. Same thing. The got moon a here. Lot sitting at 2438 gold. Probably get taken out pretty easily. Yeah. Hogue, it was 2440. Hey, just... Was the weekly kickoff? Yes, it yes. was. I am now short gold, oh 2436. <laughs> One contract, very small. And, and I'm going to look to see if we could just get some type of exhaustion move uh, on Love this. Love it, Dakota. Re Love it, Dakota. Really quick, really short. Um, Mr. Valentine has set the price. <laughs> right. <laughs> But there's one lot in there said, no, we're not going any higher. We'll take a look, quick look at tilt. It's still 76, 75% long in gold. So they have peeled it off a bit. Platinum moving a little bit. There you go. Wake up, Platinum. Up, up about 20 ticks on it right now. Nice. Nice. I did add a second lot uh, in that opening range when it held. I like that. Uh, someone actually messaged me in the Discord, and, and thanks for that, Brooke. Uh, on the three-minute chart, uh, 200 moving average was right at the low of that opening range, uh, and Love it held it. up pretty nice. So Love it. Good uh, stuff. Went ahead and added there. Hey, what's a tick worth in gold there, Dakota? I think it's 10. Bucks. Um, 10? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So dime. Yep. Gotcha. This is working One out. Penny, uh, yeah, it is. Dakota is working out. <laughs> <laughs> He's Dakota short from 30. Yep. Good job there, Robert. Good job. Good job. Jack, you can come in when you want, but markets aren't moving right now. So, mm -hmm. yes. You know, just stop me if it is. Yeah, let's the do it right now. We, let's, we, can, we can do the news right now, I think. Stop me at any time. You got it, man. Please. Good stuff. But uh, I want to show this chart, the 10-year uh, annualized return of U.S. Treasuries yeah. is currently at a 65-year low. Yeah, this is me right here. Mm. So the party's out. It used to be, you know, the probably the best trade ever was just buying bonds in the early 80s and just holding them. But uh, yeah, the last 10 years have not been good for holding 10-year Treasuries, Lovely. as we have certainly dropped those yields. 
uh, an update on Otani and the gambling, Dakota. Uh-oh. I think that you're in the poker and stuff like that. Um, he's in trouble. Yeah. So uh, total losing bets, $183 million. Holy uh, net loss of wow. $40 million. Um, <laughs> as Nate Silver points out in the next one here is that that's terrible gambling. Yeah. Um, just betting randomly on point spreads shouldn't lead you down that. That's so, uh, <laughs> so I, I think his interpreter just saw Bruno Mars and said, hold my beer, <laughs> hold my beer. Yeah. <laughs> Watch this. Oh my God. Uh, lastly, Danielle sent this in, uh, Sean Paul of temperature fame revealed that he did those verses with his Invisalign in, which explains a lot for people and elder millennials like myself mm, yep. might have been the magic <laughs> songs and, a banger <laughs> yeah and lastly we'll show that eclipse one more time we're going to send out the winners for this caption contest on monday we we'll pick them this afternoon <laughs> um hopefully everyone's eyes have repaired themselves and staring at the sun on what was it tuesday <laughs> yeah i don't know i can't see this monday yeah great day there's a risk for now. You have the best one, Jack. That's that's the risk oh, yeah. you're staring at the sun. Oh, <laughs> oh. Hey, I'm out gold. Oh, look at that. Look at this. <laughs> oh. is out. That was for his trade coming off. <laughs> uh, good stuff. Good stuff, Jack. Oh, uh, Dakota. Okay, I, I, I'm out. I just closed Dakota. the gold trade. So good job, quick six hundred dollars on that one. Woo-hoo. Beautiful. Dakota. Nice trade, man. You can even get the gold market to turn around, folks. That is impressive. <laughs> oh, Jack, that was funny, man. Andre, you got the keys to that house account? Next time Dakota says something, just go ahead. I think you're right. No. I, think you're, I think you're right. <laughs> 20 lot in gold. <laughs> nice, Tony Smith. Yeah, nice job there. That was a great trade, right? That was a great trade. That was better than the NASDAQ <laughs> trade, man. <laughs> that was wild, dude. Oh, man. Oh, Nothing shit. higher. 36. Is... Dakota, if we get a PL update when you get a chance here so we can update the um, board. Yeah, yeah, just a moment. I don't look contest. at I typically don't look at my PL guys when I'm trading. Uh, and especially I when I'm scaling my live account. Um, because instead of just getting in at one contract times three when you're copy trading, I'm just doing three contracts immediately um, and scaling in. So uh, my PL, here's my PL for today. You guys can see it, it's on my screen, my live account. Mm-hmm. I'm at um, 7,965. Account you. balance pretty close to 128. Thank you, sir. Man, you have been hot. We are not going to ask you to. I don't want you to break your typical trading methodology by having to look at your PL too much. So no. we'll stick to the trades, but uh, why don't you stick stay in the zone here? Okay, what, what? which way do you guys want the markets to go? Just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do a poll. Which market now, do you want to go to? Sometimes it feels like that. No, sometimes it really does feel like that. And, and then you, you start to let it get to your yeah. head, and the next thing you know, Daily market, will, <laughs> market will correct your ass, right? If you get too uh, yeah. full, of it, as we know. Yeah. Once yeah. you get the once you get the right answers, the market's going to change the questions, right? Exactly. Platinum just still hanging out here. Uh, I almost want to not look at it. I wish I could just like hide the position and just let it <laughs> let it do whatever it needs to do because it's sitting there. Um, let it go. Yeah, just let it go. Go back to the Nasdaq chart. Do what Dakota does and just go to go to sleep. Yeah, <laughs> just on, so on air. Just take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> this fast markets thing ain't so bad, huh, Dakota? I mean, it's markets or markets, right? Markets or um, markets. Yep. Fast, slow. It's to me the same thing um, in terms of price action and and risk reward. It's all about risk for me. Yes, it is. Man, this Nasdaq is just chop city. 
Three hundred. Yeah, three hundred the price. It's pinned. Mm-hmm. Fifty two hundreds in the S and P's. Yeah. We got five minutes for that initial balance to be established. I think we got the highs and lows. Three forty three mm-hmm. and two sixty one. Two fifty eight about. S and P still in the uh, still around that range. Two hog. Pardon. Are the SAPs still in the opening range? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It's below it right now. Yep. Mm-hmm. Dow trade. Someone's uh, asking Dow. Dakota where he where he learned to trade. I think he just he was just born that way. <laughs> He's built different. Right. <laughs> Baptized through fire. I've <laughs> I've went through just it feels like more downs than ups though. Just as many ups. Tell a little bit about your story, Dakota. Tell them about uh school and uh what you did with some of those student loans. I mean, seriously. <laughs> it's an incredible story. The hustle's amazing. Um <laughs> it's a long story. It, it, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I started learning how to trade when I was like 10, 11 years old. Um, I I was signed on with my mom. My mom signed me on to her old Scott trade account to um, play in the market Scott. when I turned 18 um, because you can't trade until you're officially 18 and open up your own account until you're 18 years old. Um, then I started to get a lot more serious and became an options trader. I went to college full time. I had a part time job. And the only time I was available to trade was during slow markets, which is right around 7, 8, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, just depending on when I got done with my studies. Um, analyze the markets, place trades um, for an hour or two, go to bed, wake up and do it again. And that's how I learned to trade um, during the Asian session. And that's what I, I've i noticed. There's a lot of people that do not realize that they have jobs and they're like, I can't trade the New York session, so I'm not going to become a trader. Um, Mm -hmm. well, that's false, right? Because we can trade. It just depends on, you know, what time you're available and your dedication to the markets, uh, because the markets are open, um, 23, five, right? We could trade the Asian London or the New York session. And and that's what I got used to. And, um, it was a very long and grinding journey. I did lose. Yeah. So there's this thing in the U S you guys know it. It's called like Pell grants and student loans. Um, I got a Pell Grant. I was lucky enough. I come from a very, you know, humble family. And I took that money that's supposed to go to college. I put it to the markets. I lost it and I kept losing it. <laughs> I ended up losing like up to like $120,000 and went through a very, very dark time. Continued at it. And, you know, here I am a full time trader. Um, and now money doesn't mean too much to me anymore, even though it's still my source of income. Um, I get more pleasure from helping traders. Found Top Step in July when there was some craziness when Top Step switched from one step, um, one rule, Game and changer. noticed that there was a gap in the market. And there was a lot of traders in Discord and in the community giving up or quitting because they didn't have the time, or they got a new job, or they have you know family or other obligations during the day. And even international traders where they cannot trade during the New York session because they're sleeping um, Mm -hmm. and started slow markets. And it's been a really great and fun journey here at Top Step. Well, we're glad you're here. Yes, we are. Great addition. Love your passion for helping others. Code and Jay, man. Big, big upgrades. Big upgrades around here, man. 100%. Absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) Dow selling off here, fellas. Look at us. Where's gold at there. now? Gold trade 2431. 2431. What'd you sell? 36s? I sold 36s and bought 31s. Right, let's take a look. I'll, I'll look. Let's see. I think no, that's yeah. about right. Yeah. That works every time. Well, we did just hit the 930 hours. So, Marcus been open for about an hour here, folks. Yeah, sold 36, bought 29s. Bought 29s, even better. My goodness. <laughs> when you're hot, you're hot. I love it. You know, it got two within two, two uh, what, 20 ticks of weekly kickoff high in gold. It was a nice short. <clears throat> What's Great the job. weekly kickoff high? 
2440. Uh-oh. Yeah, folks, I'm going to be uh, stepping out. We got somebody else stepping in here. So trade well, everyone. I'll see you later on. Let's later, get the Johnny. Man. Johnny will yeah. be in this What's afternoon. Up, guys? Whoa. All right, all right. All right. <laughs> Wow, yes, Michael, sir. you are just, this is, uh, we got the dream team here today, man. Coach Jay, Coach Dakota, and now Mr. Michael Patak, back from Chicago. I know. Dude. I, dude. Hey, uh, it's just a quick crash course, catch up to speed here. We're, uh, everything's headline risk. Everyone's got their eyes on uh, headlines coming out of the Middle East. Uh, you're seeing gold making new all-time highs, Michael. We got crude trading 80, over 87 bucks on the way to 90 bucks. Uh, we're catching a bit of a sell, you know, sellers in the, both all the equities because of the headline risk out of the Middle East. So just keep uh, keep an eye on that. Eddie's been scanning the wire now for any headline that comes out. But uh, just keep an eye out yeah. on that. How you doing, Michael? Welcome. I'm doing well. Coach Dakota, Coach Jay, I've not done this with you guys. And What's going on, MP? Oh, nice no. vest. I think I've been on with uh, – thank you. Thank you. I'm getting <laughs> warm, so I'll be taking it off here shortly. And Dakota, yeah. it's 23, 23.7 is trading, but I just got back from – or sorry, 23.5 is uh how much you can trade i saw you, you heard or you were saying that earlier i i just got yeah. back from uh, my uh, meeting with the cme ceo and it will be 23 7 here very very soon whoa are you allowed uh, to say that is, uh <laughs> he didn't say it i said it i, I love it i love it i love it <laughs> no, they're, to- they're talking about it they're talking about it too at the fia down in yeah. Boca. But it's going to have trading all, all, all into the weekends. But then they have to shut down every day for an hour to uh, to maintenance, mark to margin. Yeah, mark to margin and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, Dakota did not know you had a one twenty in losses. I had about ninety thousand, uh, three thirty thousand dollars trading accounts, and I, I understand the pain, the uh, stomach, gut, feeling like you're weaker, weak in the legs for quite a while. So yeah, it's rough. Good story. Yeah. Coming from good a story, small yeah. town, that means a lot more too. Uh, the town I came from had like two thousand pop. Um, oh, you beat me by a thousand. Yeah, I had thirty two hundred. <laughs> I had about thirty two hundred in my small town. Eighty people in my high school class. I met you out in Moab, and we had we had uh, we had a chat out there. And this is, I think, when you were fr- kind of first getting started with us. And to wow. see you on here, <clears throat> to see you on here, and putting up day after day. And uh, coming back from days that, uh, you know, I, I saw one day and I, I got dinged on that day, too, where you're up like nine or six and you ended up the day down three. I think it was this, the, the markets just kept selling off. That was like last week or two weeks ago. And I got caught in that, too. But then to see you come back the very next day and put up a size day, like top leaderboard day, that yeah. is very, very hard to do. So I, I, I give you props. I don't like to talk in people's backswing or, or when they got a no hitter going. But, uh, man. Keep it's, jabbing. I um, guess keep jabbing. My short-term memory. It's the death of me. <laughs> ask my it's, family. It's ask my girlfriends. Um, you live a Girl happy friends? life when you can't remember the bad things. <laughs> I heard that too, Andrew. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> Girlfriends. I had plural. I plural. On that one. <laughs> hey, before we go, I just want to give a quick shout-out to John Jones here. I just passed my first combine ever, 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 ever. Thank you so much for your help. I couldn't have done it without Top Step. Shout out to John Jones, man. That is so, 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 so cool. Hell yeah, John Jones. Yes. Keep trading, man. Keep trading, John. Love it. Uh, Good stuff. Nezek looks like it wants to test these lows. Uh, we oh, got more news? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, What's that mean? What do we got, this coming in here, uh, sort of uh, capitalizing the reports that we're having. Possibility of an Iran launching an attack on Israel today. Um, we were seeing this from Al Jazeera, so we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, watch the markets. You got a position on, make sure you got your stop on. Is that, did that just break right now? Did that just break right now, Eddie? Right. Uh, yeah. About a couple minutes ago. <sighs> Man, is this yep. going to be a day where, is yep. this going to be one of those headlines? Sell off. Susceptible headline. headline. Yeah. It's going to be hard to say. Hey, what do you guys like in, Jay, you were just talking about uh, uh, the NASDAQ, I think, right before the Morse code got, yep. came, came into here. What What are you looking at right now? What are you guys looking at right now? Yeah, so we, I'm we established an initial today. balance. I'm done. Locked it up. Dakota's, Dakota's done. Yeah, I, I, I um, think I'm done. If I'm going to place a trade, it might just be very, very small. Like I did, a, I had a gold trade earlier, and it was just tiny, just to keep me busy, I guess. Uh huh. Feed that addiction. Well, that's a hell of a lock it up day. Did you lock it up on? Do you have a top step X? You lock it up there. Uh, 
Not yet. I'm testing Top Step X. My live account's on Ninja. Um, I can't lock it up, right. unfortunately. That's a great feature at Top Step X. And um, yes, I would definitely use it. <laughs> yeah, no, I. Uh, it's it's coming very handy for quite a few people. If you're in the chat and it's helped you out, just let us know. It's very cool to find out if it is helping people. Uh, it, it's right there. You got to use it. So you got to have the discipline enough to, to pull the trigger. Uh, Coach Jay, what are you what are you looking at today? And, and hell of a trading, uh, Dakota. Was, hell of a trading. Great, great way to end the week. Nasdaq selling off. Uh, initial balance low was two sixty one. Uh, seeing if we can get some continuation through that, but we see a one twenty lot sitting at two fifty right now. Um, with yeah. that negative news, I'm seeing this continue. Uh, so right now, if we get a bounce back up towards that IB low, uh, two sixty one, mm. I'll go ahead and put a one lot short. I'm just going to put the order in now, uh, but go with a tight sure. stop because uh, a lot of this is headline stuff. So. You're looking at continuation to the downside then, yeah? Correct. Correct. Yep. Okay, cool. Yep. Yeah, that it's 120 lot, I just thought. Go ahead, Eddie. Or go and ahead, uh, Phil. No, yeah, Dow's selling off here. We're seeing sellers across the board and all the equities here. NASDAQ, yep. S&Ps, Dow. We're going to keep you in tune with what the headlines are coming out. Eddie is scanning the wires right now. As you see on the Chiron, global news, trade safe, use stops on a day like today. Uh, markets are super For nervous, sure. and that's just how the theme of the day is going to be. Sellers across the board, all equities. Two, three. Old gold catching a bid. Here we go. <laughs> all right, we might. I'm seeing this. I'm watching Nasdaq. I, I could see the the two teens bouncing um, yeah. because yesterday we did have that as resistance, and today we might see yeah. that become support. But when we have news like that, support and resistance is kind of. Starts to become more and more irrelevant. Agree. Yeah. Right. Well, that news headline gave us a head head start. Uh, we got like seventy five percent of people short right now. So you got a lot of people here at Top Step short uh, via yeah. the tilt indicator at the top of you guys' screen, or if you're on Top Step X, it's in real time. Eighty one percent short uh, the Dow right now. Yeah, I think that That's right there. Cool. That might have been the trade. Yep, that was the trade. What was it? The, the um, bounce? Yeah, the bounce. So if you see my screen, this is a five-minute chart. And yesterday, you could see these pivots that had a ton of resistance. Um, sure enough, we went right down to there, the 224, 223. And the, like a dead count bounce, just a quick in and out scalp. Yep. Yeah, 222 is the low. Now I'm a perma bull, so I'm always looking at ways to buy the market. <laughs> Damn. God. I need a bit of that. <laughs> so that headline, it's, if it's pretty sensitive, it's delayed on the headline. So uh, the headline came out, and then the markets still aren't catching a bit at all. So is there what's going on right now? Uh, I, I literally have been out of tune for one week. So what is... Uh, uh, it What's sounds the, like an attack what, on Iran is imminent. It started unfolding yesterday. Israel Iran, or Iran? Iran? Iran and Israel are going to start going at it here, it sounds like, shortly. Um, <sighs> American here, official told LG, we're moving additional military capabilities to the region to enhance deterrence. I mean, it looks like shit's about what to get... What triggered it? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we can go back to 2,000 years ago if you want. Yeah, you can go back a long time. <laughs> um, uh, <sighs> Is that is, is anybody know. talking about getting drug into it or anything like that? Iran the headlines, Iran, and then Israel, and then of course United States. I don't know. That's just how it the, works. Yeah, we're not trying. We're not. We're not we're nothing about the politics here, folks. Strictly the economics and how it affects these markets. 100 oh, percent. There's there's other chat rooms. Other, <laughs> there's John other says, chat rooms for the politics. There yeah. is other chat rooms, other channels for the politics. 100. percent It's just uh, <laughs> we're praying for peace, peace of course. But when markets are moving, markets are moving. That's what we're here to do. We're here to trade. We, we, um, during the, uh, what was that? During the, um, Saddam Hussein thing, I remember trading on the floor and they, they're, they're, the markets were just, what were they doing? I think they just kept rallying and rallying. I think they did. When, uh, like they were, they, like the U.S. was making its way into Baghdad or something like that. And they had it on every huge TV. In the trading floor. Yep. Trading floor is yeah, 740. It's the biggest airplane, you know, commercial one. You spin it around and it won't touch the ceilings or the wall. 
walls of that. That's how big the trading floor was. Thousands of guys, and they're all watching the same exact CNBC, which had the headline, you know, the the things. And the markets just kept screaming. I think it was higher because I don't think it was lower because we would not have been watching the, the, you know, we would have been hyper, hyper focused on the sell off days. But I remember that. That was nuts. That was like an O something, 2000. And- yeah, well, uh, we'll keep an eye on the headlines here, and we are trading near the lows in the NASDAQ, S&Ps, and Dow. Uh, gold and crude are taking a bit of a breather. So with that being said, I think we can go to JD for a minute here. Get some streaks. Uh, JD, if you're ready, let's let's see some of those streaks. Who's, uh, who's been killing it lately? I know one of the guys right here on the screen with us has been one of them. What do you got, JD? Oh, yeah. What's up, guys? Okay, so neither Jacob nor Che traded yesterday, so we have a few new names on the list today. Cool. Jacob's uh, streak is still alive at 32, and Che is at uh, 26 right now. But here's our list for today. Our leader for the day, Arian, along with mm-hmm. Petrus, Tien, and James, all on 20-day runners right now, and Madi, who is currently on an eight-day win streak. Welcome to the list, Madi and James. Nice. A couple of new Welcome. names there. Well done, everyone. All right, yeah. let's check out those PNLs from yesterday. These are the live funded PNLs. Where's that house account? <laughs> we'll get that out there. Nick T. Uh, we'll we'll start from the bottom here. Uh, Omar picked up eighteen hundred trading uh, micro Nasdaq. Eighteen hundred dollars trading micros yesterday. What? Uh, remember, you don't wow. have to trade big to win big, right? Yes. Uh, all right, Julio also with eighteen hundred trade in the NQ and MNQ. Isaac had a nice day, fifty five hundred fifty five hundred bucks trade in the ES. Nick T back on the list with a nice uh, sixty eight hundred dollar dinger trade in the Nasdaq. And again, we getting tired of hearing this guy's name yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, <laughs> who's that guy? It's Tav. <laughs> Look at him just drinking a Celsius, casually sipping it, whatever. <laughs> it's it's all about relative, for right? Uh, what is it? <laughs> What's it, Dakota? Uh, it's all relative um, no. when it comes to these leaderboards. Yeah, your humility. I love, I love Jesus. your humility. Yeah. I love your humility. Jesus, first place in 12 Gs. I don't think there's anything relative yeah, about that. that. <laughs> 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 I, I need to get a new picture. <laughs> new picture. Uh, Dakota's a like his headshot now. Uh. I, I took that. Good. Like, That's a- it's a good yeah. picture. In the middle of the night, put it into some Photoshop. I tried to fresh it up a bit. <laughs> you c- covered up that uh, that beat down scarecrow that you covered up right behind you. Uh. <sighs> Nasdaq's still making lows. Uh, did get a nice little bounce there, but feels like 200 is inevitable, yeah, that right? The, yeah, that was the high two teens I was looking for. Um, it's right there, that zone. That that was the play where buyers are looked and had a higher probability of stepping in into these higher two teens. You guys got any levels down here? I know you guys kicked ass at the house account yesterday. Uh, kudos, um, D- D- Dakota, for being uh, the lead uh, the lead uh, trade idea that w- that came out of that. Uh, we we're, we're um, as we're working each day, we're collecting others' levels and and and, and thoughts. Uh, we'll be having a better process for this as we keep going, but it's starting. And you saw it start yesterday. So hell of a job, uh, great job with the execution and, and trade, Andre. Uh, and then we have uh, this as being kind of our future. So, Coach Jay, when you saw the 120 lot right there, uh, someday yep. people will think that that is a top step house account play. Because we will Let's have size like that. That is that is the the goal. Uh, we've gotten up to fifty. Uh, I think you guys only did fifteen yesterday. But um, yep. the, the 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 idea then, guys, is the house account play is getting our top live funded traders getting their levels. Some of them don't come on here because they're uh, you know whatever they they stay private or, or translation or, or you know all that kind of stuff is, is difficult. But uh, we're gonna start collecting more of that. Our, 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 we're a farm system for, for these new trade fluencers. And I say this because there's <laughs> other ones out there that have been out there forever that you don't know anything behind the curtain. And you're going to know be, everything behind the curtain. And then you're going to be able to hit your horse to a Dakota, a Coach J, an Isaac. You can hitch, mm. hitch your, your wagon to, to some of these people because you're going to know the depth of their knowledge because you're going to also know the transparency of their trades. 
And uh, we're going to hold them true to it because they're in our program and they're our traders. And as we're finding our Red Bull athletes, Top Step wants to find these Red Bull athletes, so to speak. If we're Red Bull, we want to find our Red Bull athletes. Yes, I think sir. Coach Deco uh, Dakota is definitely one of those individuals. Isaac, uh, both being on the leaderboard as long as they have, tens and tens of thousands of people. It's very large Top Steps become, which I'm going to apologize after this about our support being behind. Uh, but uh, to have these folks that come on here, uh, and, and talk about trading, I think is just incredible. I think it's 10X, the the randos that you would have out of their dorm room that just graduated college that can put up some, <laughs> some yellow lights or pink lights in the background and and and, and just talk different stuff. They, they bring a level of, uh, to me, uh, depth that you don't find. Uh, and, and it's not marketing depth. It's actually solid content, <laughs> trading uh, ideas. So that is my first and initial rant of the day. Coach Dakota uh, and uh, Isaac, you guys have uh, been on that leaderboard for a while, so kudos. Yeah. yeah. All right, all right, all right. Hell yeah. Let him mm -hmm. cook. Let him cook is right. <laughs> my know, man, it's I'm been too to... long. It's been too oh, long. Look at that smile, man. How good did that feel? How good did that good. feel? <laughs> that's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, real quick, real quick yeah. Eddie's, Eddie's got some really important information for us. This man's been scanning the headlines all day today. He's going to keep us in tune with what's happening across the globe here at Top Step TV. Eddie, what do you got, my man? Well, right now, I just want to uh, share some uh, information. I know that uh, some of the traders have been asking about it. Uh, like what we're doing here, you want to keep up with Top Step, uh, the crew, and everybody on Instagram. We're going to post that link up here for the Instagram link. Please join it. <laughs> And the comments, participate. And also, did you know that uh, you could submit requests for new features on our Top Step X? Uh, if you are on Top Step X and you look to the far left, in that column, there is a question mark. You can click on that question mark. It's on the left-hand side. And uh, post your suggestion, or uh, you can vote up other suggestions that you think uh, uh, adding to Top Step X will help everybody. So keep that in mind. And uh, back to you, Andre. I'm watching the wire, and uh, we'll see if anything else Eddie, pops up. Eddie, yes, do you have an do you have an Instagram? I, I think uh, that would be hilarious if you, I, you don't strike me as right, one that right. would be an inst Insta right. guy. I, okay, I I'm do. long Nasdaq. One Nasdaq. Let's um, go. Eighteen two twenty three. This is going to be a quick one. Um, tight stop, in and out. I, I called these levels out, and I need to practice what I preach. This is a level I was looking for a continued bounce. So we'll see if we get this maybe back up into the 18240s. What well, coach Jay, what do you think about this trade? Uh I really like it actually. Uh I'm looking at the 15 minute chart and there Good, is Michael. uh this candle right here. Uh this kind of doji candle from yesterday. Um or I guess that's not even a doji, it's a hammer candle. Um but right at the high is kind of where Dakota entered his trade. Um okay. where it looks like sellers tried to take control of this candle and buyers bought it right back up. Uh, so trading back down towards that level, uh, I really do like that. Uh, I was looking at something near 194, uh, which is half of that candle for a potential long. Um, but Dakota is right in at the highs. Uh, so we could see a bounce from there uh, and maybe get to two. So he's, keep, he's keeping it tight. He's keeping it tight, yep. uh, which um, – and you're looking at the 194s. Mm -hmm. So, Correct. right, the 18, 190. So if, if, if he's liking it and he's keeping it tight – but then also you got the 194. So this area seems like a decent area, but he's on the higher side of it that you like, and, you, and you're liking it the 194s. Now, he's already in, which means you could miss it, but he yep. also could could get stopped out by the time you're getting in is what I'm hearing. Yep, correct. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Probabilities yeah. versus risk-reward, right, Jay? Yep. yep. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly I, So I, I, I joined you with a one lot, and I'm just doing a one lot right now just because I want to get – in on this. So this is my personal account, but I'm looking at this through the lens of a house account now. House account, baby. The, the house account still. <laughs> I'm a little. I'm. I'm. I'm just a little. Uh, a little concerned that it's not adding up when when uh, the 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 light and tight on Dakota and then the 194. So getting in right now, would be a little bit of a house account. I don't know. Well, let's get a third opinion. Hey guys in the chat, do you guys yep. like getting? Do you guys what like getting say to that? Get hold on real quick. You guys like getting long around the two eighteen two thousands or two hundred four eighteen ninety four one ninety four. Get long now. Yeah, there you go. One ninety four. Yep. Yep. 
And then another third but option, uh, another third option, uh, third option, do nothing. All right, mm. go ahead, Coach Jay. Uh, no, what I will say is, uh, I like Michael. There are times I'll, chat, I'll, I'll miss, I'll miss this trade. Um, trying to get that 50% retracement where we're not always going to get it. The reason I really do like 194 is because it gives us the the opportunity for the market to test 18200, which is a major psych level, right? We're only 14 points away from it. So uh -huh. levels like that, in my opinion, are going to act like a magnet. Um, so if we come down, hit 200 and don't get the follow through, looking at that 194 to hold and then bounce from there. Um, but like you said, I, I may miss the trade if we just go right now. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of what Jay was saying here in the chat, Michael. Wait for uh, wait for the book dip beneath 200s. Uh, see if the 194 is hold. But right now, it's a lot of do nothing in the chat. Kind of echoing what Jay says. If we get uh, if we break the 200s in the Nasdaq and there's no follow through, uh, 194. A lot of people liking that level as well. Okay. All right. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Keep yep. uh, keep an eye, guys. We're reading the chat. You're a part of this. You're the third opinion here. We got two opinions so far. We got a coach Dakota, top of the leaderboard, live trade fund center. Blah blah blah. And then we got Coach Jay, the man, the myth, the legend. Coach Jay, yep. I like listening well, to you like when you do that coaches, co coaches take over. Oh, yeah. I did that yesterday. Yeah. So we, hey, we've got Isaac chiming in here. Isaac chiming in. Uh, bottom of the range and just above Hoag's weekly kickoff low. I'm interested in a long at 5182, which we're at right now, up to 5202. However, because it's counter trend, I would do half the position size normally taken. So he's looking to take a long here too, but we are selling through. Uh, 5181, 5182 here. So we are seeing some people looking to take some longs here, Michael. Let's see if we can break beneath 18,200. Get to those 194 levels, see what happens from there. If we are going to do house account, keep in mind we do have this geopolitical risk coming out from the Middle East. So we got a lot of counter uh, forces going on here. But let's see if we break these 200s in the NASDAQ. Uh, see if we get to the 194. He's sitting there right now. He's so sitting no, Here we go. There. there we go. I he added to this. Okay, okay, Dakota. Two contracts, average 18 to 10. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get into, we didn't push exactly 194. Um, I just bought one. Uh, my stop is now going to be at 194. If we test that level, um, I'll get out, and then I'll see how the market responds around there. Uh, but I'm in one right now. Okay, I nice. just yeah, got looking at 10. this as a zone, right? I got long from, it's not I got long 10 from 02. To, uh, I got long 10 from 18 to 01. Wow, 10 lot. Uh, Let's go. Is it 10 lot start? You guys are still liking the 194 is holding up. If, if the... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you guys came out so casual. Yeah, 10 lot, 10 lot start. <laughs> just the, the normal 10 yeah. lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love just, it. Yeah. Just the All right, Michael, D. I'll be checking the chat here while you guys pull, execute this trade. I got yes. you. Eddie, Eddie's got the I'm wire. Wait, wait, hey, what? Really quickly, guys. What is our out? What is your out? I, I don't know if this needs to be a ten thousand dollar, just put it no. on play because no. we we take ten thousand dollar bets on you guys, uh, and I say bets, guys. These are be, getting behind somebody's idea. Is, gold is, new highs. Gold new highs. Twenty four forty. Twenty four forty one. Gold new highs. We yep. have one seventy fives. So we got people talking about the one two thousands, the one seventy fives. What is your guys' stop down here? My stop is going to be 194. Uh, I'm going to right below 194 is my stop. Uh, the low of that candle we were talking about on the 15 minute is 168. So if 194 doesn't hold, 168 has to hold, or we're just going to go. Um, right now, to the upside, I'm looking at how we respond to 220, uh, and then uh, we'll hold from there. But it's looking good right now. Yeah, my stop's right, 190, so 198. All right. All right. I'm going to put the stop down. So if you guys get ticked out, I'm at 192. A quick look at Till here. <laughs> <laughs> then I can brag. Then I can. Then, then I can brag that I I have the I have the hands that my man. That, uh, these <laughs> I got a question here for Dakota. Dakota. You were talking about gold in the forty level. You were looking to go short. Are you still looking at that? No, we got that pullback I wanted. That that was the pullback I wanted. I'm not going to touch gold anymore. Yeah, <laughs> weekly kickoff. Twenty four forty. The levels are on fire. Where's your out right now, guys? In your uh, in your Nasdaq, your New highs out as far as profit target. New highs profit. Uh, like I said, these two twenties are going to be sticky. Kind of, they're they're going to be kind of tough to get through. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm just watching as the market trades these. Two thirties. Okay, cool. Two thirties, Dakota. Yeah, two thirties. I'm in two contracts. I could close one out at two thirties, and then I could hold on to one and 
Um, if this is low of day, why not? Right? No. Why not hold it? Right. Yeah, All right I got yeah. the two. I, I'm taking a 220 off just a five lot, and and just really hear me out real quick because that's a J. That's a J move. So there's five on off, uh, and then um, I have a working Shit. order at 229 because if you get ticked, if you miss it by a tick, <laughs> I'm gonna cheer again there, Dakota. <laughs> I see what you're hey, doing we, there. You, you see that? <laughs> Front running us. <laughs> if this, if this three-minute candle closes above 223, okay. uh, yeah, I think we're getting back up to at least 260. Awesome stuff, guys. Awesome stuff. You're on Top push. Step TV. If you guys like what you're watching now, big time traders in real time, trade size, real accounts, real PLs, please hit like, please hit subscribe. This is as good as it gets. Gold new highs. Stop me if I said that yet. Gold new highs. Uh, I'm. That platinum trade I, I have, it's about a hundred dollars yeah. in the profit right now. I'm gonna cut that because uh, I'm, like I said, I'm on this XFA. I want to be able to oh. add to this Nasdaq trade if I can. Um, oh, and I'm, I'm able to trade three contracts right now. So if we get a push, I'll add one. Um, so gonna try to use that for a better trade. Man, these traders are cooking today, people. Gold new highs. That's yeah. Gold new. <laughs> What's gold trading at again? 24 43. Yeah, get out of here. I used to have it at 18,000. I had it at 18,000 for like 45 years. Forever. And forever. <laughs> forever. I had a, I have, I'm like, hey, my buddy of mine is holding, holding some of my stuff. He's like, do you really want them? It wasn't like a terrible amount of money, but it was a good a chunk. And I go, yes, gold is going higher with all this shit that's going on. This is, th this is like two and a half years ago. So it felt, been like doing? A 40, it felt like a 45 year old uh, trade. Yeah, I hear they're selling gold. So they sell, they sell everything for what I hear. Gold yeah. bars. Yep. Costco's been cleaning up on that. MP, you said you have a limit order at 29 for five. Yes, sir. Yeah. Can you keep right one here. lot as just a runner? Just just one for a runner and trail it? Yeah. I should have done that yesterday. Uh, I, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would love yesterday. to do that. Yep. So, uh, yeah, I was going to say the here. same thing to you, Andre, and that would have been amazing, right? Because we went blast. $30,000 trade. $30,000 trade. 30 Gs. One thing, yeah, I especially do, you got uh, a great uh, price. You got at what two hundred two, and so I mean, I got I got a ones. Yeah, Here we go. Yeah, I mean, you just close out, keep one lot in, and just put a stop loss at break even, and just you never know what could happen. What I mean, are, are you if you're if you're confident in this trade, are you thinking I should just? Are you thinking if you were if you were another guy in another person's shoes doing a house account right now that you would? Uh, you would uh, uh, trade for scratch. Put this as a five lot, or put this five lot trade for scratch, or keep it at ninety twos. But you're talking about running. You're talking about this as being a firmed up. Gold new highs. Gold new highs. Gold new highs. Twenty four four forty five. <laughs> trade forty fives. I threw so a lot out of you right there. Go ahead. So you were in ten contracts. You already pulled five off for a decent amount of profit, and then if you pull off maybe four more at two twenty nine, then mm -hmm. I mean, essentially, why would you not want to just? keep one on as a runner um yeah, okay. yeah. guys this is that's a house my thought process trade. where you don't you don't cut your your winners when the market continues yeah. to go in your direction um yeah you just never know with with one contract one contract's always uh fun to have it run with you but guys this is the house account this is not my personal i can switch over to my personal right now and I'm still housey. long from... That was a housey. Oh, I thought that was... Okay, yeah, gotcha. House account. No, no. I like no. it. I like it. I, I was going to take a light house. Um, I took... Uh, I'm down on my... I, I bought... Right when you were talking about the 20s, that's where I got in, we're and dipping. then you averaged. We're about to get started. I think. Yep. So one thing I did do here, uh, trying to get this in, but anchoring a, v, a VWAP to that low, uh, that candle that set the low, we needed to hold that VWAP um, anchor, and we didn't. Uh, and that 223 we were talking about up there, that probably would have been a great place to exit. So now I want to see if this candle that we talked about holds, right? This uh, 194 needs to hold um, for any continuation up, but just watching the market reaction to it now because uh, we are seeing some selling around there. <clears throat> there we are. Yep, it came close. It came, down, it came close. Yep. It came it down one, one point away from my 192 uh, stop. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm still in it. I'm still in it. <laughs> hey, Don't MP, I'm going to send you my Venmo account. <laughs> <laughs> the, oh, man. Oh. Yeah, the, there's something to be said just leaving a runner on on this, this market. There's yep. some 
buy big buyers stepping in and then that yeah, we got Isaac Rivera saying entry 5182 5182 entry long in uh in the S and P's. We are getting levels from the best traders that Topsup has to offer right now, guys. I hope you guys use No, 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 Andre. Andre, the best traders in the trading influencer world. I'm gonna tell you that. Because I'm gonna uh-huh. put these guys up against the other ones. Yes, trust me. I've been these watching traders. These are just traders yeah. to me. And they're all getting bought by MFF and Apex. All right, all right, all right. Markets are giving them market. millions of dollars. They're giving them millions right, of dollars right. just to come over here <laughs> and say, Jeez, Michael, I swear to God, I'm, in, I got all get the info. Get him, I got Michael. all the information. Listen. You got We just lost <laughs> another one. I got, I'm going to go over to MFF. They're offering me a money all I can't refuse. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Hello. All right. Hello. We got a farm system. We got a farm system. So you too, I'm going to say you too, you too in chat, you too trading here at Top Step could be at the top of the leaderboard, hanging out here, trading with Dakota, trading with uh, us, showing us your trades in real life, not hiding your account number. And then being able to uh, uh, go from go from a guy off the street to the Tom Brady here at Tom uh, Top Step of trading, yeah, man. And then and then yeah, we're gonna help you get started on your, five... your career of legitimacy. Hey, we're rallied here, Michael. <laughs> You're still in five right, contracts, right? <laughs> I actually, yes. During that rant, it just said get out because you're just talking no. too much. During no. that rant, the market, the market you start rallying. Yeah, oh, I, I'm, I'm still, I'm still long. I'm still long. Nice job. It, it about took, it about t- stopped me out to to uh, a point. 93s. You guys said 94s. What was the low? 92. Uh, 93 quarter was the low. <laughs> 93 quarter. Whoops. Wait, <laughs> did you get stopped out? I no, did. huh? I put a 90. I did. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Ah. I mean, you have a take profit at 29, right? Yes, sir. Same game. That's why we can talk in between all this trading activity. Let the, I let would the move paint it up, dry. Move it up. Go for more. I, if we break, yeah, we could I just I would too. Push. We're going to break. We go. Yep. Damn it. Now, this is where I, I'm, I'm, I got to think about how much room is actually left in the upside because I want to get back in this trade. But now my trade location is going to be shit. Mm-hmm. So we, we compromise uh, a little bit. <laughs> I'm going yeah. to for two forties. I'm looking for two forties here. Forty. Points, okay. Baby. I'm moving it to. Can I? 40 points, would you move it to a break even, or would you keep your stop at ninety two still? Because I just cancel all my working orders. I got to put new stops in. Keep it at ninety two for your stop loss. I mean, I'd move it right yeah, below that sure. pivot. Uh, keep it. Nice, Isaac yeah. Rivera. Yep, we got that level in there. Nice entry, my man. All right. Let's let this one give a 240 yeah, run. Are going 240 run right now. Yeah. We're getting a little heavy now, long buys. Letting everybody know that traders here, there's thousands of folks that have open positions. And whether in the trading combine or the express funded account, the simulated world is where we pull this data. Uh, and then um, we aggregate it and you're scrolling a top, to, uh, across the top of your screen. As well as is real time if you're a trade on top step back, so you'd be able to see what what the lean, the tilt, the tilt is where people are yeah. tilting towards. Speaking of that, Michael, oh. gold seventy five percent, seventy six percent long now. As I speak, seventy three percent long, ES and seventy two percent long in the Nasdaq. Gold making new highs, guys. Yep, almost trading uh, four fifty. <laughs> I'm gonna keep saying it, folks. Dre, you see, Dre, you see platinum. What are we doing? What are we doing? I, I, I managed that trade pretty bad. Um, no, it's just, it's just, it's just taking off. off. <laughs> yeah, I just hit my profit target. Uh, so I'm going to chill out for a little bit. Uh, I'll talk you guys through these levels right now. I think NASDAQ, we need to push 223. Um, but I'm going to wait a second to take another trade. Smart. Look at that discipline, Coach Jay. Great discipline. I'm letting these these longs on NASDAQ just run. Um, I'm a firm yeah. believer. When the market's going in your favor, I just let it run. Just just keep it. Keep on. Um it's so much easier just to cut the losers and let the winners run rather than vice versa, um, cutting your profits. <laughs> so I'm looking for I 240s know. here. The unknown and trainer. then I'll Sorry, close man. off one, and I might just keep one of these contracts on for a runner um, who, for who knows how long. Love it. Love it. I know, unknown trader. I got to keep saying it. I got to keep saying it. <laughs> I'll be a parrot today, man, on repeat with this, but. Every 10 minutes, you don't even need to look at gold. Just, I'll just, just clap my hands. Every time I clap my hands, that means gold <laughs> is making new highs. <laughs> Every time a bell rings, an angel nope. gets the swings. 
<laughs> God, who watched that show? I, I think that's a what great show that? to watch. It's a I, oh, it's a wonderful show? life. Oh yeah, movie. It's a, a new one. It's a new one, Jack. It's hey, on Netflix now. <laughs> take a look, Chad. Is that Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street or <laughs> is that Wonderful Life? It's a Wonderful Life. Yeah. I mean, it was like a hit. I think back in the day. Oh, and shout out to Nick T. Shout out to Nick T. Another one of our badass furniture. Up about seven G's yesterday. Nick T. Saying. We get through 220 on the NASDAQ. Ooh, here we, we go. We got that rip. pivot. We got the pivot. Here we go. We're, we go. we're going to make a run here. Here we go. Nick we're going to nice probably call. make a run here on the NASDAQ. God, I love trading with you, Dakota. We got the we got the higher low um, over here. This is uh, now we're starting to get market structure and very basic price action here on the 100 tick chart, showing that the market is buying and starting to show Kind of like breadcrumbs, right? Um, here on the smaller time frame, and then that leads into off. higher time frames. So to me, I'm looking at a hundred tick chart and saying we are now making higher lows. And if we do start to break up above 25, um, that will start to show on the five minute chart a break over here. And uh, I am really liking these 240s um, more and more right now. I like it. selling off, guys. Could be positive for equities. Yep. Coach Dakota, life funded trader Dakota. Crude real trader, off. real transparent trader Dakota. Mm -hmm. Real profits. Talking real about PNLs, trades, Dakota. Real, trades. real counts. Real trades. The bad and ugly. I can tell you, one of the worst feelings is having a horrible day and then watching Top Step TV and getting that shoulder tap from Mick. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's there for. I, there, there, he does it to me. And, and there's times like, oh, my God, he's going to call me. He's going to call me. And I need that. And then there's times where I haven't ever told him because he's like, hey, man, if I'm coming on too strong, I'm like, no, dude, just do it. I needed to hear this stuff anyway. Thank you. I know what I need to work on, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. Uh, it, it's Yeah, it, I love it as well. I, I mean, it, it, I mean, it's kind of like salt on the wound, but I, I think it, is, it shows everybody good. that nobody's immune. It's the reality yeah. of trading. Yep. Gold off about eight bucks from the highs, trading twenty four forty. Crude retreating about forty cents off the highs, trading eighty seven dollars twenty four cents. We are approaching that ninety dollar mark. Yeah, Trent Evans in the chat saying, "I don't know the code. I think letting your longs run and cutting your losers short is actually one of the hardest things to do for young traders." It is very difficult. Yes. It is very difficult. Very no one difficult. said it was easy, right? No one said yeah, nobody easy. said it was easy. But yes, it's difficult and uh, takes time. You'll get there, though, Trent. You'll get there. Guaranteed. Stay with us here at Top Step TV. We'll walk you through it, man. John in the chat saying, 223, we need to get through that. Um, yeah, that's what uh, Nick T was there. saying. 220s, and we see yeah. up. Yeah. See a rip. I got really pushed. The old college try, as Michael likes to say, or a running start. Running start. College try. Running start. Caesar degrees. <laughs> Caesar and degrees. <laughs> Mark Cuban said it best. Caesar and degrees. <laughs> C student. All right. Gold is off about 10 bucks from the highs in the last five minutes. Gold, volatility in gold. Good luck to all you gold shares. Eddie passing a combine yesterday. From his gold trading. Good stuff. Gold man. new highs? No, not yet. No, gold. No, it's going to take a minute. We're 10 bucks off the highs. Okay. You okay. Think, you think the sell off in gold will kind of get the equities going to the upside here? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> All the longs out there. Speaking of which. All right. Put a put a poll. Do we have uh, somebody helping with polls? I didn't, I didn't yeah. get the. Okay. Poll, poll. You guys don't answer. I want to say. Um, should I? I got a Dakota input, and uh, Coach Jay, uh, uh, you'll be a part of this poll. Yeah, I'm going to ask you: mm -hmm. Should I let this? It, assuming, assuming it uh, trades up to the 29s, should I take it off or let it run? All right, mm -hmm. now you can say, "Well, now the market's looking a little weak, but it's still setting up down here a bit." So it's right around where I entered. Around the 200. So, poll is, poll is, should I let this run 
or should I cut bait at the, the 230s, 229s, 229s? Initial idea. It hasn't long. even traded up there yet, right? It traded at 27? No. No, 29 24. is like the breakout. As soon as it starts to break yeah. out, yep. it's, it's right there. Yeah, MP. If, if we get if we push if we get above twenty four, I think we see a volume push, and then I wouldn't cut at twenty nine. I would let it try to go and hit fifty, right, and then use twenty four as your exit if we push above it. Um, <laughs> like we said, because like Dakota said, if we get above Beautiful. it, it's gonna go. Yeah, there's there's a there's a head fake above it. What's what's considered above it? Like you get above it, the twenty mm nines, -hmm. thirties, yeah. and then you're talking like it's gonna do the stupid rip where it does the thirty fives, thirty eights, and you're like, uh, and then and then next thing you know, that was a head head fake that got you, and then the floor falls out from underneath it. So what what do you right. what what confirms that for you? So if if we if we get back up to twenty twenty threes, twenty fours, and we push right now, then we use twenty two as your exit. Right? Well, because that, here's right now, the that's beauty the about that's, that's... having, yeah. Here's the beauty about having five contracts. You could close some of it, and and then yep. close a little bit more, and and then leave one as a runner. <clears throat> you could have the best best of both worlds while you scale in and scale out of a position. Um, we got if that you're pull ever up, guys. questioning it, got the pull up here, guys. Should I take this off or let it run at two thirty? So one minute in, I'll update you guys here in a little bit. Gold's selling off hard. We're about 17 bucks off the highs in the last eight minutes. Gold's still selling. <clears throat> Equities, wake up. Yep, Equities. I'm a perma bull. I'm all for letting it run. Hell uh, yeah. Damn, down 18 uh, bucks. 40s, and I, I, I like that idea, Jay, where take one. I'm going to take one off in the 40s, and then I'm going to leave this one running, and maybe we get back up to 300s. I mean, at this yep. point, you never know, hey, right? Hey, I like where your head's at. Yeah. We, yeah, it's this is just all right. So you're getting till right what's till in this area right? from the 15 from the 15 to the 20 areas, 18 to 15s of the 20s to the 25s. We've been getting folks that are getting long around this level. Mm -hmm. Uh, Andre just talked about yeah. growing legs, getting a run, running start. You're getting buyers that come back in here, here at Top Step. You're like, well, how do you know this? Well, here at Top Step, it's here on tilt. So you're seeing the people that are getting a bias, a stronger bias now when the market starts to get to these 15s. We're Gold's getting right. hammered right now, guys. Gold's getting hammered. We're 20 bucks off the highs here in the last eight minutes. Risk on, man. Risk on. Come on. Risk on. Come on. Equities, wake up. Do the right thing. Bye. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm... I continue to get more bullish here on the NASDAQ thinking, yep. you know, I could be adding, I could be adding, but like I, I told myself, um, this is my live account. I'm already up. So there's no sense of adding more risk because we could be completely wrong. Right. And this just falls through the floor. Yep. Yeah. Right now we're seeing a range, right? The volume has died down since the open right now. We're seeing a range and the, the high of that range, we'll call it 226. The low is 194. Right. So to get out of that range, we're going to need to see some volume to push us out of it. Otherwise, we're just going to chop around. We see the Nasdaq do this all the time. Right. So MP, that's what I'm saying. If if it pushes this, it should do it on volume. And then, you know, that gives us our confirmation. If we break out of it with no volume, then I would cut your trade. We're looking at your chart right now. Where, where where's, yeah. where's your uh, help people understand when you say volume, what's going to be that signal to let them know that there's volume coming in there? And what are you looking at? So this is like way better indicator. than watching any other any any other person out there because you get dynamic. Is, you get the yeah. chat. You get the people in the chat. You get Dakota. You get who cares about my opinion? You got Coach Jay's, oh. and, and who cares about Andre? <laughs> who cares about? I, Andre? I, I think we're gonna get ready to break right now. Be, like we're gonna be I, friends I again. Be break this. Be friends again. Let, I, I let's think just we're watch gonna be breaking this, to the um, upside here in just a moment. Uh, just watching this, I'm starting to see the tick chart um, pick up, which means we're gonna see some more volatility one direction or the other. Um, yeah, you can kind of see. I, I've been watching the tick chart a lot. Sorry to cut you off, Coach Jay. Is you're good. You're good. Go ahead. We could start to see volume come in, and you could visually see it on the volume, and you could visually see it on on the bid and ask. And when we start to see this, um, we're continuing to push higher. I, to be honest, I am really, really liking this push. Um, and we could just see the breakout right now as I'm speaking. Right now. Um, Right now, we're, we're going to see this break. <laughs> we're going to watch. Oh this. wow! Now, he, okay, he's getting caught. He's getting he's carving the market up perfectly now. <laughs> and you will move higher right now. And in, in about six okay, seconds. Coach Jay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, okay, just update that poll real quick. Hey, just update the poll. Should I take this off or let it run at two thirty? 
with over run. 600 votes of 600 votes in four yeah, minutes yeah. run 68 percent say run 68 percent say it. run thank you chat uh gold still getting did hammered. George, Gold's getting hammered did george say let it run to vwap because all roads lead there <laughs> that would be nice for you guys oh. wouldn't it <laughs> <laughs> where's the vwap okay, at? coach jake Give us go yeah, back me, to Coach just, Jay's screen and then talk about how he recognizes volume. Three twenty five, right? So three twenty five is VWAP. If we look at this right, since the vo this volume average right here, uh, this orange line on the indicator below the chart, average is right now at fifty nine hundred. The last four three minute candles, last five three minute candles has been half of that average. Right. So without volume, the market's not going to move. And if it does move, there's a non-validation. Right. So if price moves and no volume goes with it, that's just bullshit price action. Right. So we want to see actual volume in it right now. It, we can see exactly where this, this chop range is 223 at the high, 193 at the low. If we don't push now, if we don't get a volume push above that moving average, I wouldn't trust that move. That, that's all I'm saying there. Uh, so right now, if we get back down towards these lows, I'll go ahead and buy it. Um, mm -hmm. Manage your position. Let, let's see. We're going to see it right now. We got a minute left in the time. Right, show, show me where the volume, but the volume down there is still pretty low, right? Isn't it? Exactly. Exactly. Yep. So I would not be surprised if we just hold that range if there's no volume that's going to push us through there. And we got 53 yeah. right, seconds on this candle, and we're still about half the average. Not to say that the move the isn't average. going to work out eventually but i don't see it working out right now if we don't get a push now let's see 40 okay, seconds there it is this is going to start um, to get violent to the upside i think yep thank you john 10k delta where's you guys out again nice <laughs> you said runner do what's run run now? do what hey, we're looking at go. The 40s. <laughs> here we go i, I was yeah. off by about 15 seconds, seconds let's get above this average here we go you guys, they literally told you what was going to happen. They literally just game plan for this exact scenario, guys. 15 seconds left. We're still below the average right now, but it's looking good. Now, what we want to see is, sure, we got a push. Is there follow through on that volume, right? It can't just be yep. one push. How often do we see that? It gets one push and then we don't follow. Um, and I, I'm more of a momentum trader, guys. So like Dakota is saying, hold it. His trade might be an hour trade holding on to that, right? Uh, I just, yeah. for me personally, if the move is going i want it to kind of go right now 100 um, isaac i got you and, isaac rivera the 518 too long in the es my man our traders are clicking today there we go I'm that. here's this. that push we're at the here's 240s the 240s now yep i'm gonna look to I, get I took, out at the ass I, 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 um, I took a couple off I took a couple off I, i'm leaving three on for a runner because we're at this level so i'm leaving yeah, here leave i'm out of one i'm leaving one on for a runner um 18 to one and a quarter so there we go we'll, we'll see maybe we get up to 300. I'm going to jump over to my house. Three, two, four. Oh, look at my personal account. I'm up money. Nice. And I didn't even have to do anything except follow old Dakota and Jay <laughs> and the chat. Yeah, Close great. House of country, I mean, I Michael. Uh, well, we're up almost five, I'd say. Three, five. Damn. Yeah, five total. Crude selling off. Gold continuing to sell off. We're down 24 bucks off the highs in the last eight minutes, 12 minutes here in gold. Boy, it took a minute for it to play out. But, folks, you guys saw these traders talking out this strategy in real time. They laid this out for you guys. I hope you guys are able to capture some of this opportunity. We've got the best traders in the biz right here doing this. Come on. Let's go. 194, right? <laughs> 194. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm laughing at myself not being in this damn trade. Um, but great, great job, guys. Uh, are you upset? No, I can't. Are you that. upset, um, Coach Jay, that that you got you got stopped out at ninety four, right? And guys, we're just talking. This is yep. like, oh, ha ha. Okay. Yeah. And then I made a, I made a joke. I said, when you guys all get stopped out to the tick, I'll be right down there below, still with my working position. So that actually <laughs> that actually yeah. worked out because that, that's why it's good talking to other traders. You can see where they're putting their stuff at too, and then you understand. Look, I could have been in front of them, I could have been b b behind them on this, but it's just like gives a gives a feel. And this is nothing about anybody. I've been stopped out to the tick multiple, 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 multiple. Keep going. It'll take the rest of the day to keep saying this. But, like, it happens. So, Coach yep. Jay, can I relate to that? MP, how many, how many yeah, you got uh, on right now? MP, how many you got, how many you got I have, on right now? I have, I have three. Thank you. Yeah, I was stopped out to the tick earlier this morning um, in front of everybody. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah, that was like the very first trade, right? Yep. Yes. <laughs> Went down and hit my was a long time. right at the tip. It was like a long time ago after everything that's happened. All right. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm taking this off at almost a six thousand dollar winner, and I know uh, there was a runner. There was well, a runner conversation. A one, Gold's you're still getting hammered, guys. Oil getting on. hammered. I, I got they're so damn heavy right now of longs in 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 the tilt that I like eighty percent of people. So there there's a pullback play in here, and then I don't want to then. Play that big pullback that then firms up again. That then I look for a better entry or look uh, for a new entry. How about this? If you guys come out, if there's a pullback here and you still like it firm, then we'll play it. But we got our almost six out of this one and we weren't looking to risk 10 out of it. So I get it. I get it. Nice trading, fellas. Two six. Dakota, you that was a great trade risk reward, though. What's yeah. that? Great risk reward. On I love a trade, trade like guys. That. Shit. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. That was great. Guys, I'm I, just gonna let this one just run. Yep. Yeah. The house account. We can't go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, the house, the house account um uh is taking all your guys. So this is not I just I'm, I'm the executioner here. That's all Ooh, I am. That sounds and, grim. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know it great. is. I'm gonna wear one of those here. I'll do this. <laughs> the Grim Reaper. <laughs> Who's the execution? <laughs> 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 yeah. Swipe it, trades. No, but guys, kudos to helping out Top Step funded prop firm. That's a top, that's a house account play. And uh, you guys that's nailed awesome. it. When I say you guys, everybody here, the chat participated in it. Now the chat would be like, well, we told 70% of us told you to keep a runner. Well, I did up to 49s, 46s. That's a great trade. Right here, right Beautiful now. Trade. So Beautiful trade. Job security. That paid for all the stuff that you guys did in Vegas. <laughs> sure. uh, yeah, well, no, yeah. Was, we just well, Michael's top, Michael's room service bill. I mean, we still got some work to do after that. <laughs> I wasn't. I've no. I didn't even spend time in the room, Andre. <laughs> oh, I thought you were there when we had that after party. No, well, I guess you weren't. No, no. There, there <laughs> you don't need an after party in your room in Vegas. No, you don't. You don't. I guess it depends on what size of room you got and where. Yeah. Yeah, that real world. Uh, all right, real quick, JD, if you're there, uh, we got time to let these trades breathe out a little bit. Let's get everyone's favorite leaderboard up there because I think someone here on the show might be atop that sucker. JD, what do you got, man? Let's do it. We'll rip, rip through these real quick. Let's look at uh, yesterday's best XFA PNL leaders, though. All right. All right. Here we go. You. Uh, we're going to see this name again in a few minutes. You picked up $11,500 trading the ES and the NQ. Actually, you copy trades across two XFAs for a grand total of $22,564 yesterday. Not too bad. Uh, Christopher with $12,500. Jose, fourteen grand. Zvenya, $14,700. And Dylan, Dylan King for a day uh, with a ripping $28,565 carving up the NASDAQ yesterday in a single XFA account. Pretty good. Wow. Oh, yeah, it is. All That's right, awesome. here's the bottom half of that top 10 list. New to the list today, we just mentioned Svenja with that $14,700. Uh, Svenja jumped from 19th place up to 10th after that nice uh, nice winner yesterday. Jump. Isaac moved up a notch after picking up uh, $5,500 trading the ES yesterday. Farouz picked up two grand but still dropped a spot, now resting in eighth place. Balkaron picked up about six grand, spreading across one live and three XFA accounts. Uh, still fell to seventh place from fifth place yesterday, though. And Pin, uh, who has spent quite a bit of time in the top five, had a three thousand dollar drawdown and fell down to fifth place. All right, okay. Eddie, you got a drum roll? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's just do it. All right, here we go. Shang Jing donated uh, six grand wow. across three XFAs, dropped down to fifth place. Ivana, also new to the list today. Ivana moved yeah. from 11th place up to fourth after picking up uh, $18,500 across three XFAs trading in the NASDAQ. You, who we uh, just talked about a minute ago uh, on that PL list, bumped up to third place after pocketing that $22,500 yesterday. Raj took another drawdown, still holding on to second place for another day. And, uh, yeah, there he is again. How you go? Uh, hey. hey. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, yeah. Well done. Well done. It 
I figured since I was on mute, I'd get those drums and the trumpets. And I mean, we pay these people to play. <laughs> You know, we, we gotta do that. something. Oh, I was on mute, and they were looking at me like, "When are you gonna take us off mute?" Sorry, guys. All right, oh, good. Uh, we'll get a ham sandwich. We got D- Coach Dakota. Dakota at the very top of the board. There's your one twenty. All all your losses are made up, and I'm sure you've parked some in your your pocket all before then. But the name of the game is: Do not pay a heavy tuition to the markets to learn, like Dakota and I did. He did one twenty. I did ninety grand. Plus probably another ten thousand in education, which was at that time online trading academy in nineteen ninety nine, which was just support mm. and resistance classes, which was twenty five hundred a week, which is wow, not for free on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Uh, and you don't then, sound uh, bitter. You don't sound bitter at all about that one. <laughs> man, they were. Yeah, I know. We had well, that the time that was the only one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Yeah, a little bit. And then, uh, yeah, and then to come out of that. The best way to do that, and I'll go to any, and this is a, a good support to any prop firm or funding opportunity, go to them before you go open up your own brokerage account. And and I'm not, because you're eventually going to get really good and go to open up your own brokerage account. And then brokerage firms like that in general. So I'm not sitting here taking business away from brokerage firms. I'm saying, hey, we're going to help get all these traders in, in the futures industry a little bit more uh, uh, in tune, accustomed, and, and trusting of their trading strategy, their downside, little risk management, respect, and all that kind of stuff before they start popping in their kid's college fund. Or what was yours? Yours was a college. What was you had money? College loan. Like we were talking. He was doing student <laughs> yeah, loans. Alone. He was a student loans <laughs> for parking in your the kid's building. college fund or your own student loans from your college. <laughs> Even worse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even worse. Um, we had that pullback on the NASDAQ. If anybody missed getting long, that was their opportunity. Yep. Yep. Trading uh, 250s. Uh, it, it traded down to 34. So it's staying above the 30s, like you guys talked about. Man. Jump over. We are at my screen right now. Guys, look at this. This is uh, okay. So Dakota was thinking when we started talking about this, we were thinking right around here. Actually, hold on. We're Gold's still like selling right just complete, here. Gold's giving back this entire rally now, folks. This is where we were thinking about it. And then we kind of all got in. Uh, I think uh, Coach Jay did. Uh, I did. And then also um, uh, Coach Dakota added another one. And they said 194s. They said 194s. They said 198s. They said blah, blah, blah. And then Isaac said 178s. Now, Isaac, you, you didn't get the trade, but that idea was also a good idea. They're, these are zones. So you get the, the, the 94s. That they were talking about that they is in the two guys here, and then uh, everybody in the chat, Andre, remember they're talking about the eighteen two hundreds. Yep. But given all that, we were all kind of like in the same wheelhouse of of of, of trade idea. Hundred percent. So then it's just a matter of how much heat can you take on it if you're and 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 then if you're going to take a thousand dollars worth of heat or five hundred dollars worth of heat or hundred dollars worth of heat, you want to at least take a hundred dollars out of that. Uh, or more, but um, yeah, this is, and then it just took a while. It took one, two, three, five, 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes for this to kind of just play out. Yep. And now it's firmed up. It's doing, it's doing exactly what coach Jay and coach Dakota mentioned it was going to do. As far as if it hits, uh, breaks above 30, it's going to, that's kind of the area where it's going to continue or not. It is continuing. Dakota said 40s and 50s. Then he said, let it run. Let it run is working out really nicely. It's trading 60s now. So that's 60 points, 60 points right now if you're still holding on to that trade. If you were just a fly on the wall and said, I'm going to do a one lot with these guys and, and get on there, that's what we're trying to do, provide real like real meaty stuff here from, from well thought out, different perspectives, instead of one person just sitting there in front of a screen with sunglasses on telling you easy Come peasy. On. So, hey, one of our top funded traders, Nick T, saying Spicy. 280 to 300 long time frame point of control, targeting 280s in the NASDAQ. Thank you, Nick T. Keep it coming, my man. It's the low of the I'm still balance. holding this long. Pushing. We're pushing higher, guys. Yeah. Are you Dakota? You're, 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 Damn, son. Yeah, I pull up my charts. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to trail trade, this man. up. Dude. <laughs> just, that is man. awesome. Hey, Hands, Just dog. One contract. Hands. What's the worst that could happen? You break even on that one contract after you locked in a lot of profit. Um, nice yeah. Noah yeah. Hall. Nice Noah Hall. Hold that sucker. 
That is George. A lot yes, of longs. That that is very, very a lot good. of longs in the chat. Great to see you guys. Great to see you. Good stuff here, guys. Coach Jay, Dakota, <laughs> Mr. Michael. Good stuff. You can't get Coops the 300 you, if you're closing it before it gets there. <laughs> it's like a, a Dakota, honestly, the only, thing I, the only thing I see in your way, Dakota, right now is VWAP anchored to the New York Session Open, which is at 265. Mm -hmm. Above that, you're, you're getting 300. I, I think, I, and I can't say anything like is going to happen for sure. Um, but if we, yeah, I'm just going to trail it. That, I, I mean, anything can happen. Yeah. Maybe we hit 500. Yep. Who knows? Uh, I'm going to trail it, and I'm going to take what the market gives me. Um, yeah, you just never know where yeah. a, a runner could go. Um, we seen that yesterday, where if there was 400 points, a, a one contract runner on that house account, Andre, that would have been beautiful. Yes, it would have. Yeah, so gold, gold getting hammered right now, guys. Giving back all the gains on the day. Uh, tracking for 2,400. We were topped out at 2,448. We're now trading 2,405. Uh, gold is just getting absolutely crushed right now. Oil, too. Oil turn, has turned over. Selling, sellers to the downside just dipped beneath $87 even. Uh, now trading $86.87. So we are starting to see the correlation, inverse correlation. I say play gold getting hammered right now, guys. Trading 2,400 just beneath 2,400. Trading 2,399. Stops went Throw off. Throw a gold chart up there. Do we have a gold chart? Gold, gold chart. Yeah, I don't. I'm not sharing, but yeah, gold just gave all back. War over, Tom. Not yeah. funny. Not funny, Tom. <laughs> I almost laughed at that. <laughs> Shouldn't have thought. <laughs> uh, sometimes I should need to think before. That. <laughs> yeah. It's not like it's recorded or anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that got me. <laughs> Nasdaq's trading in the 60s. We're continuing to push. Um, yeah, risk. I mean, you got you, this, chat. Beautiful chat was right. Fast markets. What's that? Oh, this is we're we're so uh, yeah. You, we're all hopped up on uh, coffee and uh, and no dos here over here on 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 fast uh, fast markets. Because remember, it was like speed that you could buy at a truck stop. You know, back in the, the day. truck drivers, right? No, I hear slow. I hear yeah. I hear slow markets is giving us a run for its money though. You guys are building that that segment up really nicely. And guys, slow markets yeah, is pretty much, yeah, what Dakota's doing. He he pitched it to me in Moab. We we met up uh, when I was out there with my kids <laughs> doing their little uh, uh, rock climbing stuff uh, in, in these side-by-sides. And I'm like, hey, Dakota, come meet us up or meet me up. And we did. And he started pitching me on slow markets. I'm like, yeah, I like it. It's different than fast markets. And it's during slow markets. And you like, oh, you actually like to trade slow yeah. markets? He's like, yes. So. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm like, all you, buddy. <laughs> Yeah, it's crushed. I might be joining the slow markets. I mean, here we are. Markets move. <laughs> yes. This would be a like a a, a four hour like turn uh, trade for for slow markets, isn't it? <laughs> it takes a while. Yeah. yeah, I would be sleeping. This I would let this. This would be a runner, and I'd wake up in the morning and see where we're at. Yeah. Chat's asking for some slow markets uh, trades in the house account. Yeah. <laughs> well, I yeah, Michael. I might be joining. I might be joining them on uh, slow markets and do a house account. We're gonna have to. Uh, I mean, we'll house account and the week. Nikkei. Would that ever go wrong? Go wrong? Trading a company's what account on, on the Nikkei. I mean, it didn't for uh, Nick Leeson and Barings Bank. I mean, yeah, it did. Leeson, <laughs> she's Gleason. <laughs> hey, that right, trade's a winner. Oils. <laughs> that trade was a winner, wasn't it? <laughs> it <took 30> <laughs> It did. I swear to God, it was like an eighty. Like what was it the last time it was at the three three thirty thousands uh, in eighty nine or something? Something close to something that. Like that. Yeah, watch the movie, guys. Rogue Trader. It goes back to Nick Leeson, which was uh, 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 Ewan McGregor plays uh, Nick Leeson. Which we're trying to get that guy. He's still alive. He's still out there. Uh, he he. Bear, one rogue trader. Rogue means you're just going off the hizzy. With with the company's whoa, money. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Look at Nasdaq, eighties, wow. twenties. Sorry, oil getting that hammered. Two guys. Something else. Wow, Damn, you guys. Nice call, runner. Isaac Rivera. Awesome. Nice call, the runner, Dakota. Yup. Yeah. Nice call, chat. Nice call, chat. On keeping the runner. Man, we are giving out profits today on Top Sub TV. <laughs> yeah. There's opportunities. There's opportunities. See some combines right being passed, folks. I want to see some combines being passed with this stuff. Nick okay, T says, put a, hold my gear. 
Anybody in here still have trades down with, with the Dakota uh, uh, hold down the 200s? 50 handles away, below the 20s, below the 20s. We started looking at when it was below the 20s, the 220s. We started thinking, all right, it's firming up, building structure. So if you have that, yes, all right, nice. <laughs> Look at this. This is why yeah, I say anything can happen. Wow. Jay, you said it, man. This is going to be a 100-handle rally. It's going to go to this VWAP, oh, VWAP time. Here's that FOMO. Here's that FOMO, yo. <laughs> No, I, I, I could get fired right now. now too. <laughs> I could get fired right now for executing too early. I made money, boss. Yeah, well, left a lot on the table, yeah. son. Yeah. Dakota, how many you got on right now? Water? Just one contract from beautiful, beautiful. one. Beautiful. Nice. Yeah, you were right about that as well. That was a good. Uh, keep one. Why not? Just locked it in. Nice. Beautiful. Ice yes. Have... Beautiful. Beautiful. Beautiful, Mr. Moon. Just locked my XFA. Good job, Mark Simpson. Isaac, we got to get you a different color so we can see who you are in there. Yeah. The five, 5182s. 5182s. Yeah, you were talking about that before. You were. Great you guys level. got 20, 20 minutes left here in Fast Markets. This has been one hell of a ride. We ain't done. We ain't done. Oil's still selling off. Mm. We're seeing a reversal in oil and gold. Within that uh, inversely correlated with the bounce we saw in the equities in Dow, S&Ps, NASDAQ. These guys laid it all out there for you. John Jones, I hey, locked Jim. up my account. Yes. Good job, John Jones. Jim, what'd you, what'd you take a payout request for? How much? Jim, G-E-M. I took my first payout request. Just requested my first payout. Let's go. Yep. How much? Cash those checks, man. Rick locked it up. I'm done. Nice yep. guys. Are you, uh, you guys say locked it up? I'm assuming you guys that are saying locked it up are actually using the market locked it in. lockout. I like locked. I like locked it in. I like locked it up, Andre. Locked, locked it up, up <laughs> means I'm locking it. Locking it up on the day. Up. Or locking it in means you're locking in the profits. Locking in that vault. Oh, Lock it up, right. close up shop. Same thing. Same, uh -huh. same. Yep. Lock it up, close up shop. There you go. Lots of people are using the lock button. I love it, man. What an addition. I know. I wanted to say we're the only ones that could use that button. Whoever's but... idea that was. Whoever's idea that was. Yeah. Uh, you must know. They're going to be off. <laughs> <laughs> deserves a raise that guy deserves, that man or woman deserves a raise if you came up with that uh, nice job Andy uh, just a heads up we got Baker Hughes at noon today guys we got some Fed speakers this afternoon we got Bostic at 1.30 and then 2.30 we got Daily hey, we started listening to Bostic Bostic gave us the heads up that uh, we're not we're going to be pushing rate cuts a little further out on the calendar Kind of laughed at him, scoffed at him. Sure enough, he was on to something. So pay attention again. Bostic at 1.30 Central Time, 2.30 Central Time. We got daily speaking. Uh, for those of you guys that are liking this, man, this has been one hell of a fast market. Please hit that like button. Please hit subscribe. Tell your friends. Share all the novice shares. People that are interested in getting into trading, this is the place to be, Top Stop TV. All right, come here. Practice. Work on your craft. I mean, you got the Coach Jay. You got the Dakotas. You got Mr. Michael, the CEO right here, all in front of your face for two, two and a half hours, Monday through Friday. It doesn't get any better than this. Spread the word. Let's make this thing big. We're going to keep trading bigger size on that house account, leaning on our funded traders because we put our money where our mouth is. Not only do we back them, we support them as well. Exactly. So come here to Top Step TV. Yep. Let's do this. Let's make this sucker big. On our march to 100,000 subscribers. I think we have a bell to bell next week, too, for the 80,000 subscriber mark. I can tell you when, yeah, but we do have a bell to bell next week. We do. We do. We back them. We back them as a whole, back their accounts, yep. uh, back them as an individual. And then the house account play, HA play, ha play, house account getting hammered. is backing, back, backing their in individual ideas as well as everybody here, or the, almost to the tune of 4,000 people here, getting your thoughts in here. And that's kind of the whole, again, the blend. I'll keep repeating this until we all get on the same page that we're doing this together for the house account. And then you can ride and join along. You can fade it if you want. 
uh, or however you want to do it. You just watch and, and all that kind of stuff. But uh, this is a great – hopefully you guys digest it all this because there's a lot of like dissecting the uh the the uh the initial idea uh, kudos to dakota for getting us started on that one kudos to coach jay for bringing it in kudos to isaac for bringing it in and then kudos to the uh, uh however many people uh pulled uh to say let it run let it not run or get it. all that together is team trading that's what we're doing here it's not individual yep, yep. Beautiful. Yep. I'm out. I'm flat. Um, plus nice, nine, two, seven, seven. A day, so. What's plus the uh, nine, two, seven, seven. Nice. $10,000 day. Live fun. Uh-huh. Live fun. If we got 80% long tilt in the net, in the Dow minis here, 71% long and crude. Crude's been taking a nosedive here the last uh, 30 minutes or so. 69% long in ES. Nice. Uh, nice job, Isaac as well, dude. I mean, our our Anne Marie levels are coming in. That that was a hundred point move because the low is like ninety three, and the high of this was two ninety one. Yeah, Nick you know? T so, shout out. Yeah, hell of a trade. The power of letting your winners run. Man, ain't nothing like it, Dakota. Well, someone in the chat, I think it was Trent, was saying, as a newbie, let's talk about that real quick, Dakota. Now you're flat, right? Yeah, I'm flat. Okay, so try. Remember, Trent in the chat was saying one of the hardest things is a new trader is learning let cut your losses short and let your runners win or let your winners run. I should say. How I mean, is that just an experience thing, Dakota? How, what do you? What advice do you have for a uh, Trent out there? I mean, essentially, you're doing the exact opposite uh, of just holding on to a loser and letting it blow your account, right? Letting it um, hit your daily loss limit. You, if you get into multiple contracts you have that flexibility to close out some for profit and then just leave one on for a runner. You can move that, your stop to break even, and then you're in profit. The worst case scenario is you break even for that one, you already have profit locked in, and then you just let the market run. Um, And then you could trail it up. You could, you know, there's so many ways you can manage a trade. Um, If you just get into one contract, of course, you can't just close out some and then let it run. But think of it like I guarantee you almost everybody in chat has had a bad trade and it goes against them and they hold on to it and it keeps going and going and going and going and going. And then you don't get stopped out until after your daily loss limit. So think of it as pretty much the exact opposite, right? You want to, instead of a take profit, have a stop loss. And then instead of a stop loss, you you know, Maybe you don't have a take profit. I, sometimes I let a, a runner go overnight when I'm sleeping. And I think you even done that a couple times, MP, where you just you place a trade, you wake up in the morning, you took either you know one contract for take profit, and then you wake up and the market just moved in your direction and you caught a really amazing runner. Mm-hmm. Great stuff. Got some sellers coming in here saying, nope, we're not going any higher, guys. Nice out Dakota. Nice out Dakota. I was just going to say. <laughs> Dakota, oh, yeah. what are you doing this weekend, Vince, Dakota? Vince, yeah, what does what your weekend look like now, Dakota? Your, that would be uh, you're gonna be the quite I the work, like, you're working, on, my life is on, work. On, uh, like, what I mean, you I like like you're grind. Work. yeah, trade during, when you the, stop week, to smell the, during the weekend. Would so you haven't stopped to smell the roses yet on anything in your life? You gotta, you gotta have something that you uh step away right the one thing i do that i could say is not work is i play poker um, there you go i like it i you went to moab the table, we so. had a drink in moab that was a little vacation for me <laughs> we'll see we, we hung out for like we hung out for 45 minutes uh dakota you, the, that was your 45 minute spring break huh <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was my vacation um <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll get another uh, vacation when we have that top step trading league this fall. Yes, yep. sir. Yep. We'll see yep. you there. I mean, you guys are the poster boys. So, yeah. Yep. Jay, you got any trades on? Over no, flat on the pla- uh, platinum. Nothing kicking. On mute. Did we lose Jay? There we go. Yeah. I'm 
want to be my 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 best Hogue impersonation. <laughs> Sorry, Hogue. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at gold right now. Uh, yeah, we had a pretty huge volume spike, uh, and again, I, I use volume for all my trades. Hundred um, percent. You can kind of see it right now. We had nine thousand contracts traded in that three minute candle, traded right down to twenty four hundred, and sellers couldn't push twenty four hundred. Uh, somebody asked earlier how I got that 194 level. It's the exact same thing. Um, I just did this on a three minute chart. Uh, but if you look at that candle there and then we get 50% of it, just look how the market respects 50%. Why it does it. I have no idea why some people call it a fair value gap or whatever it is. It's the market okay. respecting volume. Sellers tried to push it and they couldn't. So right now gold is holding that. Um, so just watching how we respond at the highs and lows of this candle. Uh, the high is 20, 24.14, 50% is 24.07, which was a pretty good entry uh, earlier. Uh, and then the low is right at 2,400. Uh, so just looking for some opportunities around there. Gold does close a little bit earlier the, uh, than the equities. So uh, we'll see how much opportunity is left. Good stuff, good stuff. Just hit the wire. Prior message from earlier, um, got to always keep one eye open on uh, the headlines here. Iran sent a message to the Biden administration through several Arab countries earlier this week. If the U.S. gets involved in the fighting between Israel and Iran, U.S. forces in the region will be attacked. So always in the back of our mind, we got to keep when we have these trades on. Uh, we're one headline away from uh, the market reversing, turning on you. Starting to see gold sell off a little bit here. We did test just beneath 2,400. Stops went off. I think we down ticked to 2,399. Gold has been the star of the show today, even though we've been trading it. Thank you, Rips. Iran war warns us to stay out of fight with Israel or face attack on troops. Yep. So these uh, are just some saber up, rattling, Rips? as they say. What's up, Rips? Man. What up, Rips? See you next week, man. Uh, All right, like this, Jay says, okay, watch Andre, the volume. Uh, watch the volume. Watch the volume, as Jay, or Jay says. Yeah, sorry, Michael. Andre, uh, he was always with this really good prop firm and, and the owner of the firm. It was a nice boutique one, El Dorado Trading. They were kick ass. Uh, everybody knew him as, as great. And then there was like, you know, then the other ones popped up, the DRWs, the jumps, and all that kind of stuff in Chicago. Uh, this group, you gonna do <laughs> this it? guy. You going to do it? No, no. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, put a one lot on over the weekend. He was just he, he a big size trader. And, and Dakota, you may like this. He's a big size, big trader. But he'd always just leave a one lot short over the uh, weekend. One lot short. Why? He's like probability that, that a headline comes out that would spook the market uh, is much mm -hmm. greater than one that would, you know, uh, jolt the market higher. Yep. And uh, that's that's just stupid. That was a stupid fun play. And he just yep. left every every weekend with one. This would be a good weekend uh, to leave one short. And and I'll, I'm gonna do this today. No, no hold on, hold leave, on. Leave, leave one on. It's a do it at like two. Do it at two fifty nine central. Don't do it right now. I'm not gonna do it right now. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe you can buy insurance. a treasury. Buy uh, buy some gold maybe instead, so you don't have unlimited risk. That's the thing with the short I, one. Uh, uh, Costco is like fifty miles away from me right now, so I don't really feel like driving there, Andre. Buy a buy a daily <laughs> option or a weekly <laughs> option put. Buy one put too. on the queues. Yeah, now he'd short a one lot in the yes every Friday at the close. Yeah, he just do it straight out in the ES. When you start getting the options and the decay, and I don't know, the option game <laughs> to me is the, the, I like playing checkers more than I like playing chess. And futures is definitely playing checkers. Connect four. Yeah, Connect that's four. your game. Tic -tac, you're tic tac toe, you're actually. State champion, state champion from four to uh, four to twenty four, right? Twenty years, you know. <laughs> hey, we got a heavy, heavy tilt here in Dow. Eighty seven percent long in the Dow. Seventy one percent long. Eighty seven percent, eighty six percent long in Dow minis right now. Uh, Seventy percent long in the ES. Sixty eight percent long in Nasdaq. Eighty six percent long in the Dow. Yeah, keep in mind again. One friendly reminder: we got Bostic and Daily speaking this afternoon. Bostic is most definitely a voting member. We don't say Daily. Daily is as well. Two voting members, so their weight, their words carry much more weight than say a Goolsby who likes this talk as well, or a Collins speaking earlier this morning. But yes, Daily and Bostic voting members. We uh, FOMC. Hmm. Gold holding that. Yep, level. I think I'm done, guys. I'm just going to lock up um, this and I'm going to do so by no more trading for me. I, good way to end a Friday.
Good way to end a week. Good way to end the week, my yeah. man. Absolutely. That was really good stuff, guys. Uh, we got seven minutes here in fast markets. We got a lot ahead of us today. Hope you guys really liked that coach's takeover yesterday. Jay, Jay Dakota around there. That was really strong stuff. Now they're here on fast markets. Uh, yeah. Oh, man, we got Peter Tuckman coming up today on power players. That's a must watch. Tuckman's been fired up about top step lately, Michael. Oh, he's on the phone. Look at this. Look at this, <laughs> Look at this folks. Man, you make six Money, G's. Money's on the, the phone. <laughs> Who's he talking to right now? Look at this, folks. You don't yeah, get the same money real time out. In the space. He's talking to... Lips. <laughs> yeah, look at this, folks. Give me the hold on one second. It's not like we're doing live Skin TV here or anything. You know, just Skin shut up, Dre. I'm doing, lot. you know... What are you doing? Are you that was, uh, yeah. Sorry, guys. We got to pay our taxes. That was me approving a wire to pay a government uh, tax. If you guys do not know, today is the 12th of April. And the 15th of April, <laughs> taxes are due. Monday so is tax day. Yep. Believe, it or not, yeah. Believe it or not, Top Step pays our taxes. PSA for everyone. Pay your taxes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, man. Like, you got to approve this right away. <laughs> Well, they text me <laughs> right now. They're like, you got to prove this right away. It's got to get out. All right. Well, it's, it's an important approval, I would say. I mean, yes, as long sir. as you put the check in the mail by Monday at 11.59 p.m., right? Hell, we should just, they'll take, we just they'll take your check on a Tuesday. <laughs> they don't, they'll, they'll take your check on a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> we just uh, attach, attach the bag of cash to the pi- a carrier pigeon and say, go, go, go find them, buddy. <laughs> go fly to D.C. <laughs> go fly to Washington, D.C. and them. drop it off. <laughs> it's that way. When I, <laughs> hey, when I was doing a trucking company, here. I used to, I used to spend December thirty first writing checks <laughs> for like the next few months and sending them out mm-hmm. for the for the, make sure I could make write those expenses off for for the year. <laughs> Just not backdating checks because this is a recording. But yeah, on December thirty first, <laughs> I'd make sure I'd write December thirty first. Uh, make sure that's a tax write off. Right. Uh, you guys should look into this too, and I'm not ever going to give anybody tax advice ever because, for one, that comes back on whoever gives the tax tax advice, yeah. which we don't want to oh come boy. back to us. But yeah, Jack, but Jack, what are we with? just look, just no, go, go for it. Just look, look into look into uh, uh, your trading combines or recent what, like the the experience education and evaluation side of the program. As possibly being continued education uh, 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 towards your craft, like you can. There, there's. I'm not saying. How about this? You can't do it. So don't do it. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, but in the past, when I when I did any trading education, I went to my uh, CPA and I said, "Hey, you know what?" He's like, "Well, you know, you are continuing your trade," and and he worked his his whatever. He did. Just it's a good question to ask your your tax advisor. Hey, you know, I pay for education. I pay for education because this is education. If you're in the trading combine, that's education. That's you learning risk management. That's you, uh, you know, being all that kind of experiential learning. And uh, it's just something to look at if you can write that off or not. I don't know if you can. That's up to you to decide. I don't even know what your tax jurisdiction is. So that's another reason why you don't listen to anybody else. Uh, you know. But just check it out. It's worth the check. This, this has been, you know, such a great episode. It'd be a shame to have to delete it. But um, yeah, definitely check on that. <laughs> M- MP, uh, remember, talk to a tax professional about anything you're doing with taxes <laughs> and other disclaimers. Yes. That was MP, a- <laughs> as we're rolling out here, before we do, I believe that uh, James made something, and it, it was it prompted our memory that we made this because when you were on the phone right there. And uh, James, I'll let you take it from here. What is this? Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> what is he doing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Great work. <laughs> oh, that was-
advertisement. I mean, good hat advertisement. It is. <laughs> Look at him. It just doesn't stop. No, they got you here. They got you, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. You gotta pick up uh, the energy, Andre. Get yeah. your ass get your ass in gear, Andre. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. Oh, man. I didn't say He's that. So I didn't that's AI. <laughs> He's in gear. My goodness. Well, I mean uh, Is it that bad? Just- I didn't, oh know my was, God. I didn't know it was that bad. If it's that bad at work, I wonder why my wife's even still with me. <laughs> Come home. Come home, Michael. Uh, great work, James. Good job back there for production. Uh, gentlemen, that was an absolute good, pleasure. We absolutely carved that sucker up. Uh, everyone in there in chat, I hope you guys appreciate that. hope you guys are absolutely – we need to see some past combines. On Monday, I want to hear about everyone passing combines because after that, yeah. you know, TST's NBA mm-hmm. t- TNT, man, that is an awesome compliment right there, Tess kind of what we're trying to go for uh tnt and nba that's really good stuff appreciate coach j uh we see him all the time and this team in discourse too dakota my man enjoy your guys weekend much deserved michael great to have you back good to have you back in the captain's chair there uh great training today guys house account personal accounts we'll see some combines pass i'm locking andre i'm gonna lock, lock it lock it i'm gonna lock i'm gonna lock it out lock it up all right, all right. Lock me what out. did you make on that okay, trade? Guys, uh, 5,700. Nice trade. Dakota, uh, the house, the, the house account thanks you. I'm going to do one of these. And and Coach Jay thanks you. Andre for driving it thanks you. And yeah, for man. the chat, everybody in here that's team trading with us and your thoughts and opinions, thanks. House account. House account's on a two-heat two banger. Seven or eight yesterday with Andre and, and, and uh, another Coach Dakota call out. Coach Dakota. And then yeah. today. So, I'm going to lock it out right here, and it Thank is locked. Yep. Real quick, right before we got power players coming up, Peter Tuckman going to join the show. Real quick, pin to the top of the chat, uh, group coaching form. Get those questions in for group coaching later today. Uh, super valuable experience. Anyways, we got power players coming up with Tuckman, with Dolby. Tune in, guys. That was incredible fast, Marcus. Everyone have a great weekend, but stay tuned to Top 7 TV. we got a lot more coming up. Don't forget about power players at the end of the day. Later, guys.
Hello, everybody, and welcome to Power Players. We have Peter Tuckman here from Wall Street Global Trading Academy, probably one of the best people we could possibly be talking to right now. Peter, what is going on with these markets, and uh, how, how are we doing over in New York? Good. So, hey, for, hey, what's up, Top Step Nation? Good to be here. Always a pleasure talking to you guys. So, look, there's a, there's a lot going on. I think we need to really understand where we're at, right? We just finished out the quarter, best quarter since 2019. That's all fine and good. Literally, it's almost like the switch got pulled April 1, right? Normally, you see a new influx of fresh money coming into the market beginning of the month. Well, I don't know if that happened or it kind of got lost in the sauce, but it was not that noticeable. What ended up happening was that the whole tide started to turn. Coming into the end of 2023, we were looking at seven interest rate cuts based on the sort of solid economic data and the inflation story that we had been presented. Things were going down from eight down to three and things were fine and all that was down. What ended up happening and started to happen in January and February was that the economic data, I think the best analogy I can use is if you guys, if you go on a diet and you want to lose 35 pounds and you change your whole eating habits, the first 30, you go like keto, you go paleo, the first 30 pounds you lose is actually not that hard. But the last five pounds is absolutely brutal. Same thing going on here. We've gone, we've had, we've engaged the economic tools that the Federal Reserve has. They did an amazing job. We got from eight and change percent down to three, 3.1. 3 but that last percent is actually is causing us absolute misery, right? We had 18 consecutive major interest rate raises to pull money out of the money supply to be able to get inflation under wraps, and we did that. However, this last 1%, we're having a lot of trouble getting to. What's ending up happening was the economic data that we've seen, January and February, even though Jay Powell did say he wasn't going to go overreact to it, CPI and PPI, and I'll try to explain why I think it's happening, right, were a little bit disappointing. Now, there's nothing wrong with a pause, right? Markets often take time to adjust two economic data, two economic tools that have been engaged and economic policy that the Federal Reserve does. But we are living in such a hyper, you know, accelerated world that people are incredibly impatient and they're not willing to give this market a chance to kind of marinate for a little bit on where we just came from, where we are at, and basically be patient for that last 1%. So there's this big push when we're barely done raising rates, we now suddenly want to lower rates, right? So that seems like that's coming off the table and that's what's going on. Markets don't like anxiety. They don't like a confused message. And we're getting a lot of that on both ends. January and February's economic data was a little bit disappointing relative to expectations. It wasn't bad by any means. It was literally off one tenth of a percent. But the media tends to blow this up and they're, they're so catastrophist in the way they approach. It's the biggest day ever, the worst day ever, you know, the greatest bull market, the worst. I mean, everything they say is in these exemplatives, which markets don't like if they're not, if those expectations are not fulfilled. So January and February, the numbers came out. They were a little less than expected. We were looking for 2.9. We came out at 3 or 3.1. Well, that became the biggest catastrophe of all time. It doesn't necessarily have to be that way. Then two weeks ago, Federal Reserve, Jay Powell came out and said, I'm not going to overreact to the January and February numbers. I think we're going to cut down from the seven down to the three interest rate cuts this year, 75 basis points. He did not give us an exact schedule. Look, we're also in an election year. That throws a little bit of a wrench in the story, too. But he wasn't clear about when it was going to happen. We were looking at probably a June, a September, and a December. It's very clear that we don't usually raise or lower interest rates or change policy uh, on an election month, right? So that took November off the table. So then what ended up happening was after that little visit we had with him, we started to see, look, you've got the Fed chairman and then you've got all these governors running central banks all over the country. Sometimes these guys agree. Sometimes there's dissent amongst the ranks. Well, clearly that's what we're seeing. You've got Kashkari, you've got Bastiak, you've got guys who are dovish, guys who are hawkish. You've got such a different double-sided speech coming out of all these guys and that the market is completely confused. There's no 
clear messaging coming out. Literally in the middle of a day, the market could be like going up, everything's fine and good. They'll make some statement that will throw a wrench in the market and the market gets whacked, right? So that's kind of where we're at right now. Basquiat came out and said, the market's trading flat. The economic data does not uh, purport any kind of necessity to start lowering rates. And then boom, markets sold off. They didn't like that. Then another guy says, oh no, I don't really feel that way. We're gonna do one or two rates. Market rallies up. So you're getting these mixed messages. Obviously a lot of it relative to interest rates have the biggest effect on the tech sector, right? You're talking about money being free, money bar being borrowed, effect on real estate and all that. And so the economic data that comes out will affect the trajectory about interest rates. It'll affect the tech market. It will affect everything. So when you've got a mixed message and you've got confusion, markets don't like confusion and anxiety. That will affect the tech sector. So we saw tech get whacked, right? We're talking about NVIDIA that went in 2023 from 108 to 950 or whatever crazy number it got to in April. And it was also a big factor, part of the great rally we saw in, 20, in, in the first quarter of 2024. What ended up happening, suddenly April 1, the whole switch got hit, and suddenly, uh, you know, there was confusion, dissent amongst the ranks, and then tech started coming in, the market started coming in. One of the other thing that's an important factor to note is we've got a couple of global wars going on, right? Nobody seems mm -hmm. to be mentioning that, although it's a big part of what's going on. So you've got a Ukraine and you've got Russia, Russia a major oil producer. You've got a Middle East conflict going on. You've got you know, the Straits of Hormuz, the Suez Canal, the Red Sea. There's problems with oil delivery that affects the price. One of the biggest problems in the inflation numbers that came out, the X core number, was the price of energy and food. All of these things are being affected by the price of oil. When the price of oil goes up, it affects the yield curve. The yield curve goes up, the market sells off. That's where we're at. We're on April 12th here. We've had 12 days basically of a bit of a sell-off up till yesterday in tech and across the board. We've also seen it in the Russell, small cap and mid cap. It's very healthy. The market's pulling back. It's not a crash. It's not a crisis. It's just a little bit of a sideways market and a little bit of a pullback in the market. That's healthy in a lot of ways when it's a normal technical pullback. But when it's related to global conflict, when it's related to the yield curve, when it's related to oil, the story gets, and interest rates for sure, the story gets a little bit bigger. So that's kind of where we're at. I'm not clear why suddenly tech, which had sort of been short term, oversold into the yesterday's trading session, they totally turned that stuff around. I'm not sure if it was a short cover or whatnot. You had gone from an absolute crazy frothy market in NVIDIA in the mid 900s to actually a, a correction mode in NVIDIA so quickly. Look, everything that's trading in this market is happening at such an accelerated rate. Look, we're seeing you know a bear market at lunchtime and a bull market by the time the market closes. These things used to take generations to happen and now they're happening before lunchtime. It's crazy. Right. It's fueled by the catastrophism of all the media and all that kind of stuff. So I say all this to say is we've had a little bit of a pullback. It's being caused by the yield curve, by oil, by inflation numbers and whatnot. The Federal Reserve is flip flopping around how many rate cuts we're going to have. Maybe none, maybe one, maybe two. Market doesn't like uncertainty. That's kind of where we're at. So down, we're down yesterday. We're down today. Tech had sold off pretty hard. We had a little bit of a technical bounce on it yesterday. I don't know what it's doing today. But it leaves us at a point of confusion, a little bit of a pullback, a little bit of a sell off. I wouldn't get really overexcited. At the end of the day, everybody should, in a market like this that was trading, think about it. If you and I spoke and we did speak three, four weeks ago, everyone was saying, you know, I'd love to really put some money to work, but the market is trading so high, so overbought, so frothy. I wish the market would come in. Suddenly the market comes in, things become a little affordable some stocks go on sale and everybody suddenly as opposed to thinking great now i can buy nvidia at 840 not 960 everyone's thinking oh my god it's the end of the world armageddon's here think about what we were thinking about four weeks ago nothing's happened any different than a couple of 
a bit of confusion, a bit of anxiety around the market, right? Things have become affordable. What people should be doing from an investment point of view when a market does this is they should have a shopping list. The stocks that you wanted to buy four weeks ago that were really high and frothy are now trading on sale at a discount. Look, when your favorite leather jacket goes on sale at Macy's, you don't go running for the hills. You walk into the store and you drop down 200 bucks as opposed to 400 bucks and you're thrilled to death. Right now, you should all be making shopping lists of companies you like, companies where you like the process, the product, the people. They're now on sale and start chipping away at that. And I'm not your advisor. Disclaimer around the board. But if, listen, if you guys want to know how to trade this market, technical analysis is really the key to the castle when trading a market that goes up like crazy and down like crazy. Wall Street Global Trading Academy, the wonderful collaboration between Top Step, the best futures funded platform in the world, and Wall Street Global Trading Academy, the best technical analysis academy that you have, WSGTA.com. You guys are getting all of this in a wonderful collaboration and a wonderful package. Nick's about to ask me, hey, tell us about the webinar next week on April 17th, Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Wall Street Global, David Green, my partner, my mentor, my teacher, and I are gonna have a live free webinar. You gotta register. Go to WSGTA.com and register. Go to my Instagram page and go to the link tree and register. We will spend the hour and a half dropping knowledge that you all, I guarantee you, if you spend an hour and a half with me and David Green, you will be a 50% better trader. We will teach you about risk management stop orders. We will teach you about never turn a winning trade into a losing trade. We will teach you about technical analysis, risk management, money management. So you guys are in the right place. We're thrilled to collab with Top Staff. They're out there. We're putting out some fun social media posts together. They're great collabs. And that's all I got to say about that, Nikki, baby. Oh my goodness, chat. Put some W's in chat. If you learned a thing or two, that was absolutely incredible. Peter, thank you so much for giving me about the easiest 15-minute interview of my life. I think I asked you one question, and off you went, just dropping oh. knowledge left and right. Absolutely incredible stuff. Peter, thank you so much. I did drop your link for WSGTA in the chat. It's just zipping right by, though, because there's so many Ws, because people loved your, uh, <laughs> your insight and your content so much. But you do have a free webinar coming up. Uh, next Wednesday. The link is in chat if you want to register for that. Uh, Peter, thank you so much. And we'll actually see you on uh, on Monday as well. Have a great, great weekend. And we're going to move on to our next segment for Power Players with, uh, I think we've got Eddie and Robert coming up. Let's do it. Have a good one. Bye, guys.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Power Players. I'm joined with Eddie and Robert, also known as apparently R Bob. Now that's uh, you're also known as R Bob, which is which is gas. Yes. Trading gas. It is, it is R Bob. Yes. Eddie, <laughs> I mean, guys, how about that uh, market analysis from from Peter Tuckman in 14 oh, minutes, stuff, non nonstop. I, Chat, do you understand how hard that is to do into one take? He also does that for social media, and it's absolutely incredible. He'll be walking down the street of New York, giving market analysis, dodging people without zero ums or ahs. It is absolutely incredible. But, Eddie, you said you uh, had a nice little gold trade on. You said you were up two grand. Is that true? Just a little bit ago, yes. I uh, got 150K combine and put that on. And uh, I'm sitting on my hands right now, but I do have a practice account that I had some fun with. And uh, I could probably play with that one, but I uh, want to make sure that uh, we got that. There we go. We got my charts up there here looking uh, 2002. Um, just on that move just a little while ago here while uh, Peter was speaking here. So um, sitting pretty. I want to see what's going on. We just hit some lows here, 23.99.20. And uh, I'd like to see where we go from here. If we've got the sellers strong here, as you can see earlier today, uh, boy, we thought gold was not going to stop to the upside. Um, yeah, looks like sellers just sort of pulled away, had a seat and, uh, selling off the tops, 24, 48, 80, top it out. And then we saw nothing but sells, uh, all the way down here. Yes. I mean, the markets can go up just as fast as they can go down. And I think gold and oil uh, pretty much prove that today. Robert, have you taken any trades today and what are you kind of seeing in the market and what markets are you keeping an eye on for some action? Sure, Doby. Uh, I have not taken trades. It's been production all morning, so nothing mm -hmm. there. But uh, I, we know we have that micro challenge that I'm doing, and Ooh, uh, it's down a little bit. Yeah, and I'm gonna be honest with it. It's it's um it's taken a a little bit of a struggle on it uh, for reasons why I believe is I'm trying to trade these micros on the higher time frames, uh, like I typically trade. Uh, you know, and minis on the faster time frames because everybody knows I like the range bars and the way this market mm -hmm. moves that way. So I think it, it's going to be a little difficult to trade this with that style. So I'm going to mix it up a little bit and just spend some time this weekend looking over and seeing if I can identify something that will actually work with this yeah. uh, this 50k micro challenge. So what I'm going to do right now for power for, uh, power power players, I'm power actually going to switch over to a regular chart for myself. And I'm going to switch my combine over to my 150K combine. And we are going to throw this sucker um, on a single chart. And I'm doing this all right here, one chart. I wanna see if we can actually pull something out of this. And to be really honest, I have my other computer next to me, my personal one, because it has the setup that I like on it already. They're just not in top step X just yet. So I'm at a little bit of a handicap even the way I like to trade, but I'm gonna look over there, keep glancing as soon as the trade shows up on my screen, I will load it up here at five, 10, 15 contracts and have some fun. Cool, that's, that's uh, we're gonna keep an eye on on your trades. And then Eddie, what kind of, were you long or short gold to get this uh, two grand you got? I was short there, as a matter of fact, I just put a scalp in, pulled it up another 600. I'm um, looking at 2786 right now. I'm up 2786 uh, in that 150K. Wow. Wow. Okay. Okay. Nice. You guys are, you guys you know, are new lows here right too. Now. I mean, it's opportunity. Yeah. You are, you are cruising right now with that account up 27, carving it up as well in the gold markets. Uh, we do have a YM testing lows. I think we also have the NQ testing lows as well. Yeah. I do have a little bit of a bounce at 18201. If you were watching fast markets, uh, the team there took some really nice longs at around 18 to 10 uh, earlier this morning and were able to take some profits around uh, 18,000, I think like 270 ish. So they caught that bounce this morning. Great call uh, by by Dakota. That's right. Eddie Horn is killing it, is killing it. Uh, what do you guys well, uh, you kind know, of recommend? You yeah, go ahead, Eddie. I was going to say, D time, I've got that 50K uh, waiting for my 50K XFA, and I'm being very patient with that. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I'm sort of glad that I don't have it today because most likely uh, the odds for me would probably, I'd probably be in the negative. But, um, you know, patience uh, does pay off, and it is Friday. And I'm being, being very frugal as far as I go. I'm looking for the smaller profits, but 
the way this market's running, uh, my smaller profits are really turning into more than I actually uh, expect. And I'm being very happy about that. So I'm keeping my uh, my nose to the grind. I'm watching very carefully what's going on. And I'm being very careful because with the news that's been hitting the wire, I mean, uh, you know, this this can be something that really turns the blender on for these markets. And I don't want to be caught with my pants down on a cold day. No, no, no one, no one, no one wants that. Oh, so Robert, you have a separate monitor. I assume that is going to populate entries and exits for you. And then you're just going to try to place those trades in the trading combine. Is that the, uh, is that the game? That is exactly right. We have our, our setups here with there are actually three monitors here for uh, tops of TV production, multiple things going on over here. I do have my personal stuff over here off to the right. It's a little further away, so I have to keep leaning at it. These, these are like computer glasses, so it's hard to see them, right? Um, so it's, yes, the, the answer is the answer is yes, yes, and yes. I trade personally on Quant Tower, and I have my own little setup there. It's my own little uh, you know bot slash indie, and I use range bars yep. over there. As soon as those are available, tops of X, we're going to load them in. So yeah, I'm going to just keep glancing as soon as something pops up i will manually enter it on this chart right here that we can all see and uh we'll see how it plays out so yeah and uh it looks like so we had a great comment in chat from uh, andy here i appreciate that eddie was quietly watching gold when top step tv first started and now he's regularly trading it passing combines and kicking butts and that kind of uh, leads me to a next thought i wonder how many people in chat are trading either a new market or an additional market now that they've started to watch top step tv and that we've actually started to cover some more markets so you kind of get a sneak peek at how stuff moves so chad if you've ever uh if you're starting to trade ym or gold or maybe crude oil now and you didn't trade it before all because of top step tv please let us know in chat i think that's very interesting i think we all love watching and covering different markets here uh, speaking of different markets, we do have crude oil just under $86 a barrel. Uh, we were trading as high as 87.60-ish at one point in time, so almost off a buck and a half from the highs. And chat is starting to put in some products that they started to trade now that they normally uh, did not trade, which is awesome to see. Uh, Robert, have you got introduced to some new markets? I think you might've started the trend of YM and I think I just co-opted it completely, but, uh, YM has been a fun market to trade. Any, any other markets that you're looking forward to that, that are starting to get added to top step X? Um, well, yeah, the YM thing kind of came out of the blue and, uh, trading NQ and YM there's, there's similar movements. It's just that if NQ goes against you a little bit, a little too far, too fast, you just, you know, you can be out of the picture real quick, but YM is different price point, $5 a point versus 20. And you won't get, the thing I said was you won't get your face ripped off uh, trading YM. Yep. So that is something that I'm, I'm still, I'm still doing with it. Uh, uh, as far as other markets on those, on that micro challenge, I have just the indices up. Uh, I'm not strong in ES trading. So that's going to be uh, mm -hmm. that, that's a, that's a challenge right there. Again, I'll work on this stuff this weekend and see what I can come up with for that style and that type of trading, because what I found myself doing uh, is entering the trades and saying, okay, this looks pretty good and having it go a little bit my way and like taking the money out of it. But with the micros, you got to hold on to them a little longer. So with my average trade time being less than three minutes, I'm expecting my micro trades to be at least 30 minutes or an hour plus during the day. Uh, and they are not doing that. So I'm not good with that just yet. And I need to, I need to come up with a different plan, a better strategy, all around for using these higher time frames on time-based charting mm -hmm. micro contracts. I will put that together. It's a challenge. This is exactly what it is. Uh, getting myself yeah. out of the comfort zone at multiple levels, but we're, we're going to give it a shot, man. We'll, we'll keep going. Yep. And then awesome. Robert, you're doing a, a challenge. I'm kind of doing a challenge as well, trying to make sure I stick to the same uh, profit taking system for all of April. And I have to say, when you start challenging yourself and, and discipline in areas, it gets uncomfortable pretty fast, which has been my experience thus far. So it's, it's going to be fun, but I think we're going to be uh, have a really good time kind of sharing our experience, uh, Coach Robert, with this with these challenges that we've uh, given ourselves, and hopefully people in chat have joined us in some of these challenges as well. Uh, maybe personal daily loss limit, same execution strategy. You know, I would suggest just picking something and sticking with it. I think I, we've probably all been there at one point in time, but, you know, we don't want to have that conversation with ourselves, you know, 30, 30, 60, 90 days from now where it's like, oh, I wonder where I would be right now if I stuck to my personal daily loss limit. 
You don't have to have that conversation. Just start today. Start on a Friday. It'll be great for a Monday. Uh, Eddie, right. is that kind of your approach to some some discipline stuff? I mean, we're all doing challenges. Do you have anything that you're trying to stick with? You know, uh, this past week, I've caught myself uh, sort of displaying some FOMO. Um, we've had a lot of movement um, earlier this morning, a little FOMO. Um, I have been working on my patience and discipline. That's been something that uh, I really need. Patience, I've been working on that for, for months, okay? Um, and I keep reminding myself, this is what I need to work on. And when I get that FOMO, I've got to say, okay, you know what? We are working on patience. All right. Don't screw this up. Don't trade just to trade. Uh, and, and like they say, you know what, if you miss the first bus, the second bus is going to be right behind it. Okay. Um, that's where the patience pays off. So you know, still working on patience, but this week FOMO sort of found the uh, window open and crawled in. And, uh, I'm trying to make sure that, uh, I call pest control to get uh, that back outside where it belongs. Yeah, it is a nasty, nasty little bugger. Uh, We do have, I think, uh, NQ and YM kind of have the same formation going on, and it's trying to uh, test uh, 18,201 again in the N, sorry, in the YM, and sorry, in the NQ, and then YM (laughs) is testing 38,300 ish. So definitely something to keep an eyes on if you are watching the indices. Crude oil and gold have still kind of uh, rolled off their highs and are hanging out. Nothing extreme in the tilt thus far. I mean, NASDAQ 62% shorts, 59% long in crude oil, 59% short in gold, and 59% short in S&Ps. We are testing these lows again. Uh, Robert, any setups setting up for you? Just saw one right now, letting that go. It's going to take a few minutes to get to it, but we are going to uh, we're going to see it play out, and I'll tell you exactly what they are. I'm looking for a uh, this this is a zone I'm targeting. It is on NQ. It is eighteen thousand. Sorry, we need your uh, charts. One eighty. We can't okay, see your charts yep. yet. So let me get your charts. We can, uh, as soon as they new low in gold, folks. New low in gold. gold. Okay, there we got your First charts up. New- okay. First, it was new highs in gold all day long. Now it's new lows in gold. Uh, yeah, market goes up, market goes down, doesn't it? So this is what we're looking at. This is NQ. Uh, I, I'm a targeting a zone area. It's uh, 18,180. And the end of the area is 18,170. These are just round numbers. This is 0.25, 0. 0.75 there, but I don't care about that right now. I'm just rounding them out. I'm splitting the difference up to where the previous low was. We're going to make a quick entry there, see if it goes our way. We're going to add to it. Uh, and then we're going to pull it out about halfway through which I'm going to add my limit buy-in for the same number of contracts. Just like this, we'll just see, we'll let it run down, see how it plays out as soon as we get filled. Nice. Okay, so we can we can stay on uh, Robert's charts here for a bit because he's going to work some orders. Uh, I am not going to be working orders, not until power hour, and God knows what could happen by then. because That is a long way away from now, and the markets are doing some crazy stuff today. Uh, Eddie, are you yeah, still looking at getting some more uh, trades? So is there time to lock Actually, it up? some You're comments like, oh, coming in here uh, yeah, yeah. from Goolsby. Uh, he's talking about the uh, the PCE is reinflating. The Fed will stabilize prices. Also, he's mentioning the Middle East instability is a wild card for the Fed in terms of oil prices and gas. A negative supply should not be good. So these are coming from Goolsby, uh, but I think the big players were waiting for Bostic and Daly later in the day but still this does have some impact on what we're seeing here today wow wow okay so we still have a lot of speakers coming up man just a lot of opportunities for the market to uh shake and bake with all the action that is going on robert i see you starting to uh mess with your trades over there no fills yet from what it looks like no fills yet the first one is uh 189.25 and we hit a a low of one uh 91.5 when that news came out there it's not i wouldn't call it a huge drop or anything just popped down a little bit uh, that's the only thing honestly that's got me concerned is because we've been down 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 like this we're right at that uh, resistance area uh, support area now you know 18195 ish mm-hmm. and hoping that you know when this blocks down i'm gonna give myself a little bit larger stop on this first entry just i don't want NQ to drop, enter me by a few ticks and go 20 the other way, stop me out and then go to my target. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to give myself a little yeah. more room. It's 150 K calm line. I have the room. We are, it looks like we're ready to punch into it. Um, and yeah. full disclosure, I forgot to check my bracket orders. So if one shows up, I'll have to like pull it off real quick yeah. since I already put and, these uh, up. We'll see. 
Chat, if you are new new to trading, uh, what Robert has here on screen is actually a stop market sell order. So what he wants is for price to push down and then continue down further, uh, right? So you can start taking taking profits as it starts moving down. Actually, did you just get filled? Or did you pull that order? I did. I'm gonna, I have to change this real. Hold on, Dobie. I'm going to change this real quick uh, okay. because this was set oh, for micros rapid. and I need to change. Yeah, I need to change my... Uh, my parameters because cool. it, it entered for uh gave me a target and a stop of 100 dollars. so as soon as it entered and you got closed. filled congratulations you're, you're i got on, filled. Uh, the job on your 86 bucks okay 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 i, I just, gotta get in this real quick real quick real quick yeah, i'm gonna hit my sell market we do again why am crashing below 38,303. i'm mimicking my trades again right now with my new okay. Uh, corrected targets, sell stop. There we go. Okay. So we are back in that trade. I just marketed it in just to simulate the last trade I had on. Nice. Yeah. So yeah, you were betting for the market to crash below price and then you wanted to get filled on, uh, on you want to cover it lower, right? So it wasn't, uh, you know, it's like, right. I wouldn't say it's, it's an advanced order type, but it is a, a strategy that you can use to play breakouts. Yep, and it's, it did not break outs and run forever. And uh, with this strategy, you honestly you do get stuffed out a lot. So you can it, a lot of times they'll make an entry and then come up and stop you out and only to go where you want. So you do need to give yourself a little room. But oh, look at that personal daily loss limit hit already. Wow, how did that already. happen? It's on a thousand. Yeah. Okay. So here's this it's is the moving. learning. Let's stay on my screen for a second. This is the learning experience for yeah. all of us because I'm jumping around real quick. And this is what we tell you not to do. So what happened with this is I was had my orders, my bracket orders, my personal loss limit set up as if I was trading my micro combine, which is why I entered and got out quickly on that $100 because I never changed it to go to my 150K trading minis, okay? So the second thing um, is that I did not change my personal daily loss limit. It's set for the micro combine of $1,000. We know that it's $3,000 on the 150K. So this is exactly what happened. Uh, this is a rookie move, and I'm glad we show this on here because anybody can make mistakes at any time. And it, it's just something that I did not do correctly, did not plan for. So there you have it. This is hitting a loss limit, which really should not have because it should have been at $3,000. Um, so that yeah. just blows that one. We're going to change over to a 50K and <laughs> do it right this time. <laughs> there, okay. there you go. I mean, Robert, you're being, you're being very transparent here, you know, and, and uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's yeah. going to happen here. It does yep. happen. It does happen. But you have another account that you have. You have a 50K account. I got a couple of accounts as well. Um, I'm going to switch that right 50, now and we're going to fix it up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so make sure your personal price, daily right? loss limits are set right, that you're on the right markets, that you have the right bracket sets. It's all it's all devils in the details with trading. No one's coming to uh, save you if you make a mistake. Your broker is not going to undo your trading error. So it is all our responsibility as traders to make sure that we're doing the right stuff. Uh, YM still dipping below 38,303. Let's take a peek at the NASDAQ as well. Uh, similar shape. So if you are watching the Dow and the NASDAQ, their chart pattern actually looks very, very similar. And we can take a gander at gold. Man, gold is off. Like public math, uh, $160 from the high or so. No, more than that. So at $245.50, I'm not doing public math anymore. It's a fool's errand. And CL catching a bounce at 86, at 86, but very, very active markets right now. So you did hop back in that trade, did you, Robert? There we go. This is perfect. So you're, you're right back in, but with the micros this time, right? Or no? You're muted? Am I muted? Yes. <laughs> I am muted. Is muted. I okay, am you are. muted. I'm <laughs> pulling a hogue over here. This is a 50K okay. combine. Leave him alone. Micro one. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just throwing on here I, the same setup that I just had. Uh, but I adjusted my parameters ahead of time. So when I did that market in, it's giving me my buffer of 250 and 250 profit and stop. Yep. And I have my daily personal daily loss limit um, set as well. So so we'll see if it drops down like this. I am going to just bounce out of a position and let's see if it gets any closer. 
Robert, do you have just an exclusive micro account? You mentioned that. It's in my micro account. I do. Yep. And I'm going to close that trade right there for 145 because I don't know if it's going to bounce up or not. I want a little leeway back up, and that will re-enter go through this as well. Nice. So you're just so trading the regular ask, what's NQE the... mini there, right? Yes, sir. Nice. On that micro account, Robert, what's the method behind the madness? Uh, on the micro account, the, the method right now is to pass the trading combine, 50K trading combine, uh, using only micros. Um, yep, That's and nice. then I'm going to jump yeah. right back in this. Sorry, guys. I'm going to jump yeah. right back in this. Jump right uh, back in. I, 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 there we go. I, I like, there's my entry, my I target. Like so a there's a proof right there that all wow. the stuff just worked that we were talking about without my stupidity of trading the wrong daily loss limit, personal loss limit. Uh, the zone worked out. Had I had it correctly, when I made my entry, roughly this area last time, I ended up getting stopped out right here last time. My stop was actually up here. So this actually would have been, again, we can we can talk coulda, woulda, shoulda all day long, but I yeah. want to go through the setup. Shorting here, adding to it here, and then taking out down here worked perfectly if I wasn't a bonehead and didn't set my loss limits correctly. So, <laughs> hey, it happens, and that's what we're doing. But, it Eddie, does. that micro account, we're just going to try to pass the 50K combine using micros. Um, like I started at the beginning, cool I was challenge. trying to trade it. Yeah, yeah, I was trying to trade it like this and it's not the right way to trade that account. So I'm gonna spend time this weekend, put a different plan together and do that going forward. You know, what Robert, I, I, I like, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you've always been a trader that challenges oneself. And, you know, I find that a very good challenge. Some of our traders, that's exclusive. That's all they trade. And I don't think we've sort of gone down that path here uh, to see if at least one of us trading just exclusive micros, um, you know, to see passing the uh, trading comment. It's a 50K, right? It's a 50K. Uh, yeah, I'm only trading micros, which means if I'm nice. trading it like it's an XFA, which means in order to take a payout, I have to make like $200 or more per day for the five days. Uh, and I can also right. only trade two contracts. So even the 50K combine, I'm up to five. I'm only trading two to simulate uh, what I will need to do once I become funded and a practice makes perfect, right? You got yeah, it. great job. That's a great. I thought about doing that too. It's like, what if you, uh, you know, just trade a trading combine that aligns with the scaling plan, so that way when you are in a XFA, you're already, you know, scaling plan adjusted. I think that's actually mm -hmm. a really, really good idea. Really good idea. So if you're in chat, I would probably want to write that one down. So pretend you already have a scaling plan that follows the rules, so that way you don't have to make an adjustment when you actually get to your XFA, and it's not a huge shock. What's like, how come I can't? manage my trades with five micros it's like well we have a scaling plan so really really good idea actually i like that a lot and, and let Maybe. me add too i mean if you want to try that you know you don't have to you know use a combine or an xfa you got a practice account you know i, I hit my practice account earlier today uh just to test the waters and uh just remember you got that practice account give it a try with the micros give it a try uh, with with maybe a updated strategy if things aren't working for you. Just remember you got that account there and nobody's watching it but you. And um, it's a great place to learn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So and, yeah, uh, yeah, I am so uh, kicking myself in the butt right now that I was not <laughs> doing the correct entries because if we look at this right, that would have been five contracts through the first target, five contracts to the second target. Uh, totally would have walked away with about fifteen hundred dollars on that, but that wow. that's all that is yeah, that that is all on me. But the point being, forget I traded. The point being that I did my analysis, I had my plan in place, I had my targets, I had my entries ready, and that all fell through a hundred percent like I wanted to. It played out exactly how I was expecting. You know, again, if I didn't do that bonehead move of not setting up right to trade <laughs> but we then we just did it again we just repeated the same process exactly the same yeah. process except with uh a, a, a one mini on the 50k combine and here we are over 200 dollars that qualifies as a day for the five-day payout oh that's a very very good point and chat uh if you're enjoying this segment if you enjoyed peter tuckman if you enjoyed fast markets if you enjoy Power Hour, please give us a like and subscribe. We're only 480 likes. I'm pretty sure we can get to at least at least 500. And we're doing great with the subs. Over 80,000 subscribers. My goodness, we have come a long, long, long way. Oh, my goodness. But if you've learned a thing or two from Top Step TV, please give us a like. Trade a new product? 
discovered YM, discovered gold. Maybe you're trading uh, Natty Gas now, which is now in top step X. I know, mm -hmm. Jake Cook, only 480 likes. Only 480. I'm pretty sure more than 480 people like like top what? step. What? 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 Yeah, it's awesome. But what do we have coming up <laughs> next? What we have is, I think, everyone's most fun and favorite bit. It is top quiz. The opportunity. All right, Dolby. <laughs> what? Hey, oh, I'm trying to. Uh, well, you, you don't. Okay. Pumping it up, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll They've go. got go a couple ahead, easier questions this time. No, no, I, I up, get in trouble for, yeah. for making the questions up, too hard last up, time. We got a couple easy ones. Up next, Jack is going to host a real mediocre version of Top Quiz. <laughs> you may or may not enjoy it. It's going to suck. Uh, yeah. Chances are you probably won't win a reset or anything because the questions are going to be hard and you might just not be that uh. smart. So <laughs> up next is Danielle. <laughs> Top Quiz <is> with me. <laughs> Oh, she, oh, you have Danielle. Oh, great. Up next is uh, Top Quiz with Jack and Danielle. Going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm really happy Danielle's actually getting on screen. It's been a minute. She's been busy behind the scenes, and uh, she is fantastic. So everyone, uh, get your uh, pens, pens, <laughs> pencils, paper, whatever you got. Uh, let's do it. Top Quiz coming up. Jack, save me. <laughs>
Hello, everybody. Welcome to Top Quiz. It's Friday. I'm Jack, joined by Danielle. Danielle, welcome back to the show. How's it going? Thank you. It's going well. Happy Friday to everyone. Great to be here. Yeah. You missed the part. Of, did you see the part at the end of the last segment when I was talking to Dolby? Oh, yeah. I'm like apparently going <laughs> to fail or whatever. It's probably true. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thanks no, I for love the Dolby. confidence, guys. <laughs> no, I think I think you do well today. One of the questions is true false, so that already eliminates oh, some God. options. Click the link to join. <laughs> answer the questions on your device as they show up. If you get three or four right, you're in a raffle for one of fifty free resets, and the top five winners will get five of those resets if they are speedy. Uh, we got a lot in here, so I think we're almost ready to go, Danielle. Um, after this, we got shoulder tap and group coaching coming up, and we don't want to detract from their time. Roast my Any... trades today. Oh, yeah, roast and trades. Love it. Yeah. Uh, Danielle, um, really excited. yeah, it's... since we have you on here, any other mm -hmm. announcements of things that? Bell to bell next week. Yes. Not going to tell you when, but you got to tune in. We will definitely have a bell to bell. One free reset, uh, one per person. Tune in. I don't even want to know because then it could be tortured <laughs> so out of me um, <laughs> exactly. in the chat. So cool. Well, we got over 900 people in, so I think we're going to start right now. And let's get this let's Friday rolling here. Okay. The long Kahoot at work intro rolls <laughs> on, and then we're in it. <laughs> I can hear you say it in my head, Jack. Three, two, one. One. Which of these tickers will give you the spot price of the no. S&P 500? Is that the NQ, the ES, the SPX, or MES? Oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to go with the SPX. Okay. Well, I'm going to wait till the clock oh, rolls down a little bit. Yeah, I don't before. know anything, so it doesn't matter. Well, I, I know yeah. things, but you know. <laughs> you do know things. And yes, Robert's questions will be hard for me, I think. Yes, it is the SPX. Uh, See, when, you're trading the e, when you're trading the E, this is actually important to know. It's a learning moment. If you're trading the ES, that's a futures contract, and you are trading something that's deliverable in the future. So if you look at the ES price right now, um, it's actually higher than the spot price. So on CNBC and stuff, when they're saying that uh, stocks are up or down or whatever, they're referring to the spot price generally. Uh, yeah. Who knew it? New here every day. Bell to bell, slow, no stops, MP rants. Coach Jay is here and Danielle the boss. Is that you? Damn right. No. Okay. <laughs> Love it though. <laughs> quick, quick trigger there. Okay. Here we go with the second question. True, false. You could fit a 747 on the floor of the CME and spin it around without hitting the walls. I did not look this up. This I'll wait. is this, yeah. The source is based on, but one man, Robert the Riz Cooney. Well, <laughs> it was uh, MP Riz true. Jr. who said it this morning. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. It is true insofar that MP said it was true this morning. So you can't fact check me on it. <laughs> okay. Here we go with the <laughs> leaderboard. Yeah, okay, here we go. Coach J, Nasdu, Danielle's the boss, MP Rance. All right, D Danielle, quick. <laughs> we got two top it's step people me. in the uh, in the top five right now. That's no, that one's not me. Oh, it's not? <laughs> no, okay. just All my right. fans, we appreciate them. <laughs> Question number three. The person playing the villain or bad guy in professional wrestling is also known as the babyface, heel, oh. grunt, or MP. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm guessing on this one, I'm going to say the grunt. <laughs> the grunt. What do you think, okay. Jack? Do you well, know? I wrote the question, so oh, okay. what okay. I think is that it is the heel, and we'll see who the wrestling fans is. <laughs> um, MP would actually be shockingly good at like, you know, MP's a nice guy, but he can definitely play the heel intentionally <laughs> or unintentionally from time to time. <laughs> right. People were, asking about, people were asking about the picture. 
this program. I bet we're the biggest user of Kahoot. Danielle, we have to be. Oh, definitely after we broke it that one day. Oh, we can say that now? We were Next keeping away from that before. We, uh, oh, oops. <laughs> yeah, we uh, resulted in like an air page on the Kahoot main site. Shh, don't Sorry, tell them. Sorry, Kahoot. Um, yes, the answer is heal. And what do we got here? Oh, <laughs> MPs in the chat. Got to be more careful. Uh, but well said, Jack. Perfect. <laughs> Coach Jay on top. MPs rants. J E S. And then some things I can't pronounce. And then uh, Ryland. Okay, we got one more question <laughs> here. You ready for this? I'm ready. Let's go. Where did MP and Dakota meet for Dakota's 45 minute spring break? Is that <laughs> Moab, Utah, Miami, Florida, Las mm -hmm. Vegas, Nevada, or Chicago, Illinois? I'll hold off because I've talked to both of them about this many times. That was an incredible fast markets this morning. We'll definitely be seeing Coach Dakota and Coach Jay on here more often. Moab. Yes, it is indeed <laughs> Moab. Um, lots of you knew that from tuning in earlier. Okay, so we'll go to the leaderboard. Before we do, Danielle, um, mm -hmm. I, someone was asking about the wrestling uh, picture that I had up there with like the dummies. <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. It's stock photos in Kahoot and you can't get any real wrestling photos. So that's as close no. as I got. Okay, yeah. here we go. Locations I've seen. <laughs> top three, top stepping. <laughs> like an apostrophe there too. MP's rants. <laughs> that's and great. And the winner today is it's going to be it's Coach J, man. Oh, <laughs> he yeah. Baby. oh He's yeah. He's on fire. He came on. He traded. He won top quiz. What a day they're having. He's trading. Trading what? Platinum a, lean hogs. This man's a menace. All right. Jay's in there. Nice job. Love it. All right. Well, yeah! stick around. Stick around right now. We're about to go to group coaching with JD and Robert. So we have your questions ready. We'll get some answers. We've got a great rest of the day planned as well. Max Maserati's coming for power hour. Anne Marie's mm -hmm. doing the one o'clock session. It's going to be lit. It's Friday. Get out your favorite beverage. Oh, Anything yeah. else I'm missing there, Danielle? No, I'll cheers you one of my favorite beverages. Ding. <laughs> yeah, my, 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 tap water out of a large top oh, step tumbler. One of my favorite tumblers. We should put those in the store. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get in the store. Okay. We're going to take a quick break right now. We'll be back right after this. Danielle, thank you again for joining today. Always a blast to have you on. Always great to be with you guys. Bell to bell next week. See you then. Peace out.
All right. We are back. Happy Friday, everybody. And yes, we promised earlier in the week that we would do something a little different than shoulder tap. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. And we're going to call it Roast My Trading. Roast My Trades. And we've got Mick here with us right now. This is something a little different. And before we get into it, Jibo, uh, this is for you. And what's up, Jack? There you go. Here's your Bugs Bunny. And uh, Mick, what do you got for us? Uh, well, I'm really excited to do this today. So uh, moving away from shoulder tap, moving away from the rapid tap, today is going to be called Roast My Trades. That's what we're doing on Friday. I'm super excited about this because, Eddie, I think you know, and everybody else out there that knows me, uh, I am a bit of a shit talker. It's all in good fun. And uh, with us just calling this Roast My Trades, I get to talk some shit. So that's what I'm here to do. Um and I think I'm going to be pretty good at it. I do need some feedback, though. If I take things too far, do let me know. I'm trying to uh, kind of put my toes in the water here a little bit. I don't want to be too hard on anybody. Um, right, right. You know, nobody knows how good of uh, smack talk and I can do uh, better than my father-in-law. He makes himself a very easy target. Uh, I do a lot of that to him. So, uh, yeah, today today's going to be a lot of fun. I, I saw someone in uh, the chat, uh, shout out to Coho Salmon, uh, calling this punch in the face. It's not going to be quite a punch in the face, oh, yeah. but no. but we're going to have fun with this. Um, I'm calling it how I see it. I'm putting a fun spin on it, and I'm talking smack. So uh, with that, um, you know, you these, make, poor souls, these poor souls that submitted their names to us uh, are going to get it from me. I think the first few are going to be a little bit light and easy, but we're going to dive in. Let, let, uh, what was that you wanted to say? Let me ask say? you, Mick. Yeah, let me ask you now. If somebody submits a good trading uh report yeah you know, i want to make sure that uh it's not only for the bad that we want to make sure that if we do see something good um we can always sort of chime in on that so don't be afraid i know we're going to put the link in here um again for maybe next friday but uh mick as you are and uh, yeah, let's, lead us through this let's not drop the link because we've had a lot of submissions with these so i don't want to collect uh people submitting on you know Friday of this week, they're not going to get used for Friday and next week, probably. So, um, okay, we'll wait yeah. till next week. All right. With even right. the people that I feature today, we've got good stuff that's in there. Um, this is, I I'll highlight a little bit of that, but I'm going to be talking about, you know, I'm going to be, ro this is a roast, Eddie. This is a roast. So, you don't really roast people on their, on their good characteristics, qualities, or traits. Um, and if I see someone who submits something, uh, like a, 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 if there's a good trade report that I look at, I might skip over it. I might uh, go, you know, unturn, uh, turn over some rocks to see if I could find some dirt on other trading combines or previous XFAs. A number of these people that we're talking about today, I looked at multiple uh, accounts of theirs. Um, but yeah, this is analyze. We went from analyzing right. their trades. We're going to do that. We're going to do it as a roast. So before we get to it, though, I've got some big shout outs here. Um, we're talking about Dakota again today. I just got a message from him. He's saying he's done for the week. He's up $9,400 on the day today, uh, which I think puts him right around $34,000 in profits for the week this week. Uh, we all know he's at the top of the leaderboard. He's been crushing it. He's got a uh, good mind for money management uh, in his live account, and he's brought his account balance up to a very cool hundred and twenty nine thousand dollars in the live account and that's you know i'm just talking straight up account balance payouts aside it's one hundred and twenty nine thousand dollars sitting in that live account so he's doing exceptionally well and i'm happy he's walking away up big money on the day today big money on the week uh as as we always talk about you know lock in profits from a good winning day if you're ahead well on the week make sure you end the week ahead well and he's ending on a high water mark and a new account balance high so very happy for you, Dakota. We've also got Nicholas T up $4,400 in their live account and David A up $3,400. We've got Xavier up $3,300. Um, so hats off to everybody there, but let's get into the fun stuff. Can we pull up Levent's Le get, your, get your grill going there. Get the, get the grill going. You got a Weber? Right, or what do you got? Gas? We're gonna, we're gonna put we're gonna put a, we're gonna put our toe in the water here. I'm not roasting this too much, um, but Levelant, your best day was only 230 bucks. Your worst day was almost five times that at 1,036. Your average losing day is 545. Your risk reward is one to three. 
per contract, you're trading very small. You're only making 25 bucks per contract on your trades and you're risking 82 bucks. So risk reward has to improve. Um, and then you're also spending four times as much uh, time in your losing trades as you are your winning trades. There's a lot of things we could change here. Do the opposite of what you're doing as far as what you're risking, what you're taking down, and you might find a little bit of success. So uh, that's my piece on Levelant. Uh, we're going to go quickly, Eddie. Let's move on to Sime. Um, all right, here we go. So, uh, hey, they're currently in an XFA, so shout out to them. Um they did have to reset three times in a single day to pass that trading combine to get them to the XFA. Uh, and then, you know, in true form with these big swingers, they hit their $3,000 daily loss limit on day one. I'm very happy that they made $4,900 on day two. We'll see what happens. But, uh, you know, if you're coming out of the gates risking $3,000, it's going to be very, you're probably going to risk $3,000 on other days. And, um, you know, it's not going to work. They are a big swinger, uh, as you can tell by that first day in the XFA, losing three grand, then making 4,900. But it's kind of hard to roast this person. Uh, they did have a previous XFA that um, they lasted for a little while in. They were able to take $22,000 in payouts from a previous XFA. So they may have even been on the leaderboard before. But, um, you know, if they keep this up, they're going to probably only find short-term success like they did with that last XFA. Granted, that short-term success translated to $22,000 in payouts. Um, but let's move on to Winston. Winston, I didn't have too much to talk about with Winston, but um, he also is in an XFA. And I like how he's trading small in his current XFA. Um, keep that up and then put the pedal down uh, when it's working. Um, but something that they don't want to do in this XFA is uh, what they did in the recent combine uh, where they made $113 on day one and then went back to back thousand dollar daily loss limits uh, to lose that account. So uh, not to be replicated there. So, um, all right, let's move on. I think this is where we uh, really get into the roasting Eddie with David C. Um, when we get his card up, I'll speak my piece. Um, so David uh, might think that this is dancing and not trading. Um, we're not supposed to be taking one step forward and multiple steps back, David, um, especially on day one. So instead of resetting the practice account 32 times, in f oh, he has reset his practice account 32 times since February. Um, Let's try and keep one account and figure Ouch. out where we're falling short. Yep. Uh, this isn't Mario. We're not playing a video game. So don't reset those practice accounts. It means nothing other than your own development. So if you're resetting it and wiping the slate clean, you're not going to pinpoint where you're falling short. So uh, don't reset that practice account. I think they should probably stick to the 150K account um, and pretend that it's a 50K account with the 50K account parameters so they're not losing – four thousand uh, dollars of their forty five hundred dollar cushion after day two um so yeah david needs to play some mind games with himself sign up for that 150k so you have the cushion because we do have some uh unprofitable trading uh but treat it as it's a 50k so let's move on to daniel um Daniel, you submitted your trade report, uh, but you're, you're kind of hard to roast because he's only had one trading combine with us. He's been a member since uh, last week. He signed up for his first combine um, on April 7th. So it's going to be a little tough to grill him. Uh, I do like how he's selective with his trading. He's taken only one and a half trades per day on average. Um, and I like the hold times. He's spending 24 minutes in his winning trades and 16 minutes in his losing trades. Um and if he focuses on, you know, bettering that risk reward, he'll be profitable being right only 50% of the time, like uh, like he has been in this current trading combine. All right, let's move on to Eosis. Uh, 
Some of these are not roast because I like the stuff. I talked about that earlier when we first started. So I like what I see on this current XFA Yosis. Um, only three trades on the day one. Uh, they're trading one lots. They've capped their losses to $330. Um, as long as they're not replicating what I've seen in other trading combines, like the one to two risk reward, um, and worst days being, you know, quite a bit, uh, worst days being 20 times larger than the biggest winning day, you got a chance at being profitable. So as long as you're not losing 20 times more than you are on your biggest winning day, you got a chance at being profitable. Um, all right, uh, the next one, Constantine. Uh, I could just roast him for his uh, for his username, Eddie. The username is Superfly87. Uh, I got a year on you. I was born in '86. Superfly87. Um, so it's going to be really tough to reach the profit target, Constantine, if you're wiping out your winning days, hitting that daily loss limit every single time. It isn't working, meaning any losing day, they hit the daily loss limit. Um, that is, you know, it's going to be tough to make money doing that. Uh, tail as old as time. So adjust your risk reward uh, on a per trade basis as well as a, a per day basis. Don't lose $1,000 a day over here, okay? Um and if he was as patient with his winning trades as he is his losing trades, he might have actually passed a trading combine by now. Uh, they've been with us since uh, 2023. Uh, no trading combine passes. So, you know, Constantine, let's look at those losses. Let's preserve that capital and, uh, and maybe we'll get you to an XFA. Delane. Delane's all over the board, anywhere from 50K uh, trading combines to 100K trading combines. Trading the gold. Um, so never have I ever seen someone who can't last longer than three days in an XFA that also has a quarter million dollars sitting in their uh, practice account. Quarter million dollar account balance in the practice account, but they can't stay in an XFA longer than three days. So I'm going to make it easy for them. Go with 100K trading account size, but don't risk more than $500 to $1,000 on the day. You'll have a $3,000 daily loss limit, but you need a personal loss limit of $500 to $1,000. Um, so goal number one here, we're here to preserve capital and find good trades to get paid. Um, we're not here to burn through 6.66666% of our account on day one and then the other third of that account on day two. Uh, traders, if you're losing, if you're hitting the daily loss limit on day one in these accounts, these 150K accounts, you're losing three grand out of the $4,500 cushion you have. And then you go lose the other 1500 on day two. I don't know if I can help you. You just can't do that. It's a hot stove. Don't touch it. Uh, give yourself more than two trading days to, to, you know, try and find profits, but we need to preserve that capital. Um, so, until he can flip his risk reward from one to three and not make 30 trades in a day, um, you know, I think he's going to struggle. Let's pull up Jason. Are we really cruising through these that quickly? Oh, man. We're only 15 you are. minutes into this segment. You are. And, uh, you are. And we're only 15 minutes into this segment, and I'm on my last card. Usually with the rapid tap, we uh, – we took up a little bit more time, Eddie. I'm going to need you to fill some space here, Eddie, for me. Um, but I let's jump in that. and look. okay, let's jump. Well, interject anytime, pal. Uh, interject anytime. Okay. Um, with Jason here, I think um, for some reason Jason thinks that he's going to be profitable, losing a thousand bucks every single time that they have a losing day. But uh, he's not putting up thousand dollar winning days, so. Um, might need to check uh, your your methodology there, Jason. Um, if you're not regularly putting up over a grand a day or a G ball, as I like to call it, you don't belong risking a thousand dollars on your losing day. Um, and also, in their last XFA, uh, I got to say, try not to strike out on the first three the first three pitches like you did in that XFA. Uh, three days done, traders. If you get to an XFA. We talk about starting slowly and uh, and not busting out. I don't know why you, why some of our traders they have this account where they can take payouts from, and then they blow it in three days just by risking too much money. Um, limit your losses early on. 
allow yourself to have a couple losing days initially without busting the account. Um, you know, I understand the idea to make a bunch of money um, and get payouts, but you know, the people that trade like this, you might find a payout here and there, but you're not going to be someone who's taking payouts on a week bi-weekly basis, on a monthly basis, throughout the year, throughout multiple years. Um, so don't try and be one of those pop a shot people who they find short term success and then they go back to step one of the trading combine. Uh, trading combine is only one step right now, but go back to step one, which is the trading combine. You know, if you've got an XFA, if you've got a live account, you know, make sure that you're you're in the game for a while. Uh, it should be longevity should be the the main focus here. And um, and you don't want to be someone who finds short term success gets a payout for a couple grand and then has to go sign up for a new trading combine. It's not going to help you out over time. Um, Eddie, you know, grinding it out and, and going through struggles, ups and downs, and then coming out of those struggles, a, a better trader, a better person, smarter, better decision-making process. It's going to serve you that much better, you know, two grand for right, a payout right. and, you know, in the scheme of you things know, is nothing. Right. It's nothing. We need to it's, be positioning ourselves and developing our skills to be able to take 2,000, 2,000, 2,000 over a long period of time. And that all adds up quite a bit. Can I interject? Yes. It, it's it's yeah. not about how many times you fall. It's about how many times you get up. And I think we've all heard that saying a lot. Um, if we don't fail, we don't learn. And considering what Top Step offers uh, with the education and with the opportunity uh, to get funded and, and have a career in trading, um, you've got to remember that uh, losing is part of the game, but it's how you manage it. And from what we've seen here, first off, I'd like to say props to all those traders that we have just talked about. Those traders have yeah. said, you know what, hey, I'm not doing too good. Um, I'd like to hear what needs to be said, as Mick has said, all right? And, you know, we put a little uh, little tilt on it, a little spin on it with Roast My Trades um, for, for the Fridays. So props to those traders. And I hope the thing is that we are all learning. Uh, this can happen. And, Mick, I know that you've seen uh, traders going live and losing it that day. I've seen that, too, which is very disheartening. And, and I, I feel bad for the trader. But what we've got to realize is once we get to that, uh, the XFA or the live funded account, you've reached a plateau where you want to be, where your goal was, where your targets were. No reason to, to jack up that gas pedal. Um, the thing is, once you're in these accounts, you need to, you need to have that personal loss limit. Uh, keep doing what you're doing that got you to this position. Um, and once again, I'm going to preach about small trades adding up. Once you get to these accounts, once you get to an XFA, once you get to a live funded account, even in your combine, you need to set a foundation. You need to get some small profits in there, all right? A foundation um, in case you do have a bad day, all right, that you can fall back on. But those that, like you said, the first three swings, and you strike out uh, that was on one of the uh, the cards. That's not the way to do it. That's not the way to do it, folks. And and, and, and trust us, we're not misleading you. We're, we're trying to shed light on what works, what doesn't work. Now, it might work. You might pull out that home run bat right away and have a big profit. I've seen that. I have did that. But the odds for me, eh, far and few. Right. And yeah. I'm just trying to be honest here. But um, go ahead, Mick. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. And uh, like you said, mad respect to everybody that submitted their, their email addresses or their names for roasting my trades. I mean, if you're submitting you know, yourself for a roast, you know you're going to get it. And I might have to work on my, my roasting abilities. I felt like when I was drafting these up, number one, I had so much fun, more fun putting these cards together than you, I have for the rapid chat where it's like, areas to improve, you know, things to, con to continue doing. Um, but as I was going through and, and reading these all out, I'm like, did I really roast these people too much? Um, 
again, I wanted to treat it delicately its first time, but uh, if anybody's got any feedback on, on how I could be a better roaster, Eddie, I know you're in the entertainment business and this is tradertainment. Uh, you know, I'm all ears, everybody. Uh, I'm not perfect. This is new and, uh, and I'm working on it, but I, I really want to stick with these roast my trades versus the rapid tap. And um, I, I think yeah, it's a I great mean, segment. Anybody else that submits their name for this? No, it's not personal. We're trying to have a little fun. And obviously anybody that submits their name, you know, you've got a good sense of humor if you're you're looking for a row. So I'll try and do right by all right. the traders that submit for these. You know, Mick, too, when my dad was alive, he'd sit me down when I did something bad and talk to me. But there were times where he'd kick me in the ass. All right. Um, and I think in a in a comical way and in a progressive way um sometimes we need to do that you know even uh, a lot of us traders here at top step we sort of need that kick in the butt and and uh, realize um like i said this week fomo uh was sort of seeping into my trading i needed okay. to kick myself in the ass and say listen th that's something that you have conquered years ago and it's sort of easing back in again, FOMO coming back in again. So well, I, I, saw you, I saw you typing in, you know, gold making new highs, gold new highs. I know you're watching the gold. You're getting the FOMO around the gold. Earlier today, um, it, it just sort of knocked on my front door. I didn't answer. Um, okay. But earlier in the week, um, I had some losing trades, but sort of worked my way back on that. Um, and, uh, you know, past the 50 K. So I'm waiting for that. So maybe next week oh. I'll start trading on the XFA with the 50 K, but, uh, I'm going to practice what I preach. I'm going to set that foundation. All right. Uh, I'm going to, you know, set that safety net, small profits, and then I'm going to start pulling out the bigger wood and maybe, you know, go for that okay. single double triple, but, um, being very I like that. Very, I like that. Go small. Go small. Like you were just saying, we talk about it all the time. Go small. And then when things are working, put that pedal down. You bring out your big wood, as you said. Um, I right. like that. Back to the, the roasting of the trades. I mean, I think it's fun for me and probably fun for others. Like this feels very lighthearted to me, you know, talking a little smack, um, you know, you're pointing out areas where there's, you know, room for improvement or certain things that people maybe shouldn't have done. And I think bringing an element of lightheartedness to our trading is a damn good thing, Eddie, because, you know, trading should be fun. We all know it can be um, stressful, aggra aggravating. Um, I mean, I've had like mild depression before from trading too. I remember, you know, when things are good and you're making money, uh, I think back to my early days when my desk was in my room and I would pop out of bed at, you know, 5 a.m. before my alarm went off and, you know, go watch the markets. And then there were those those drawdown times where you just were you were losing money every day you got into the markets. And it's like, I don't want right. to crawl out of bed. So um, trading should be fun. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's more fun when we're making dough and doing things right. Um, but. Uh, try and stay lighthearted. You know, if you have your, your mm -hmm. method or your strategy and you're implementing it, try and stay lighthearted. And uh, it, the easiest way to control your emotions, and I, it's been a while since I shared this, the easiest way to control your emotions is sticking to the limitations that you have on yourself, but more so yeah. on a per trade basis, framing out those trades. Uh, I want to go long gold here. Okay, this is where I need to enter the market. This is where I'm getting out if I'm wrong, whether it's a price level or a dollar value, um, you know, where my puke tolerance is. Uh, and then this is where I'm getting out if I'm right. And if you have those things framed out, where you're getting out if you're wrong and where you're getting out if you're right, psychologically, it's so much easier to move on to the next trade, uh, especially if you have the loss. And if it's a winner, great. Um, it's no doubt easier. And you can say, hey, I was right. Building confidence, yeah. move on to the next one with even more confidence. Well, Captain Roaster, um, I think we are just about out of time. And uh, I, I think this segment has been very beneficial. And next week, uh, we'll, we'll give that link again and, and we'll, get, we'll get, do this again on Friday. I think we, um, yeah. we opened a, a lot of eyes here. Okay. But um, Robert's going to be up here next. There is the link. We pinned it up top here for Coach Robert. If you got a question, click that link. 
uh, Coach uh, Robert the Riz Cooney uh, will be here to answer all of your toughest <laughs> questions. But, uh, Mick, before you go, what's up for the weekend, my friend? You get the family family trip at all going on? Um, no family trip this weekend. Uh, I got some options. I know Saturday night I'm going out for the UFC fights. Uh, I'm going to watch those. I'd really? like to play. I'd like to play some golf on on Sunday, but uh, I don't know if if I'm going to be able to uh, make it out for an early tea time if I'm up past midnight watching the fights on saturday uh but All maybe right. if anything i'll probably watch a little of the masters or something and and who knows it's supposed to be nice i'm pale as can be i'm dying to get a little vitamin d and uh change the pigment uh on my face um so <laughs> i may scary. go out and play a little golf all right all right what are you doing brother. all right you have me um uh, taking geritol and uh, soaking my feet in epsom salt um, no, I got other things to do, but, um, I'll share with those, uh, things next week. If they pan out, if they pan out, I but don't, otherwise, I don't. um, yes, Mick. Oh, Mick, look, Mick just turned into Riz. Hello, oh, Riz. There is, there is coach Robert. We are going to get out of here real <laughs> quick. <laughs> we'll see you in group coaching right, in just a gonna, couple minutes. We're going to take a break here and we're going to come back with that guy that you see in the other box here. Uh, Coach Robert and JD. We'll be right back.
Good afternoon, friends and traders. Welcome to Group Coaching. You're looking at Coach Robert, the Riz. I don't even know where that came from, but I'm saying it. Uh, <laughs> interesting nickname. <laughs> what does the Riz mean? I heard. I don't know if I can say it on air. air. Can I? Can you say it on air? They'll have to Google it, I think. Okay. We'll get back to that later. Anyway, welcome to Group Coaching. We're going to do a little something different for you. They say variety is the spice of life, right? So we're going to switch things up with the way we're formatting this today. Coach Robert, you want to give them a little more detail on what we're about to do? Absolutely. And uh, I, I did appreciate Mick's session there with the with the roasting. This kind of falls on the same thing. We're doing a little bit something different today. Uh, this is a like a soft coach, hard coach type thing. Not really good and bad, but I'm going to give answers to these questions that came through just in two different lights. And here's the reason. Uh, Years ago, I had a sports therapy clinic and I, I would work on a runner and they came in and they said, I said, how's your training going? And they said, man, my coach is so tough. They're pushing me all the time. I'm struggling with this, just on my back. And it's just go, go. I'm like, what are you going to do? Uh, and they're like, it's, I have no choice. I'm firing them. Not long after that, in the same day, I worked on an Olympic athlete runner. And then I said, how's training? And they said, no, oh, my coach is so hard. It's just damaging. They're pushing me all the time they won't get off my back i was like oh man what are you going to do they're like i'm going to give them a raise because they're the best so it just shows that there's two different ways of looking at things from the coaching aspect and two different methods of delivery some uh uh people or, or, or traders may need gravitate towards one approach like some learn better reading versus listening versus watching right and then some need a little bit more a uh, stronger approach not, not demeaning or anything just a more direct approach and that would be somebody like me if you get something to say, let's just lay it out there. We can just clear the air on everything. Uh, not to be negative, but to, to be a learning experience. So I'm going to try this. We'll see how it goes. Jump into the chat, and uh, and and I, I'm willing to do this as well. This is the first time. We're, we're not going to beat anybody up here. I'm just going to give a little bit different delivery on it. So, JD, let's go to it, and we'll take it from there. All right, let's get started. First question comes from Andrea. Andrea says, this is actually not a question. She just wants to know how she can get in contact with you and Hoag. Uh, Andrea says, I'm aware that these guys are not financial advisors, so it would be strictly for educational insight. What is the best way for Andrea to get in touch with you, Coach Robert? Oh, let's see. We'll go with the uh, the good guy here. Uh, the best way is I have a coaching channel in Discord, just like the other coaches. It's probably the best way if you want to speak to me directly. And you're right, we're not financial advisors, so we're not going to do any type of one-on-one -on -one, uh, type of training that way. But there is a singular channel you can cheat, talk directly to me or any of the coaches. Um, Hoke does not have a channel in Discord, so there's not really direct connection on there. But something like this, where you can send questions in when Hoke is on, he'll look at them uh, pre, you know reference this right here and and we'd be happy to to help you out on that uh let's see a a different spin um you know how can we make a personal connection uh this is not swiping left or swiping right top step match dating cycle thing going on over here and i'm just being very very kind here uh back to the green guy honestly we're here to help out so that's how you can find it from uh, from from discord or or, or watching the show Send me any questions, I'd be happy to help you out. All right, next question. We're going to combine a couple here. First part from Dan, second part from Christian. First, Dan says, what's the best way to mitigate the fear and that sometimes stops someone from entering a trade when they're confident of their entry? Uh, Follow-up from Christian says, what's the best advice you would give to someone who gets fearful when getting into a trade? Today, I tried to stay patient, but gave every little profit every little profit back then got frustrated and placed a revenge trade that ended up working out i was about to lose my xfa but now i'm back to break even what can i do to let fear or greed not get in my mind getting lucky on a revenge trade is a dangerous thing it's a slippery slope do it once you think you might be able to do it again right but i guess this is more about fear of getting into trades when you're confident in your setups what do you think coach robert uh, I think it's a good question and, and, and comments on there. Uh, if you're not comfortable with it, it's just going to be repetition. You're just going to do it over and over again. Try it out in a practice account, work something out on paper, and then just kind of go, go in for it. I mean, what's the worst that can happen, right? There was a, uh, there was a, an entrepreneur that talked about going into investment stuff and said, Hey, what's the worst that can happen? And can you live with that? 
Uh, if you're in a practice account, what's the worst that can happen? Reset your practice account. If you're in the combine, what's the worst that can happen? Lose the combine, right? In, the, in those situations. But it is part of training, it is part of trading, it is part of the process that we all need to go through. Um, what can you do to let fear or greed get out of your mind? That's the hardest part. It's just, it's both of them. That's, there's two sides to that fear and fear and greed. And that's depicted in a lot of the movies that we have, um, that we've seen come out through the years for sure. Uh, Wolf of Wall Street being a, a, uh, one that shows that very, very well with fear and greed. Um, okay. We're going to switch that, that over. Uh, you just got to suck it up. <laughs> uh, that's part of trading. Just, you know, you, you don't go to a baseball game to get home runs all the time or to win every single game. You're going to go there to strike out. It's going to hurt. You're going to beat yourself up a little bit. Don't let it get to you too bad, but that's just part of it. it it's the rules of the game. You play a card in poker the you're going to, you're going to get beat that play blackjack. They're going to flip an ace on you and get that blackjack all the time. So the, the hard side of this is you just have to deal with it. Uh, how you deal with that is different from every person. But if you're afraid to get into a trade and you are afraid to trade, take a pause. We've had take breaks for the tip of the week all week this week. So that would be my uh, straight up suggestion. If you're afraid of it, don't do it. Or if you're afraid of it and need to get through it, the best way uh, out of a situation like this and out of the fear is through. You just got to do it, grab onto it, throw it out there, give it a shot, see what's going to happen. And of course, we wish you the best of luck. And this is why we are here doing the group coaching sessions, and why we have Tops Up TV with all the amazing talent that is on here all day, every day, bell to bell. Uh, I always want to finish here on a, on a positive note, but that, that's how you do it right there. Boom, checking in on our chat. Uh, we had a comment a couple hours ago from Eddie Hill, uh, directed towards our very own Dolby time. Uh, actually, it was directed towards Hogue and Dolby, but it says, tell Hogue I won a one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, about a year ago, and now I finally earned a funded account. Well, well done, Eddie Hill. I'm sure Hogue's going to be very happy to hear that. And uh, yeah, keep it up. Check back in with your progress next chance you get. All right, moving on. Francis says, uh, hello, I recently got funded for a 100K account. I was thinking of starting a 50K combine as well. My plan was to take the two accounts with different strategies or... If one account takes a loss that day, I would move on to another account and see if I can make profits there so that the whole day wouldn't be a loss or possibly a break even between the two accounts. Question is, is this allowed? Would this be against the rules? Uh, it is not against the rules. Once you get to the funded level, you're allowed to have uh, up to three express funded accounts and a single live funded account. So up to four uh, trading accounts at the funded level. And uh, you could have as many trading combines account as you want. Once you're at the funded level, you could trade all those uh, accounts independently. Uh, hitting a loss limit on one will not uh, cause you to hit a loss limit on another one if you're not trading it, right? So, yeah, go ahead and trade away. Anything else you want to add to that, Coach Robert? How do you feel about trading multiple funded accounts at once? Well, I'm going to echo your sentiment and first of all say congratulations to Francis passing the uh, getting funded into the 100K account, taking it easy, going to start the 50K. Um, wonderful. Trading the accounts, as JD said, yeah, you can do, you can do that. Trade multiple accounts. Uh, and if you want to use two different strategies for a specific reason of like going 100K with one type of strategy, we have a little more potential drawdown versus the 50K. You may want to try something else or a different instrument even to get in and out of those trades. Uh, absolutely within the rules and is absolutely uh, allowed. And I have no uh, no, no red screen on, on this trade. I just want to say congratulations on it. And um, yeah, and everything you're asking can be done. And, and I do like I do like the approach. I don't like if it's you're not copy trading. If you're copy trading them, I do not like that approach. Um, and let's do say out there that if uh, I don't know, does any any of us on tops of TV that do any type of copy trading. I think Rips does some copy trading between accounts here. And actually Dakota does too. So I, I can't uh, I can't say that with 100% certainty. So I'll speak to myself. I'm not a copy trading person. Doesn't sound like you're doing that. Sounds like you're just having two different sizes, two different strategies, two different times. I have no problems with that. I Yeah, wish you the best on it. And uh, congratulations again for getting funded. Yep, and again, that practice count. If you feel yourself going on tilt, don't risk two trading combines in a day. Switch over to that practice account if you're just not feeling it. 
All right, let's move on to Mugda. Mugda says, I just blew two accounts today and reset the account, which I made a profit of $550 trading micros in. I slap myself. I've been trading for eight months and going nowhere. I make uh, halfway in the combine and then lose it. This has happened with the 100K, 50K accounts. How do I overcome this? Today, I felt uh, uh, I felt of giving up the trading today. Uh, Mugda's just having trouble crossing that threshold. Getting real close, but can't close the deal. What can we say to Mugda to lighten things uh, up a little? Yeah, first thing we can say is that, you know, sorry about those uh, accounts, but they do happen. It's there. Uh, eight months in trading. Uh, well, I don't know if say going nowhere, as you wrote in here, because you did $550 on, on micros. That's that's nothing to sneeze at there. That That's that's pretty dang good. Um, you get halfway through the combine and lose it with 50Ks, 100Ks. Uh, if, if, I don't know. I, I Don't give up, first of all. Switch to something else. Switch to a practice account. You have them. They're inexpensive enough to stay in the program until you get something dialed in that is – repetitive over and over but also know that eight months ago you said you've been struggling for eight months the market was different eight months ago than it is now okay that's just how it works it's um maybe what you were doing before isn't working and you what you were doing before helped you a little bit i mean it didn't work and now it's getting a little better if you're able to make it halfway through these combines it is a psychological thing that you have and you also said that you're trading 100k accounts and 50k accounts are you trading them differently? Are they different instruments? Are you using different sizes? And if that's the case, then uh, really dial it down uh, and and have your 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 focus on these um, individually, so you can get some type of a pattern, some type of a method, some type of strategy. This is going to be kind of gentle. I don't want to stay on this too long, but if you can't trade one, you can't trade two. Okay, uh, and if you're having issues over and over maybe do something entirely different. And I don't know what you're trading or where, but if you're struggling on NQ, trade ES. If you're struggling ES, trade gold. If you're struggling during the day, maybe trade it at night. If you're going too large in size, too many contracts, use a different combine. These are all basic standard trading things that we need to ed educate ourselves on, which is A, why we're here. Um, and go back to green that we do appreciate you being here. And uh, sorry again for those accounts, but stick with it. Honestly, stick with it. You don't have to give up. Uh, I, I heard something earlier. It somebody said there's like there's no there's no failing. It's it's only giving up because you know eventually you'll get it. There's somebody said something about ten thousand hours of doing something one time. Uh, you know, trying to play guitar or, or, or pick up some other new task. It's gonna take a lot of time, a lot of repetition. And I'm gonna go personal with you on this. And you're eight months. If you're going nowhere, that's a hundred percent better than what I did because I went nothing but backwards for eight months but i didn't quit i just changed up just structured uh changed my whole structure my whole outlook switched entirely different instruments it was because i met somebody in the chat room one time and they said dude you you're doing okay for your style and what you're thinking for training you're just trading the wrong stuff so mugda look at it that way look at it that way maybe it's just something i'm not doing right we have all these new um uh Instruments now on Top Step X, if you're using that, if you're using a different platform, you already have them available. Go to your practice account, switch it up, study them, take a breather, uh, work on a new strategy, work on a psychology, uh, and move forward. Eight months is – that's not a long time in trading. Some some traders take years, but fortunately we have Top Step where it's experiential learning. Get in there. It doesn't cost you a lot to get in. Go through your practice, get it straightened out, hit your combine, and move on. So, yeah, wish, wish you the best on that, but but don't give up, man. Don't, don't give up. It's a process. Trust the process. All right. This next trader, I think, is going to be taking some real heat from Coach Robert. Henter says, uh, I'm struggling to find consistency in my 50K combine due to the five-contract rule. This trader can't be consistent because they need to trade bigger size in a 50K combine. What do you have to say to that, Coach Robert? Uh, I, they're struggling to fit. Do the five contract rule. That's uh, use, use one instead. You know, get, get comfortable with one. I, uh, not sure why you're looking for the five contract. If you're having trouble with it, like why? That's that's my first question. As as honestly as a as a coach and trying to help in the situation, why? 
why, why do you need it? Um, are you just stacking up orders and hoping they go your direction? Are you adding to losers? Are you trying to market give? You keep doubling up and everything. Is that the reason? I don't know. Uh, there's so many traders here that are just doing one or two contracts and I'm trying to pass the a micro combine out and I'm struggling with it. If you've seen that earlier episodes, trying to pass the combine using nothing but two micros on the 50 K combine, it's a little hard. So I have to change up my entire way of trading. It just doesn't fit my particular style. So if you're having trouble with five, you have two options, um, is to, uh, one, change your style, change your instrument, change your time, change your strategy. Uh, so it works with five or, Get yourself a larger combine and just cop, keep stacking them up. They're not expensive, and you know if you're if you're losing the stuff that's in sim, so you're only losing a reset fee. So um, yeah, that's what I'll have to say about that one, John. JD. Yep, they say if you can't trade small, you can't trade big, and I think uh, five contracts is quite a heavy size for a thousand dollar daily loss limit and a two thousand max drawdown. Uh, scale it back for sure. Checking on the micros. We didn't get a whole lot of context with this. Maybe Hunter is talking about micros, but no mention of it, so we're just going to assume it's minis. Anyway, let's move on. Kevin's got a question about uh, Top Stop X interface. Is there a way to reorder the contracts drop-down list uh, on the order or dome windows? Uh, unfortunately, we do not give users the privilege of uh, reorganizing the user interface so they are where they are uh apologies for that but if you have a suggestion you know where to drop it on your top step x platform uh there is a feedback section where you can leave your feedback and we'll listen to it we'll take it into consideration all right let's move on next question comes from chuck chuck's got a long question here uh and it's about a summarize buffer. that, I think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is there really a long. buffer? Is there a buffer involved when trying to pass a trading combine? 50K, for example. Do you have to hit three thousand dollars exactly? Is there some type of buffer? A nickel, five dollars, fifty dollars? There has to be some allowance. What is it? If not, uh, if it's not public, then why? Why isn't that public information? Well, there is no buffer at least that i'm aware of uh once you hit three thousand dollars all you have to really do is make sure that you stay within the parameters of the uh i just lost my train of thought the consistency rule <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna get you on that when i get it pulled up <laughs> thank you thank you uh yeah that's your only that's the only thing you really got to do is make sure that one winning day is not more than 50% of your total profits. So yeah, you can go over 3000. They're not going to give you, they're not going to put you in a funded level account. If you go under, if you're really close to hitting 3000, but you're under, uh, what else do you have to say about that coach Robert? Uh, well, yeah, that's a, a really, really long question. Um, there, there's not really a buffer. You just have to go over that three thousand. And if you're talking about the consistency uh, target, that you know there would be be half that. Don't make more than fifty percent. There's a slight buffer in there. It's it's not going to be under. But if you go a little bit over, you know we're not going to get it right to the penny. Just as Chuck says, um, very strongly in uh, in his comments here. Um, yeah, uh, it's not it's not to the penny, and I, I don't know where that is found out or heard from. So I'm going to, I'm going to kind of switch to my, my red screen on this one right here. If you can all see that, uh, I'm going to take it upon myself. I'm going to be a responsible person. I'm a responsible trader. I'm going to do my due diligence. I'm going to look at something called the top step help center. I'm going to type in the word consistency for it. So to see what it looks like. And if I type in consistency, first one that comes up is a consistency target. And what does it say? Do I have to get exactly 50%? And let me see a description, a rule. Ah, technically, no, it's in not impossible, but it's unlikely. And that's why we built any small buffer to the back end that accounts for market fluctuations. This way, you do not need to be down to the penny to pass. So as a trader and knowing the rules of my system, I need to take some due diligence responsibility on myself, look up some of these. However, that being said, Chuck did the right thing. Came to coaching, put your question in here, had some traders look at it that know a little bit more about the program. So the positive note, you do not have to be right on the penny. Get it close to there. 
right net consistency is a little bit of leeway in there. Uh, it is looked at, so uh, I don't know specifically 100% if it's an exact amount that's in there or if there's a percentage in there, but there is a buffer risk will take care of that side for you. So yeah, that's where that's where it is. It's not a, not a hard set number that, that I'm aware of. There you go. Good luck, Chuck. Hope that helps you yeah, out yeah, and uh, hope to see you in a funded account soon. All right, these next two questions from Robert and Adebayo. They're curious where they can uh, get more information about Coach J. They want to spend some time learning from Coach J. Uh, Robert, you spent a lot of time in Discord. Can you tell us maybe a little bit about what Coach J does in there and where traders can find him at? Yeah, absolutely. We'll do this one in the normal route. Uh, Coach J is in Discord uh, with the other uh, coaches. They all have our independent uh, individual channels any trader can go to any one of them the coaches will bounce back and forth and we'll absolutely point you in the right direction if you're in coach jay's channel and you are having some discussions and it's just not quite uh hitting the mark and you go hey you know let me look at coach paul see what he does or, or jack or robert dakota maybe there's something that fits you a little bit better nobody's going to um steer you the wrong direction there's there's not we're not going to do that we're going to help you out as much as possible uh, does Jay have YouTube or social media? I, not that I am aware of. You would have to ask him that. I don't want to take a guess at it. But the best place right now is in the Top Step Discord. Uh, it is active in there. There And then there's a group coaching area uh, where, where coaches have their individual channels. And then there's one that we all hang out in where you can just throw it out and say, hey, I'm curious about this. And you might have a couple coaches answer you and you'll see which one it's like, hey, man, I'm going to gravitate to that answer. And then you jump into that coach's channel. So we're here to help. Um, I'm not going to do any red screen on this because it's a really good question. We just want to help out. Perfect. Check out Discord. You're probably going to find what you're looking for there. All right. Next from Wasim. Wasim says, hi, I appreciate your time. I'm just wondering, where should I start learning how to trade? There are many on social media. I won't mention these names, but... Uh, which do you recommend and which kind of strategies do you use for a first time trader, uh, outside of group coaching and top step TV, what's a good place to, how did, how about this? Let's turn it around. How did you first get into trade? How did you learn your very first strategies coming into futures trading? Okay. I think you hit the nail on the head. First of all, yeah, you're right on, uh, top step TV, the, traders here that you see uh we had the coaching session that that remember that coaches round table we had yesterday that was that was a great thing we threw a question out there four coaches on the screen everybody gave their take and almost every single time it was a different answer of how they take those trades the one things we had in common it was all about risk management patience and and um you know getting something that works for you we all have that same thing in common but how you actually do that and the strategy you use in the time of day in your instrument we all have different absolutely different answers when it comes to that uh, you just got to find what works for you. JD, to answer your question, how I got started, um, it was just trading these the little penny stocks. And, and uh, like I said before, the eight months just got totally destroyed. And I was trying to trade the market open, trying to catch, you know, one minute breakouts here and there. And it just didn't work in that environment. Uh, so I started just being a little techie guy and, and logical encoder. I started developing some other things like, hmm, if it's not working during this market, what if it does on this market or, or that session? Because we want to get into the future side of things. So what I did was I just kept narrowing it down. Uh, let, me, let me back that a little bit. I'm not a person that's going to look for what works. I'm going to take a whole bunch of stuff and just keep removing what is not working. And then you left with, with what works. And that's, that's specific to you. That's how it works for you. I found that I cannot hold on trades for a long time. This micro challenge is killing me with doing that stuff. Um, and I liked uh, the way certain markets moved over other markets. I, absolutely have futures over stocks and options and crypto and all that stuff. So that's just, you know, that, that's how I did it. And you know, what strategy this, uh, Wasim is asking, um, yeah, you can hit the social media and, and watch some of that stuff. Just like we are on tops of TV, he's not dissing anybody, but they're entertainers, right? We are there for entertainment. We're here for entertainment. We take losses on there. We, the difference is the biggest difference is we're transparent. You can see the account numbers on the screen all the time. We're telling you what we're doing. We're showing you the P&Ls. We're having the trades on the screen. We're not hiding anything from anybody. It's fully transparent. That's the biggest difference, major difference between what you're seeing on Top of TV 
or someone's getting you know paid to sell you into subscribing to them. So that's the biggest difference. So take it with a grain of salt. Doesn't mean they don't have a good strategy that works for them and, and you may gravitate to it and it may uh, work as you're finding your way around it with a little bit, a couple of tweaks for yourself. Um, that's a really good way, but I am gonna vote JD Top Step TV all day, every day and twice on Sundays as a good place to get started with these things. 100%. Everybody has a different learning curve, and uh, there's really no substitute for screen time either. That's one of the greatest things about Top Step. You can get your screen time in here without blowing Johnny and Janie's college fund. So uh, take advantage of what we're offering you. All right, with that, we are out of time. We're going to have to wrap it up here. Uh, coming up next, we've got Strategy Lab with Anne-Marie. you got another hour of Coach Robert coming up, and uh, they're going to be joined by Hogue. That should be a great one. When these three get together, it's a great show. Wrapping up the day in power with Andre Dolby and Max Maserati, uh, the happiest man in trading, according to Jack Pelzer. All right, with that, we are going to take a short break, and we'll be right back with some more Trader Entertainment for you. Trader Entertainment for you.
Welcome, welcome, welcome. Sorry we need to put you through another consecutive session of this dude, but hey, I'm just going to drive and we're going to let the, uh, the, the, the Hogmeister and Miss Anne-Marie take over a lot of this situation, this, a lot of this session, a lot of this segment. Um, welcome, both of you. Anne-Marie, always a pleasure. Uh, my last segment, I had my hometown behind me and I got your hometown here as a yeah. nice Shout out for you. So, yeah, <laughs> Birdtown. Yeah, Port of Spain, yeah. right? So um, let's talk. Uh, unless you have anything you want to start with, uh, say something off the bat. But I have a question. Like, what the heck is going on with gold? Up and up and up and up and up and then just <laughs> gone. Is that typical? I'd, I'd love to hear your your opinions on that stuff. So, but Emery, let's start with you. So there's a... There's a macro reason that gold is moving up the way that it is. And there's also a macro reason that, or, or there's also a technical reason for it to come back into its support zones. And so the macro reason is when the Bank of Japan adjusted their yield curve and said, hey, listen, we're gonna have to raise rates and they raised them from negative to zero it created a buying opportunity for gold as the dollar continued to rise and their currencies continued to fall. So a lot of the Asia markets and a lot of the Asia central banks are buying gold hand over fist. The problem is at some juncture they go, hmm, I think it's time that we pump the brakes right there and let's wait for a little bit for gold to come back in and we'll start buying again. And so that's really what we've seen over the last maybe 14 to 20 trading days. We had some days where we just sat and then broke out again. That's what we're likely to do, sit sideways and then break out again, unless something in the broad macro picture shifts. But that's that's what's really happening in the machinery of why gold and gold futures are moving that way. The, the next thing is at some point, the speculators that continue to pump gold up finally say to themselves, hmm, might be a good time to feed the ducks. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's what's happening today with an $80 move almost off the high that we had this morning. It's quite, I like that. quite the jump. And uh, John, duck. if you can, yeah, if you can add on to that, because are you qualifying this as just a, let's call it a pullback? Because in the grand scheme of things over multiple, multiple days and weeks, it's up, up, up. And then we have this, you know, this $80 drop. Would you consider this as not a pullback over the rest of what has been going on? Or do you think this is a, the start of something new. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I, I think this is just a a, a pullback. Um, the the thing about pullbacks, and I've been warning people about this for years, is when you, when you have a good trend, whether it's upside or downside, when the pullback comes, it is usually vicious and fast. It's like all the bids got pulled out from underneath gold today and everything just went kaplooey, right? Yes, that is an industry term, kaplooey. <laughs> um, so we haven't broken upside structure. I've, you know, I've been giving this, this auction, the longer time frame auction on the daily chart, just by looking at volume and open interest changes. I've been giving it a B, maybe even a B plus um, for the better part of this. Yeah, this is necessary. This is something that that you know a, a directional market has to do from time to time. It's gotta gotta wash out the weak hand longs. It's gotta wa it's gotta give an opportunity for traders that are are holding positions in profit to, as Anne Marie put it, feed the ducks, right? Um, and you know this is when we got up to that twenty four forty weekly kickoff high up here twenty four forty. Okay one of two things was going to happen in my opinion and, and in my hypotheses 
we're either gonna we're, we're either gonna incite a whole new bunch of new buyers into the market that that are going to drive price higher, or we're gonna get up there and everybody's gonna look around and say, "What's going on here?" And that quiet that when that happens, you know, that's when everybody says, "Okay, you know what? It's time to take some money off the table." They all turn sellers. All the bids get pulled out from under it, and bang! What did what really happened? today, Robert and Anne Marie. We uh we saw the overnight rally. Okay. Regular trading hours brought us to this important level. We could we didn't bring new buyers in above that. So that brought in the duck feeders. <laughs> what what happened? We just basically brought price back to settlement, closed the gap. That was a gap close. That wasn't a major change in structure or market state. That was a necessary pullback. This pullback in gold could actually feed the next leg to the upside. Exactly. One thing we have to be worried about, though, is there is, you know, there's some some considerable downside structure that is weak down below. Naked point of control, naked point of controls, gaps, naked points of control. If this thing does turn around, it could come back and fill in all those weaknesses and structure pretty quickly, but I don't think we're there yet. I think, you know, today we've expended a lot of energy. We have fed a lot of ducks and you know, it's a, it's one o'clock now. Technically gold is closed at 1230. It settles at 1230. It's probably going to settle right at, right at yesterday's settlement price. So was this a really big pullback? Was in the day time frame? Was it a big pullback in the bigger time frame? No, no. It was just a vicious, vicious contrary move. And I've warned people for years, you know, we got a big trend going here. When it, when it, when it cracks, when, when the buyers run out, it's going to be a vicious move to the opposite side. And that's exactly what happened today. Absolutely. Uh, hundred percent agree. I think we're all in agreement with that. I don't know a heck of a lot about those moves. Um, as far as why and the reasons, like Amory was saying, like the, you know, the the Japanese market in the end and in the uh, uh, golden into the dollar and stuff, you guys have a lot more knowledge on that. But technically, looking at this, 100% agree, both of you, that it's devastating on the day. Eh, just a little blip in the road and a real, just a little tiny little connection c- correction. No longer time frame, right? And the longer time frame, yeah. So, but being an intraday trader, we we need to keep those longer time frames in mind, and then but focus on what is in front of us. Um, with, do you think that just with being all said? This, go go ahead, Amory, please. Robert, yeah, John, did you see anything in the TPO structure of gold that said? I know you gave it a B this morning, but when it began to break down, did you see um, any kind of failed auction come into play? What did the TPO look like so that we can say to ourselves, hmm, you know, maybe um, maybe I should have seen this coming? Okay, great question. 2440 was weekly kickoff high. Right here. These are, there are I think, four four tick TPOs. Look at the amount of time that was spent above it. Less than a half an hour. This presents itself as excess. This is a selling tale. And once the market went up there, came back down and closed one 30 minute bar back down below that 2440 level, you know, the, the, uh, the odds were that it's rejecting above that level. If you're long, get out. If you're, if you're, you know, if you want to try and catch the move to the downside, I mean, it's still some considerable risk, you know, to, to, if we were to take out this high, uh, you know, we're looking at, well, let's see here, 40 to 40. So, I mean, we're, yeah, I mean, we're looking at some considerable risk on that. But if you were able to find a way into this push to the downside, it just it just really just fell apart right back to where settlement point of control from the previous day. This was a just a, a kind of a normal pullback. So if there was something in the TPOs that we could have seen early in the session, it was the fact that 
we didn't spend a lot of time up above that weekly kickoff level, less than a half an hour. And, you know, in market time, that's a hiccup. That is, that's just a heartbeat yeah. to be able to, to, to not be able to hold that important level in a, in a half an hour. That was, you know, that was kind of indicative that uh, this was excess and this gives you the opportunity to limit risk. Although the risk was pretty, was relatively substantial and we're looking at, uh, you know, a pretty decent risk on that. And then, you know, the, and then the market just kind of turned and, and, and fell apart. Okay. Very good. Very good. Yes. Seeing those single TPOs like that is, is, is definitely an, an indication for just up, down, sticking around there, and then just, just filling that profile out. Um, and, and John, before I switch over to, back to Anne Marie, can you talk about like the markets? I heard you say one time something about uncertainty. Would they like uncertainty? They dislike uncertainty in the markets. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, um, for sure. Um, so, anything that is uncertain as far as economic conditions, geopolitical conditions, are going to put investors um, on pins and needles, right? So, you know, here's here's where we here's where we are. This is the S and P. We've had, you know, we had a big, you know, upside trend since last October. Let's just get we on your chart. Oh, uh, that looks like gold. Whose chart are we no, looking that, at? That, that's on my chart. They'll switch it up. Oh, that's yours. Oh, there we oh, go. Sorry, there sorry, you go. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. So we had this, you know, big continuous rally since last October in the equities. We started talking, you know, early last week about, you know, just maybe finding an area to kind of pull back and, and rest for a while here. And that's, I think, what we've been doing. Two times this week, two days this week, weekly kickoff low 5180 offered pretty decent upside opportunities, especially yesterday, right? So we weren't, right, we weren't willing to give up this space here just yet, okay? Today, uh, you know, some new... Um, uh, some new uncertainties, geopolitical uncertainties, have you know reared their heads, and today we were unable to hold that weekly kickoff level. Um, we weren't able to hold yesterday's low. We weren't able to hold an important level. We have and still have extraordinarily high delta. We're we're up at over we're up over thirty thousand in positive delta now. Look at the 30 minute chart. What would be standard or normal versus 30,000? Well, I mean, when you look at the direction, the overall direction of the day today, it's to the downside. Yeah. But our more aggressive traders are using market orders to buy and lift the offers. But wow. price isn't going in that direction. <laughs> Price is going the opposite direction. Now there was one, you know, decent move off of we the weekly kickoff 5180 level. That didn't hold. And at that time, I started putting into, into the chat uh because Dolby, uh, because uh Dakota and, and Jay were on, which was by the way, by the way, a great segment. Love watching yeah, uh, watching for those sure. guys. Um but I started putting in the chat, hey, we're starting to notice a delta divergence here. In other words, price was starting to move lower on increasing number of contracts traded on the offer, which are market order buys, but price isn't going in that direction. It's it's kind of opposite of what you'd expect, right? I mean, if you have a lot of people using market orders to, to lift offers, you would expect price to go higher, but it wasn't. And once we took out that week, that weekly kickoff 5180 and we took out yesterday's low, that was, I think that was, that was it. You know, that was a, that was a good short. I mean, I haven't traded live today. I've been really busy, but I, you know, I, I took, I took 30 points on a one lot in a combine on this. And where did it go to? 5154 is a naked point of control that goes all the way back to the, to the 6th of March. Never so revisited. Let me ask you something. I have been waiting all day to buy the dip. Is the ES Delta telling me that I might be wrong and we might have an afternoon flush? Typically, 
you know, yes. that, is, that, that would be a cautionary if I were starting to look for longs. Demand really good trade location. Okay, very good. So along right. those lines, uh, the same question there, uh, close to what uh, Emory, I almost said Marianne, sorry about that, Emory just said. Yes, uh, John, the Delta, uh, the Delta with the market order is trying to lift the offer on that, right? The market's mm-hmm. coming down, but we have a whole bunch of buyers in. Do we know if those are nobody's in the trade and the trader comes in and markets in on the long side, or do we know if they already had a short in and they're covering that short? Are we able to see that? Because that would kind of make sense where everybody's driving the market down and all of these market orders are coming into the long side. You know, is, are they closing their shorts or do they just think, hey, buy the, you know, buy the dip, buy the dip, two legged pullbacks or whatever you want to call it, support level, buy off of it and just losing. Do we have a way to, to tell the difference on those? You, you can't. However, ah. the fact that, you know, we have all this positive delta and price has been moving lower is an indicator of the potential for longer time frame, other time frame, big pockets, traders selling. Selling. Mm. So if that is the case, either if the longer time frame traders are selling into new positions, if they're selling into new shorts, we should see a pretty big increase in open interest tomorrow morning. If we have a big loss in open interest, that would be potentially longer time frame, big pockets traders liquidating longs. Mm. Okay. Okay. It makes a little more sense. Uh, me and a group of traders, this is several years ago, uh, did this little experiment where we tried to figure out all of the retail, all of us little fish around here. If mm-hmm. all of us were long taking the futures market, we just took, we took the NQ um, and all of us retails were in a contract along. We put all of our money on the line and every single one of us is along. One dude at JP Morgan, can just look at the button and go two billion short and wipe all of us out. Oh yeah. <laughs> so basically, the math on that was just was astronomical. Like, wait a second, all these traders going like it was. It was really, really something. So that falls pretty much kind of in line with what you're saying. We got these deep pockets, these big hands, which are just pushing, pushing, pushing. We're all just trying to stop, 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 stop that bleeding right. coming in here by marketing into it and just right. losing and just failing. So really right. interested to see what those open interests is going to be like, like yeah, tomorrow. So, and at the end of the day, if you know, in the S&P and the NASDAQ, which the NASDAQ has positive delta also. I'll tell you what that is right now. It's only 4,400 positive in the, in, the del, in, the, in the NASDAQ, but that's you know, pretty, still pretty substantial sitting here just off the lows. So in your, we're going to find out at the end of the day if our hypothesis is true, if we do have a lot of weaker hands traders buying into this break, trying to get the the the, the you know, get the bounce at the end of the day. And if that doesn't happen or we put in new lows at the end of the day, that's going to be your group of traders that are holding longs <clears throat> that want to get flat by the end of the day, by the end of the week. Right. 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 So that's when they may turn and turn this market and, 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 you know, bury it lower. Um, yeah. But, you know, as far yeah. as positioning of longer time frame traders, we have to wait and see what the, what the open interest looks like on, on Monday. And there is no be great platform. There's no way to, to, to gauge no. that until we get the information from the exchange on, on Monday morning. It's going to be a great power hour. Emory, do you use Delta in your trading as well? I don't know how to use it effectively. So I always look to John for those sorts of things. And when the number gets big, I know that's my space to go. You better consider that because I've been looking for the dip to buy this morning um, and into the early afternoon. And then I saw John's Delta number and I went, rut row. Uh So um, I got the, the feeling that I was possibly, you know, looking at the wrong side of things. Not, not to mention that, all the weird news that we've had today, you know, some crazy news that says, you know, attack imminent or whatever. That's right. Iran does not want 
to focus at all. They have no desire to focus. Everybody's just chattering, but I think there's a little bit of fear that says, you know, why don't we just leave one short over the weekend? Like we heard talking about ago, right? Uh-huh. You just, there might be a tendency to go, hey, you know what? I think I might be a little flatter this weekend than I normally am, right? I know Mondays have been fairly bullish. Um, maybe this coming Monday, I, I won't. Plus it's tax day, right? Um mm-hmm. And so that might that 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 might be another uh, non technical reason that we eventually could see a sell off into the afternoon. So well, and think about this: what has been the play for the, since October, pretty much on a daily basis? Uh, by see, weakness, size by the dip, <laughs> buying the dip, buying the dip. A lot of people might be buying the dip here. And then go, uh uh-oh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's going to strip a lot of gears if this thing doesn't turn around and head higher. You're not kidding. We could have an epic power hour. Just have to. Okay, so let's frame out some numbers. If if we were sitting, sorry to sidetrack you on this, because I've got to turn my head all the way around because I've been thinking the same thing by the dip. And if we're looking at this delta that could say, hey, you better pump the brakes on that thought and start thinking about what it might look on the other side, what kinds of recovery levels do you think will make the traders more? What do you have in your numbers that are going to make the traders in the ES more... uh, thoughtful about saying, holy cow, I'm tired of buying the dip. I got to get out or holy cow, this might actually um, hold the edge and recover. So what edges do you see uh, sellers or, or buyers getting most nervous and buyers getting most hopeful? So we're just looking from the buyer's perspective if they go, oh, okay, I I recovered this line. My thought would be the one minute high, the opening tick, but that is so stinking far away Mm -hmm. that I have to look for something else. So maybe it's, I don't know, congestion low. Uh, What's the weekly kickoff low for? 51.80. Yes. Okay. That's what we've, so, we've bounced off that several times in the last three days. Okay. So if we recover that, mm-hmm. there's a chance that the buyers will go, I'm re-engaging. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm going to make, I'm going to put an alert there and see yeah. how that works. Okay. So let's take a look at what that number might be if it were the cues if the buyers were to re-engage. And then if Delta ends up working out and things roll off a cliff, where are they really going to go? I got to get out of here. Okay. So um, if we are looking for the NQ, what might we recover? What's weekly kickoff low in the NQ? 18,000. Whoa. Okay. That's, that's quite a ways. It's, that's quite a ways down a there. But I mean, it's, yeah, it's only 160 away right now. We're, we're currently trading at 18,165. Uh, mm-hmm. So 18,000, it's only 160 points away. And we know we can do that in a minute or two. On Isn't NQ. that funny that we can say that in the NQ? <laughs> <only>? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just oh. gross. I... <laughs> All right. These um, markets are something else. <laughs> So let's, where is, where's the line you think, and of course, you know, anything can happen, but if you're looking at uh, the NQ, where do you, I think that they, I think they'll hold that weekly kickoff low. I mean, if they, if they puke down there, they, they should end up holding that. Would you, would you estimate that? 
I would, I would think so. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a solid level, right? I mean, for yeah. six weeks, we've been in this range. And then going back here, that's a low, that's a high, that's a high, that's a high, that's a high. That's just a kind of a, you know, a basic technical analysis level there, right? Yep. Yep. So, okay. I mean, we've got space to get even down there. Yeah, we do. We do. Okay, so let's, sorry to change gears on you, but let's go back to the ES and tell me where you think they'll go. Okay, I got to get out of here. What What is your thought about that? Which side? Um, If they go, listen, I've been trying to buy this dip and it's getting to be 330. Do you think that is more of a time-based decision or a price-based decision? On a Friday with this time much based. delta, in, uh -huh. you know, if this is if this is short time frame longs trying to you know buy the dip, and they don't get what they want, two thirty is going to be crazy. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, comment on the NQ. We're talking about that eighteen thousand level. I just did a quick look at a chart here. I just threw up a thirty minutes. Not we don't even need to go on my screen. Um, eighteen thousand is the last time we hit that. We we hit it uh, around March fifteenth, but it was it broke through as a resistance level uh, on February twenty first. So from February twenty first, it it was resistance and it broke through, came back down and bounced off on March fifteenth. So a month ago, roughly. Mm -hmm. And it tapped 18,705 twice. So from February 21st to today, we're between 18,000 and 18,700. The, the, you know, rough, rough figures right there. Mm -hmm. 700 points in the NQ. Now, those higher time frame traders, if we get down to that 18,000, what do you think about going long and Putting a target on eighteen thousand seven hundred and coming back in a couple of weeks. I know we can't do that, but just for like the outside <laughs> scope of things, you, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, that's a long time. That is a long time. To, a couple of you months. Look at your back. chart there, Robert. We've yeah. been in that range for weeks. Yep. Weeks. For since February twenty first. Yeah. So the the that's the range. You know. The fact that we've been idling this long in the in the Nasdaq bodes very well for a, for eventually a breakout in one direction or the other. There's going to be a lot of energy yeah. behind that. Mm -hmm. but right now we're range bound, so we're selling against the high and we're buying against the low. I mean, look at the high today. Yesterday's high, basically weekly kickoff high eighteen thousand five hundred. Today's yeah. high eighteen thousand five hundred seven seventy five. Yeah. Where did it, <laughs> when did it come in? came in last night okay i mean that's where we got up to yesterday we hung there hung there all night no sign of acceptance above that level all night long the market opens today and then and then you know pushes back to the downside it took back that took back that uh that big day we had yesterday after the big down day we had the day before that this is this market is doing exactly what range bound markets do it's rotating low to high high to low we go back even further than that. Oops. February 21st. So, you know, here's high to low, low to high, high to low. Well, high, high to low, low to high, high to low. It's just rotating back and forth in here. There's no, there's no major players in this, if you ask me, because there's no direction to it. They're just kind of hanging around, adjusting their inventories day over day, and just kind of hanging around. What, 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 I, you know, uh, what, I, what I don't like for longs is the fact that, for the most part, we're staying below yesterday's regular trading hour range low. Mm -hmm. I just put, well, I want to ask Amory something here, but I just put on a volume profile on my NQ chart starting from February 21st, where we had this whole range, and there it is on the screen now. Yeah. That point of control for that whole area is 18,280, roughly. But look how the look where the peaks are. We have our value area high, eighteen five oh six. Value area low, eighteen one fifty three. So we are right smack. I will highlight this so the traders can see it if they can't see it on their chart. 
Uh, you highlight. are at the value area low right now. Absolutely. Yeah. For starting back from when this range happened, we're at the, right at the value area low. A little bit room to the downside to uh, to go. But looking at that that rotation on these, you can see how once we started getting closer to the top, and I'm talking the top of the current value area high, right around eighteen thousand five hundred. Uh, mm -hmm. We had a peak in volume. We, we had it. We had it. We had to branch out. So if I do a, a drawing on this on the left side of the screen there, I'm going to draw just the shape of our volume profile. There's a peak. In case traders can't see it, it might make it a little clearer on the chart. But there we go. Right that is it. our volume profile just like that. Okay. And we are highlighting the yellow area, the highlighted. Oop, oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, clicked a little bit too quickly. I do that a lot. Um, yeah. And the, the uh, tan area there is the uh, value area of this entire, uh, this entire range from, from February 21st. Those mm -hmm. are, I, I, I don't know, in my opinion, I'm not a very long-term trader like that, but just looking at this as a visual side of things, if we come down to around this 18,000 start going up again, I'm going to start looking at 18,290-ish uh, or 18,300 in that range for some trades. That's a 300-point range. It's up to that point of control where it's significantly greater volume than the mm -hmm. next highest peak. So our next highest peak is it, the point of control. The next highest peak is at the value area high. And that is quite a distance. It's going to have a, some drive to get through that point of control area before it keeps going up. So we'll have to see what happens in the markets um, economically and geopolitically to see if this thing is going to kick around on us. Uh, Emery, I had a question for you on the on the gold side as we saw it take off. Maybe sure. uh, we're talking about a lot of diversion stuff going on here. Um, how about diversions and or confluence between uh, the commodities and the equities? For example, I've seen for a long time now that equities are going up, gold is going down. You know, dollars up, gold is down, and so on, back and forth. Uh, it didn't happen today. Gold kept going up and up and up and up and up, and then. The equities markets were dropping, 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 and then gold dropped on it. But the equities didn't come back up again. So do you have any comments on that as to why that might be? Because typically there's a little bit of divergence going there. You know, the dollar goes up, yeah. gold goes down. It didn't, well, it didn't happen the last yeah. couple of days. And there have been – gold and the dollar have been fairly dislocated for the last little bit. If you take a look at the dollar – and you take a look at gold, you can see the dollar is basically holding support but not moving lower, whereas gold has just continued to rocket to the upside. Again, I think it's a currency risk event that's occurring, um, and that currency risk event is what we talked about. And so as long as there is some sort of fundamental pressure forcing – uh, different central banks into gold, there's going to be disconnections that we don't normally see when we're moving in uh, a, a tandem or not synchronous, but some kind of relationship, whether it's mm -hmm. inverse or, or whatever. It's, it's going to break until those pressures squeeze just a little bit so mm -hmm. you know what so i think and you know we talked about this actually maybe two strategy labs ago um the markets are moving at the beat of their own drum different ones we know that if uh normally if we hear saber rattling from across the pond we see the uh oil really cresting higher but with all the news and the noise, oil is holding higher, but it's not breaking out. It's still no. in a general upward trend that's got no fear attached to it. And fear can appear in gold and oil very dramatically mm -hmm. uh, because it's uh, one is a fear of war and disruption of uh, transport. And another is fear of uh, currency devaluation, and that's huge. The yen is in a ton of trouble, and it looks like the um, 
yuan is going to have to make some of those changes also. So while that's happening, oil, uh, gold is going to be disjointed. And, you know, I'm, I would like to say I am not surprised about oil fading, but I, well, maybe I'm not, it should be on the rise, but there's a geopolitical uh, or a general political event going on. And that's an election cycle. And if oil continues to move higher, I mean, I'm paying almost $5 a gallon for premium, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so as that continues higher, you're going to see consumer sentiment take a dip. And that's why it took a dip today, right? One of the main reasons that consumer sentiment looked the way that it did is really those pressures. And so try not to look at the markets moving together as much because I think they're really disjointed. Look at them individually and try not to trade in pairs right now. I think Pairs trading, and by pairs trading, I mean, uh, you know, long equity short the dollar, or short, short oil long the dollar, or whatever it is. Don't mm-hmm. don't trade those relationships because of what you think is showing in the past. Uh, I think the markets are way too messy right now. It's a gigantic Gordian knot. Okay, so what you're what you're saying is, I mean, a lot of the correlations that people would be leaning on in the past are just not holding. They're going to break. They have been breaking. Mm-hmm. They have been breaking, and so trade the instrument you're trading, and don't fret about anything else. Look at this; mm-hmm. it's come right down. We're at the almost at the lows of yeah. the day. What is Delta saying? 27,000 positive. Okay, so it continues to rise. Yeah, well, it's about we a just thousand took off higher about 3, than you 000. said. Okay. We just took off about 3,000 on this move down. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it was up around 30,000 before. Oh, okay. All right. Yikes. So, I mean, yeah, right? Right, and yeah. it's it's almost, you know, it's, it's getting pretty late in the day here. If, the, yeah. if all these longs are starting to get nervous... If that's the case, you know, if if this delta, if this divergence is telling us that short time frame traders have bought this dip and they don't get what they're looking for, they're mm. out. They're out. Yeah. The bottom mm-hmm. falls away from it. Yeah. yeah. But it's going to be tough, choppy. Look how thin the dome is. Yeah. This market is very thin. Very thin and very uncertain, like you said. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll show you something on this NQ chart, uh, you guys, and then we're going to jump into something else here. I just plotted the last six days volume profile on each individual day uh, inside of the value area. So for context, mm. the mm. that orange colored box there is the value uh, area from, from way back when, from way back on the, the 21st. When we started this whole mm-hmm. range, and, and there it is back there. You can see it on the left-hand side, okay? So we're going to follow this point of control from way back then. It's around uh, 18,280. That's the center one. I'll make this so you everybody can see it pretty cleanly. So there we are. So this uh, point of control, I'm having my, I will, uh, let's give it a little bit of a circle. So that's the one that I'm referencing right there. That's the one from way back when, okay? Uh, these others, if we look at these one, two, three, four, five, six days, this there's only one day, one, two, three days ago, so April 8th to 9th, where the actual point of control is right where we are now. So that's where it was mm-hmm. hung out. And that's where that's mm-hmm. the one, that's that point of control. It wasn't a naked point of control because we've broken through it. But look right. at the value area of all of the last five or six days here. They're just about the exact same. I will do a quick drawing on this too. You can see and, them. And, yeah, that's, and that's they, interesting. And dragging along the bottom of the longer time frame area of value. Absolutely. Yeah. So what is so what does that tell us? That tells us, in my opinion, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna here's our speculation that if we come around this eighteen thousand one hundred, eighteen thousand area we're looking for, and 
it starts to hesitate and starts to curl back up. I'm looking at 18, I'm looking at this bottom point of control, 18,160-ish, and we'll just take the, our runs back up there. And if we get out of that and we get through these low value areas between 206 to 250, right in that area, that 50 point swing, I think we're going up even a little bit higher to around 300. So basically to, in a nutshell, if we don't drop under 18,000, I'm looking at 18,300 with a slight delay, delay around 18,200. That's kind of my hypothesis and it's on record here. I don't know if it's gonna work out or not, it's speculation, right? But that's what I would see. My hunch is that we drop 18,000 and we cave in a little bit due to everything that else that's going on with all the prices going up and gold doing its thing and geopolitical stuff. So that's my guess. Anybody want to add to that? Um, well, my thought would be if we do drop to 18,000 or I have the number 18,050. That's okay. uh, a weird little number that I have there. And if we drop to that uh, zone and collapse under it, and then recover it, I'm inclined to think about going long there and seeing if we can walk the way up. Now, what I noticed was, and I'm gonna use uh, Dolby as an example because it was a, a really great trade mm -hmm. that just required a little more patience. And it happens at the bottoms of cycles. So on the, Dolby thought about buying the dip in the YM, I think it was yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. And he got stopped out and then he changed and started thinking about going short and then, you know, whatever. But the original trade was based on a very big line that you could really see on the day and the week and also the four hour where he was building the trade from. And what mm -hmm. I have noticed from my experience is that those areas are taking time to resolve and they're going to break down and they're going to hold up and they're going to break down and they're going to hold up. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they'll take five, six hours to rotate and hold mm -hmm. themselves well before they move up or sometimes they'll take as little as two hours, but they do take time. And so the big takeaway from a strategy perspective for us is when you start focusing on trading those daily or weekly or four hour levels, remember they don't respond like five minute charts. They take time because there are people on both sides going, this is going to collapse. I'm shorting it. And people on the other side going, I'm taking it long and I don't care. And so, and they all have tight stops right. because they're saying, Hey, I don't want to put a lot at risk. This is a cheap trade and it either works or it doesn't, but I'm going back to the well because it's a big time frame level. It's a level that we can see over those days, weeks, and four hour formations. So that's a really, uh, sometimes I lose sight of that. And when I lose sight of the fact that trading a daily level means that it's gonna have slosh right there as people resolve, that's a really, really, really important takeaway. And Maria, uh, we used to say on the, on the floor, if we were in like a position in a, you know, an important level and it just wasn't moving. It's like trying to turn a battleship around in port. Exactly. It just takes time to turn it and then eventually it's going to go. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Bostic just came out with some news here. Uh, that's Bostic. Uh, from, uh, he says, my 2024 outlook is one rate cut toward the end of the year. Hmm. And I don't know what that means, but it sounds it's serious. not in a hurry to cut rates. <laughs> yeah, you know, not in hurry. Uh, the, yeah, the the problem is the chair wants to cut rates, and his last conversation was, "Listen, we have two rate cuts coming," and so what he's hoping for is market data that tells him it's okay. But I mean, he literally said that the last time he was talking. 
hey, we're mm-hmm. going to have two rate cuts this year. So, Damn. you know, I, I don't even know what's going to, I think it's going to be bad in the long run uh, because it's going to uh, make inflation get stickier again. Mm-hmm. But the question is going to be, does that make us get to a new high? somehow because everybody goes woohoo it's begun right i don't i don't know <laughs> i don't know that's it's really that's well super we started out this conversation off about how it's uh markets are disjointed gold is doing funky things with these pullbacks and uh, uh we're stuck in a range on the nq and the es for weeks um and it's an uncertainty and we markets don't like uncertainty that's true it, exactly. it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a bit you know I, I hate to say it's gonna be a choppy market because the ranges are big intraday will have some bounce around but we're looking at this thing we're i am looking at the you know nq with these big swings you're talking you know four five six hundred points a day up and then I a day know. down a day up I right know. that's that's it's been that's, insane that's kind of, I mean, it's not like the COVID times but it's still it, it's still ranging but a wider range, which has given us a further uncertain level, we'll like that hope, I'm like that, nah, I'm not liking that. I'm just going to bring it back down again. It's getting a little, no, well, okay, we'll get some good stuff and bring it back up again. But um, in gold yeah. going nuts the way it was going on. Uh, John, you have anything to add? Uh, I think you had one more question there. Do you want to pull something out of the book this, uh, that you read? Well, the... Fast Markets this morning, I think there was some really good conversation about this. This is Anne Marie's book, by the way. If you haven't bought it yet, you, you got to buy it. It's an excellent trading book. Um, and there's chapter four in here is a good chapter that, uh, that you know, I've, I've, I've read this book a couple of times. And uh, chapter four is trading well is not only about trading systems. Dol- uh, uh Dakota is so good at just like, you know, looking at the charts and seeing a level that he wants to take a trade. And then he just lets it go. A lot of folks, young traders, new traders, old traders alike, they attach a lot of of emotion to it. And he seems very emotionless. Um, Anne Marie, can you talk a little bit about uh, you know why trading well is not only about a trading system? Um, so, you know, in in the trading takes us through a metamorphosis of our personality, right? And so we have these points in time where we learn about the markets and then we learn about ourselves. But if we are to take Dakota as an example, and I, I know he probably hates the spotlight shining on him that much because he's such an even keel guy. It's not that he doesn't feel, it's that he trades with a lack of self doubt. And this is his superpower, really. Because mm-hmm. if you or I had, I don't know, isn't his, 30, his win rate like 30, 40%? It's low, right? Something I like mean, that, right? Look, yeah, it's low. If you or I had a chair that we loved and it sat on, you know, a bunch of broken glass and only 30% of the time the chair held us, would we jump into the chair every single time we <laughs> we saw an opportunity to sit down? And the answer Very would well be put. no freaking way. But somehow Dakota has built this natural confidence where the bottom line for him is this. He does not equate a bad trade or a trade that didn't work out well to him being a bad trader. Right. And that allows him to go, you know what? I'm going in there. And when I see the pocket, I'm throwing that ball. And that is that critical space. And so a lot of people who are in the trading game early in the game, they go, I don't care about any of that psychology stuff. I just want to know about the strategies. Just tell me Mm -hmm. where to buy and sell. And you know, the only person that says that is a person who has not been in the thick of it, who's not been down and feeling the pinch 
of being in a losing trade or who just hasn't had enough reps in the business. And so when I say trading is not just about systems, it really is about managing the self. And when we watch somebody like Dakota and we go, yeah, realize that he has separated his trading from who he is as a young man. I am not the product of what it is that my trading account says. That's why it'll take millions and millions of dollars for Dakota to get a big head. It, trust me, it's going to come wherever it is. Everybody's <laughs> got their threshold. His is just <laughs> exceptionally high because he's a very grounded and centered young person. Uh, when we look at him and we go, wow, he's emotionless. What he's really is acting completely outside himself. Hey, this is a trade. If it doesn't go well, I'm not going to mm -hmm. look at myself in the mirror and go, you know, you suck. I'm going to go, all right, on to the next one. I mean, this is a game of probabilities. And so this weekend, when you, when you look at yourself and you go, why am I not taking these trades, it boils down to the same thing. The fear of being wrong is the primary one. And then when you're wrong, you go, well, I suck. Obviously, I, I don't even know how to make a decision here. <laughs> and so these the fear of being, and you know, Charles Schwab has so many wonderful quotes about overcoming personal fear. He's quite quite an amazing individual, really, because he talked about encouraging people and how admonition worked as a terrible uh, motivator for people. If you build them up in an encouraging environment, they have much further on their uh, runway sure. than if you bring yeah. them up under admonition. But he says a lot of stuff about overcoming fear. And this is the you have to think, my husband is one of the most fearless people I've ever known in my life. He's a very cautious person, but he's incredibly fearless. And so he says to me, well, what's the worst thing that could happen? Well, what's the worst right. thing that could happen? Well, you know, mm -hmm. you lose 300 bucks. Okay. What's the best thing <laughs> right. that could happen? Yeah, well, that's the, that's I make 700 bucks. Uh, right. Okay, then. <laughs> Seems like the decision's been made. <laughs> and that, that is what I, I want you to, to look at. Just say, hey, what's the worst thing that can happen? And if your answer is I blow up my account, uh, cut your size down. Simple answers, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We just have to embrace the unknown rather than going, oh, and then, you know, don't, don't be afraid of, of looking dumb. I mean, who cares what anybody else thinks? Really? Right. Who cares? Always do it to yourself. You said some great stuff in there and, and Dakota does appreciate it uh, for sure. We're going to wrap up this session here and coming up with power hour. One thing you said, Anne Maria, I want to touch on is that you said something really good is look in the mirror. I'm doing this this weekend for my micro account and I'm looking at charts. I'm looking at the mirror because I'm, you've, I think you've seen following us or a couple of us are doing this whole discipline type of challenge. And I need to make some major adjustments. My, my day training is, is fine, but in this particular challenge, this discipline with these higher time frames and micros and all that stuff, I can look at myself. So I'm doing exactly what you said this weekend. I'm not going to look at there and say, you suck. You can't trade this types of accounts. I'm going to say, what is going on with this and, and getting me out? What am I going to look at objectively yeah. without exactly. beating yourself up too bad? You know, because it's not the strategy. It's not the instrument. It's not the time. So, yeah. And it, it, it goes to you. So you have to define it. I'm going to do the exact same thing. Look at some charts, take a break, look in the mirror, come out Monday fresh, and hopefully I have some more answers. Great. A pleasure always. We have running out the time. Uh, John, I, I, man, I love you, man. It's, I have a love hearing all of these things. He I learned awesome. so much today. I took you a couple of notes. So awesome. And Anne Marie is always a pleasure. There's your birthright up there. We are getting ready right now for Andres taking over the helms and driving the ship, driving, drive, he's sailing, he's driving the boat, driving the car, whatever he's doing. He's the driver. Jovi's going to be on in. Smile and Jack, Max Maserati, uh, great guy as well. Hope you stick around. We are yeah, coming up next be fun. with.
hour hour should be a real good session stick around have a nice weekend Thanks, everybody everyone. bye
Well, 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 it is the last power hour of the week here at Top Step TV, and we have a very, very special guest joining us today, the man in the middle, Max Maserati. Max, joining us from London, England. Max, how are we feeling today? Very good, very good. Super happy. We're seeing the market, like, doing something dramatic out of expectation. So we are super cool, very happy, and happy to see everyone here today. Absolutely. Dolby time. How are we doing, my man? Doing, uh, doing great. I haven't placed any trades today. You know, I wasn't on fast markets, so I got to kind of just hang out and, you know, take in this market with no trades. Uh, I don't place any trades unless I'm on Top Step TV, so I have not taken any trades today. So first time I'll be trading will be for this power hour. So I'm, I'm looking I'm looking it. forward to it. Very good. Very good. Max, looking dapper as always. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, any trades today, Max? Tell us what you've done, what you've done up till uh, this point. Yeah, I had a very nice trade today, but uh, I got out very, very early on the chain and then I went outside with the family, you know, and then when I came back, <laughs> how much did they cost you? EA how much did they going cost down you? Like, like a rocket. <laughs> yeah, but I, I catch I catch the trade at the beginning, at the beginning. I think I, for, for, I catch it from the beginning, but I didn't stay very, very late on it. I think what I was the trade? Up, Tell us about the trade. Sorry? Tell us about the trade. What was the trade? Uh, I entered on ES 52.42.75. Oh, wow. And I, I got out at 52.16.20. You said 52.42? Yeah, 52.42. And that was the exit? Got... Sorry? What was the exit? You said 52... Uh, I, I exit on 52, 52.20. Yeah. Oh, nice. So put 22, 22 points on that one. Nice. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I'm done for the day. And I explained a couple of things to the guy on the on, on my Discord group. And then I'm like, okay, I'm done. Yeah. Oh. I mean, that's a really good trade. I, um, yeah. you know, I've been journaling. Right, so I got my handy dandy journal here. I did do some journaling last night. Oh, that's I, great. You know, <laughs> I have mine around here as well. <laughs> yep, uh, hey, I have mine right here. Dre? Yep. Hey, got mine right here. Check in. Do you yeah. have your journal right by you right now? Because you should. Always. Always. Because you should. Writing is um, the best. You know, writing is the best by hand. It's the best. Agree. <laughs> I agree. That's very nice. You no, know, I just started doing it, I think, about two days ago, and I feel like. Uh, when I journal, I don't carry around like a heavy emotional blanket anymore. So I feel light and kind of uh, springy on my feet today. Uh, I do have, I think uh, I'm looking at some targets here in, in the Dow. I am going to focus just on one market. That's another thing that I want to kind of switch up. I was okay. touching too many, too many markets at the same time. So I do think that we can reach December 18th lows here. Maybe not today, but maybe next week of 37,800. That's kind of where our last consolidation was. And I think the middle of this range, which we should probably mark this down actually, being the range trader uh, that I am, mm -hmm. if I can find it. There we go. So middle of this range would be, let's see, you got 38,064 would be the middle of the previous daily range that we had before we broke out to the upside. So let's go ahead and mark this on the chart. Something to look for. Hey, heads up. We got a Bostic. We got a Bostic quote coming oh, up here. I expect an, right. I an attack on Iran sooner, not later. I'm sorry, Biden. I'm sorry, scratch that. Biden just said that. Biden, not Bostic. I expect an attack on <laughs> Israel sooner, not later. Uh, okay. Wow. Okay. Is that going to push right? crude then? No, crude it just came out. At, uh, we'll see. It just came out. Good. Yeah. Heads up. Do you, do you know the out. beauty? The... Uh, And then we also have Bostic. Then we have Bostic saying he only sees one rate cut this year, so it doesn't sound great for equities. Wow. Okay, yeah, I mean, it looks like uh, YM is starting to head head down a little bit here. Uh, I am going to be looking for five minute consolidations uh, for my entries. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I, I got from my journaling is that I was taking trades at levels without price consolidating a little bit at those major levels. So I was just seeing my like getting into trades and just having them get ripped through. But had I had waited 5, 10, 15 minutes, I actually would have been able to, you know, basically get the same trade, but with a lot more defined risk. Okay. 
and keep an eye on these headlines. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Um, Sorry, guys. Fantastic. Keep an eye on uh, these headlines coming out here in the last uh, 49 minutes of the trading week. You never know what could happen. We do have a positive delta in the ES of plus 29,000 as of four minutes ago. We'll keep you updated on that. Yeah, I think I think ES might we might have a very nice retracement, maybe in a couple of minutes. A very, very nice yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah, but like I mean like for for me like the news, I just fall I just follow I just focus on what the candles are doing. I try to understand what the candles are telling me. The candles and the volume indicator and then what they tell me, this is how I enter a trade. Mm-hmm. Otherwise like news I don't I don't trade the news. And like until a four hour candle close, one hour candle close, I'm like pretty much like very neutral, wait for wait for my trade. And now I'm I'm now I'm having entries in, in 15 seconds. And and I've discovered a lot of things with my strategy. I've been like back testing, live testing, for testing for this last two months. And it's been mm-hmm. very rewarding. <laughs> Yeah. Hell yeah. Is that right? How rewarding are we talking? (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm no, I'm having precise entries. You know, precise. Beautiful. Beautiful. Very, very precise. Like for for example, like we're looking at my chart, right? When I move the mouse, is it is it making any noise or is it freezing? No. Like. No, I think you're good, man. Yeah. Yeah, feel free. Yes. Yeah, feel free. Oh, to chop it up. oh, you got the black background now. Is that your chart? Very nice. Yeah, yeah I mean, like, this, this, check on the top. Check on the top. It's top self TV background. <laughs> oh, I love it. I, love I, it, my man. I only use it for you guys. Appreciate <laughs> that. You're the best, watch. Max. <laughs> Love it. Uh, I'm going to try to work a short at 38,194 on the YM. It is a top of a five yeah. minute range. And since we are just headed lower in general, I do want to oh try to get God. aligned yeah, with the markets. Lower. I'm not even filled yet, though. So I don't think I'm going to get filled, but we, we will try to look for some five minute consolidations to get in on the short side. So it's kind of playing a range within the trend is, is, is the name of the name of the game. Yes, it is. Yeah, I mean. So just a little recap here. We see one hell of a turnaround in gold, almost a $90, $94 turnaround in gold off the highs of the day. Trading 23.54 right now, high of the day, 24.48. I can't say I've ever seen this kind of volatility in gold before. Crude was about a $2 turnaround, $2.25 turnaround off the highs. Wow. High of the day there, 87.67. We're now trading 85.42. At the quote unquote pick close, we are still seeing volatility. So buckle up and uh, yeah, let's trade this power hour up, man. This is gonna be good stuff. Yeah, I think I need to redo my uh, my charts here. I do I believe I we have my uh, annotations, unfortunately. Hmm. I believe we have daily speaking here in about 16 minutes at the bottom of the hour. Daily is a voter, so we're gonna keep pay close attention to what daily has to say. It's gonna be action packed power hour here, so. Let's keep it light and tight. We are subject to headline risk, which makes things tricky. Max, you're saying you don't pay attention to the news. What I do to that point, I got to push back a little bit. I think we have to pay attention to the news to some extent because it can it can stop us out for – we can't be blindsided, so to speak, by not knowing that there is news coming across the, the wire as to why moves are happening. We are seeing a bit of a dip below here in the S&Ps to 5152, maybe key level 5150. We'll see how we trade around that. Yeah, I mean, I do pay attention to the news. What I'm saying is, like, um, for me, they're not, like, they are not really important. Like, they are very important. What I want to say, I I, tr- I know when, when, when the news is coming. I, don't, I just don't trade, right. right? But, however, I just wait at least for a four-hour candle or one-hour candle to close. Because sometimes you get the news and then the price is doing something completely different from what mm-hmm. you expected it to do based on the news you know what i mean sometimes right. the fundamental works and sometimes they don't so what i do now i just focus on my on my chart and i do my analysis and i'm like if this if if this happened if the chart is doing this is the candle is closing like that well, i'm expecting to do this you know what i mean and i take my trades based on what i'm seeing you know because sometimes the news like might be very very confusing they might you know like the chart might be doing something and then the news is telling you something else 
Like, so sense the candle are the only thing that can really tell you exactly what to do. So I just focus mm. on the candles. The news come, I wait for the news, wait for at least one hour or four hour candle to close, and then I check the chart and then to see what mm -hmm. the chart is telling me. So when I see, okay, I have a good insight, okay, it, the mm -hmm. price is doing that now. Okay, what's next? I'm expecting it to do that. And based on my analysis, based on my strategy, my indicators, okay, if it's doing this, if it's doing, for example, like you see this chart here, this is a 15 yeah, second chart, right? What are we looking at? What, what product are we looking at? Yeah, this is a 15 second chart, right? Yes, for example. Yes, yes thank yes, you. Yes, this, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I only show the yes. <laughs> okay. So this is a 15 second chart, right? So, so price came, so this is the four hour, right? So price take this, let's say price take this level here. So highly likely, I'm like, maybe we might a little bit of reversal, right? So mm -hmm. I got the 15 second and check what price is doing. For example, when price take, when price take this level here, all right, I'm going what, to hey, show hit us, you. Uh, hit us with prices, hours. Max. Hit us with prices. Sorry? Uh, hit us with oh, prices. The, the when price. you say level, just hit us with the number. OK, uh, 51, 52, 25. Thank so you. So that was the last, the low of the, the last four hour candle, right? Mm -hmm. And then, for example, my indicator gave me the signal. So this is the first signal, right? And then based on the signal, the signal didn't create a change in set of delivery. But this one did create a change in set of delivery, OK? So I'll be marking this high and then the low of this candle, OK? Well. Looks like but uh, since we are since yeah. we are doing short, and then this will be my um, my order block in the fifteen second uh, will be a long because it create create created a change instead of delivery. Let me put this in white so you can see. Okay, it. okay. this is like MMM external block change instead of delivery long, right? So what I'm expecting now after this candle make a uh, break of market structure here, market structure shift here. Okay, so, and then so I'm waiting for, for the price to come down to this level and not close below the consequent encroachment of the external block with the change set of delivery. This is on the 15 second. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I want to show the precision of my strategy. And then, and then so I'll be taking it along. So next, I have this PO4 candle, bullish, right? Yeah. It came back rejected the consequent encroachment and then this is where i will take my trade one two two okay. easy yep easy one two two boom done yep catching a bid here in the so, ym and the nasdaq here we are yes we are oh big one yeah i am trying to get short See? here ym actually all right <laughs> You already took your profits, so though, didn't you, Max? I think it's not. We, 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 might, we might see a nice reversal here. Like, not reversal, but like a nice retracement on ESYM, NQ, all of them. Mm -hmm. Well, it would yep. be uh, very it's much so like me to hop into shorts and to somehow catch the uh, <laughs> catch the uptrend. <laughs> wouldn't, that, wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't uh, that be something? Don't so be tired. Did you short it? You short it, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I actually missed my fill. I actually did miss my fill. Uh, I had one one offered at 38,184 and we got to 183. So we missed that one. Uh, but I'm going to try 84s and 94s uh, for some shorts. We do have a stop built in. Uh, so this is the 50K account. So we only want to risk about $500 uh, overall on this one. But I am looking for a continued downside in the YM. I do want to see if we can get to this 38,071 area. We are short one now. And we might even get short another one. So we're going to, we're going to try it and see. Yeah. Uh, if we can get okay. back down to 38,135, I'd probably go to break even on it. Yep, catching a pop here. Very, be yep. very beautiful. Another very beautiful trade again. <laughs> very, very beautiful. Uh, <laughs> quick Delta update. We got uh, plus 30,000, plus 30,000 in the ES. Bottom pickers wow. coming in. Yes. Uh, going in heavy. Yeah. Yes, they it are. Like the a market, big number. The market needs to at least to give something back to the to the buyer so the buyer can get some 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 chance to get something outside of this crazy 
<laughs> crazy day crazy yeah and it it really is it's a lot of volatility is on the market a lot of uncertainty and as peter talkman was saying the market can handle about one piece of bad news but when you start mm. stacking bad news on top of it then uh, the market has a harder time shaking it off and i kind of think that is you know what we're seeing mm -hmm. in, in the markets here is that we have you know confluence of bad news and the market is right. you know spooked as it probably should be uh, we are currently short to 38,189, and we'll look to take one off at 38,133, and we want we want the other one to, to run lower. Okay. So we'll let that, let that marinate a little bit. We have a nice little five-minute range here, and we're just playing a continuation to the downside of what I would consider a 30-minute 30, 30 range. This might be the bounce of the ages here. And that would be unfortunate, but I still have to take this trade because it is within system. Like that. A quick delt or a quick uh, tilt update. We got 71% long in the ES, 62% long in NQ. Everything else is hovering around 50 50. Yeah. Yeah, we have a very nice volume coming in now on ES. Yep. Uh, are you still shorting, Dolby? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm this, I'm <laughs> this this close. Max, you inspired me. I'd, I'd get my bravery from <laughs> you and Dakota because you guys just put on trades and you like let the market do its thing. And it's, you know, I don't want to be the trader that's uh, double clutching every every trade, every setup, every take profit. I just want to live in your mindset and just let it roll. So, yeah, I'm letting this roll. You know what I mean? <laughs> if, it's, if it's wrong, I'll, like, I'll put, it, well, we, I'll put well, it in my journal if it's wrong. <laughs> The Maserati. <laughs> yeah, I let it roll on, unless I'm very sure. You know, what I mean, I do my uh, my analysis in the morning, and I know like, oh, price needs to do this today, and then like, if it's going in my favor, and every candle close, I check out like, oh, okay, it's still in my favor. There's no yep. volume pipe that I need to get out, <laughs> or there's no, you know, like, there's no crazy candles. There's no news. I'm still on my trade. But if there's any news coming in, or there's any crazy volume candle the opposite the, the opposite side and i see price doing something that i'm not expecting it to do i'm out <laughs> out right he's out he says gold catching a bit here about 10 bucks off the lows trading 2360 gold still moving yeah it's still moving yeah uh, just a heads up we have daily speaking in seven minutes eddie will be on that it's moving, it's moving up yep. now i mean uh I would have take I would have take a trade if if for example if this PO for signal here, for example I have the CDL here, mm -hmm. like break of my target structure here. If this if I got like we we touch to this level and then the market was on on discount based on the premium and discount oscillator, yeah I would have take take a trade. But you know the, the market just keep going, keep going, keep going. I don't know if it's coming down. I don't know what the market wants to do now. But I know like we have a very huge, huge volume here. It's it's 4.30. Okay, so normally I'll be placing, for example, when I have this huge volume pipe, so price and no bearish candle can close below this this level here. So this or I mark it like uh, high volume candle. High volume candle, so no no candle can close below this. Once a candle close below this, I'm like, okay, so we are not bullish anymore. Highly likely, so I'm expecting price might come down, and then like we test this level and then keep going down. But now hmm. there's a lot of uncertainty. I don't know what price wants to do, you know. So yeah, so you see, for I example, this trade. I hear you. In four minutes, we have a, a daily speech coming in. Yes. Yeah. So you're you're bullish Amen. and I'm short, which makes me terrified because you're in the zone <laughs> yeah. and out of pocket right it's, now. It's so. Maserati. For example, you see <laughs> over here, you see this huge bullish volume here. Price if price wanted to keep going down, price should have come down here, close below it, right? And then we test yeah. it and then keep going down. Now we have a huge uh, bearish sp sp spike, but still, it's not like very, very like encouraging to take a short. Right. Still, right, right, right. The, the bulls are in control. See, another volume volume spike here, and then replacing my high volume candle here. 
See, the scandal protected it. So now, if price close uh -huh. below here, maybe we might see a nice down, downward move. Okay, okay I see here saying. we go. Here we go. Let's see. Let's see. Uh -uh, it didn't close. Let's see if it. We have a 75% long tilt in ES, 75% long in gold, 71% long in NQ. Uh, I'm moving my stop down to just above previous highs. So we're still yeah. going to take some risk, but not all of the risk. So we're going to cut our risk by like 90%. Yeah, see, now it's going down. See, it closed below it. And now it's mm -hmm. nice. See? See? Boom. Okay. About Wait, hold on. Can you, hold on. I want you to teach me this real quick. Can you switch to yeah. my, my charts real quick? Sorry? I want uh, the, the, the James. Okay. So, Max, do you see this Box. volume I have down here? we're on the ym it's very small it's it's this right here this little bit right yeah so this is the bar it it, it closed this is this is the low of it so this is what you're trying to watch right when you are taking you want like one big volume bar and that's the one that you want to kind of compare to other volume bars around it right is that what you're saying yeah so yeah. it's this Okay, so it's this one, this bar right here. What, which time frame? Which time frame are you in? This is one minute. Which one do you do it off of? Nice, fifteen second. Fifteen second. Okay, fifteen I can't seconds. Go that small. That is so. That is so fast. That is so fast. Okay, this is a one minute one, but. So I have here yeah. the, the most of volume See, now, that came. Uh, I think price will yeah. just uh, this, is, this is a retracement. This is a retracement. See, price cannot okay. keep going now. I think it might be a retracement, and then let's see if price come down to fifty one, fifty two point twenty five. But I don't think so. I don't think price will will close below below this level here. So let's see. Okay, we might have a nice little okay. retracement. Okay, because uh, the low of that. Yeah. The low of that volume candle, yeah. So I'm going to break even now. We've already spent enough time testing around. Uh, let's see if we can get one off at 38,135, and then we're going to let the other one run if we can. Okay, so yeah. So that, that big volume bar was the one I have highlighted right now at, uh, what is that, 219 Central uh, time? On the one minute, right? <laughs> on the one minute, and, and the stick. Open of that bar was 38,157, and we are catching a little bit of a bid at that bar. Will it stay? Mm -hmm. Who knows? Uh, but then the okay, top of that bar was 38,183. So it is offering some some support here, which I think is kind of cool. I might be checking this out, Max. I might be stealing your strats and adding it to my toolbox. <laughs> if, if, this holds up. if this doesn't hold up, I then I never saw this yeah. before, Max. It's you only get a sample size of one in my book, and that's it. This has to work right, this has to work right now. Or check, on never... one, check on the one minute at uh, 50, 153.25. You have a huge uh, 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 bullish volume spike, spike, yeah, spike here. You see? This is, my, this is my indicator. This is a PO4 bullish here, right? And then you see okay. the huge volume pie, spike yeah, here. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. On, yeah, the, yeah. on the volume mode. And then so, so basically, I'll be like, this is my high volume, highest volume candle. This is uh, one minute here. So I'll be placing a line here. If price close below this level here, which means price doesn't want to go high, uh, higher up anymore. You know, for example, right. if I was on the 15 second, on the 15 second, I would have get out of this trade by then. <laughs> Before right. it even reached out there. So now yeah, let's I'm... see. As I say, this might be a nice retracement. If it doesn't close below this level here, if it doesn't close, inside this consequent encroachment here of the uh, MMM external block uh, chain instead of delivery long here. If it doesn't close inside yeah. of the consequent encroachment, which mean in price reject this level here and then give another PO4, which means price will keep going higher. So now yeah. we are just like uh, we're testing this level. If this level, if this level is strong enough, it will push price higher. If it's not strong enough, Price will just piece it, we test it and go all the way down. Yeah. Huh. All right. I'm I'm hey, I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm yep. I'm do I am not gonna do it on the 15 second chart, but I'm I'm gonna use this candle strat that you got. 
so far, uh, YM, yeah, YM Byers about as soft as uh, Mick's yes, roast during his roast section today. Ooh, get him, Dolby. So we will see you hear if that? Uh, the buyers see if the buyers <laughs> can step in here. Well, did you hear that roast today, Dolby? I did. Yeah, that was that was soft. I think I actually, uh, I think Mick is actually softer than some of the cashmere I have in my in my closet. Wow. Looks like Mick's getting roasted right now. Wow. <laughs> no, no, no. Mick, step your game up, Dolby no, says. That's a good one, buddy. <laughs> no, this is the rejection. Exactly at the at the yep. level of the candle. Exactly at 51, 53, 25. Yep. Do you see the rejection? Just... Boom. Like a rocket. Yep. <laughs> like a rocket. Yep. All right, let's trade this up. We've got a half right, hour, 29 my, minutes left attention. in this power hour. You have my attention. All right, I am gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover one. Um, I'm going to cover one. So oh, I'll, yeah. I'll put us yeah. up 85. <laughs> well, no, nothing mean... you did, Max. Nothing you did. <laughs> Good job, Max. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you never know. I just had to cover it. I, I feel like it was part of my strategy. Everything was totally fine. That's that's why I covered the one right there. It's all good. It's you all know, good. We'll pop in the Nasdaq, pop in S and P's. We are done. We are done. Yeah, really, 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 really nice here. bounce. <laughs> Maserati <laughs> on fire right now. Really nice bounce. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah. I'm still cool. You know, I'm keeping spent, this here, though. I spent, basically, I spent two years developing this strategy. Even still yeah. nowadays, I'm still working on it. Like, these last three months, I've been, like, live testing. Mm -hmm. Like, live testing, taking contrarian trade, like, throwing it all into my strategy to see where's the limit. <laughs> where's yeah, right. the detail? So now... <laughs> It's it's so perfect. <laughs> see, for example, if I was on the on the fifteen second, on the fifteen second, you see the signal. On, oh, okay, I'm not. Yeah, yep, I'm flat this now. Is a, this I is am a back to flat. Chart, right? You see, mm -hmm. price came exactly to the to the high volume candle node here, and oh, then yeah, you I see it gives me another signal. This is my PO for signal for my for my indicator. Boom. So that. I'll be entering here. I'll be taking a long exactly here. What I'll price, Max? Stop loss here, and then one to two. Uh, one to two here. Boom. <laughs> uh, really quick on the tilt here. We got heavy biases to the long side in YM. ES, ES with the 81% long uh, tilt right now, 82% long tilt. NASDAQ, 74% wow. long tilt. Gold, 74% long tilt. YM, 75% or 77% long tilt in the YM. Betting on the mm -hmm. upside. Uh, with the delta plus twenty nine thousand in the ES as of uh, four minutes ago, bulls are going to try to call the bottom here. They they will they will try. Yeah, I mean the five minute is still very very range bound in in YM. I mean this could mm -hmm. still do either a rollover or push to the upside. Uh, I'm still waiting. I'm currently flat though. We got eighty nine dollars and forty cents in that trade. So we didn't quite get our take profit that we wanted, which would have been close to new low. So it did decide to, to bounce above that. Uh, Max might have had something to do with that. I don't know yet. Max. So we'll have to check his orders later. And, and My see man. He got some bits I have nothing in there to, to do. To push, Dr. Push Maserati in the house. Dr. Yeah. Dr. Maserati. Yeah. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. The market makers, you know, the market makers, the, you know, like when you, when you, when you lose a lot, you know, I took a decision in my life. I need to. I needed to figure this out. It's like mm -hmm. either die or try. Die trying. <laughs> yes. So that's how I came <laughs> up with all these, like looking the chart, looking the candle. So my strategy is focus on volume, volume, because without volume, there's no market, right? And the Correct. big candles, all the candles are closing. You know, where is the power? You know, premium and discount. You know, I sell in premium and buy in discount. It's right. like pretty normal behavior like you you wouldn't want to buy something very expensive you just wait for the price to go down and then you buy it in a discount and so you can sell it for more for more money and then you get some benefits cheap trades name of the game yeah all right, guys, uh, I got 25 minutes left in this session uh, before the fireworks get going here if we got quiz results guys back there we can post those 
Uh, we got 77% long tilt in the ES. A bit of a pullback here. Look in the five minute. Oh, there we go. Quiz results, real quick. What we got Coach Jay. Well done. Good Jay. <laughs> Coach Jay. Good job. Top step at MP's rants. Well done. <laughs> wow. Yeah. We'll let some of these slide. It is Friday. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you saw that one, Dolby? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Did you yeah. get out, Dolby? Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm flat. I'm flat. I'm flat. Perfect. That's great. That's great. That's good. Well done. Yeah. It doesn't mean I won't try something crazy, but we are we are flat for right now. Uh, volume is kind of just trickling down. Not Nothing huge coming up as far as volume goes. I'm curious to see if this higher low sticks in the YM on the one minute chart. That has kind of been hanging out there. We also have a series of higher highs on the one minute. So I do wonder if we're getting some buyers stepping in now. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. Doing a nice retracement here. Yeah, it's kind of you know, chilling. Not a, ton of, this price. Yeah, not a ton going yeah, on. I do you think we, we're going to get a run. I think we're going to get a run of something. I can't imagine it just sits in this range for the entire time. That would be bizarre <laughs> i mean today's friday as well you know like people are mm -hmm. selling like people who went uh who went long yesterday they are s massively selling and with all the uncertainty going on so basically people are like there's a lot of fear so they just like okay i don't want to stay in this market anymore let me get my profits <laughs> right and then like one, would one, be once you, once you... <clears throat> yeah yeah, YM is pushing down, down. Yeah, now All right, hey. All right, we got something. Uh, we got some. We got some words coming out of daily here. We will maintain policy stance as long as necessary. No reason to be surprised by bumps. We are on track to bring inflation down to two percent. There's too much discussion of how many rate cuts, rather than what we are trying to accomplish. The economy and policy rate is in a good place. I need to be fully confident. Inflation is coming down to two percent before considering a rate cut. So mm. sounds like longer, longer or higher for longer. Mm. Mm, we're starting to see some sell off here. Like that, Dre. I don't I think, think they, they are either. Rate cuts. I think they want they those rate too. cuts. If I had to guess. Uh, yep. So I got those some elbows, here. scraping yeah. the interwebs for for Fed speakers. Magic words. Yep. Uh, yeah. Okay, now, now we're in this one. <laughs> Still, prices. So now you're bearish. Struggling. Oh, yes, yeah, <laughs> those no, words. No, yeah. <laughs> but still, the longs, still, you see the, consequent, squeeze the consequent encroachment is being respected still. But now we are partially bearish. But unless mm -hmm. price close inside of this of the consequent encroachment of the external block, I'm still long. But I wouldn't take any trade from from this level now. I wouldn't take any trade now. We just wait for what price wants to do, and probably I'll be checking the 15 minutes to see what's on. Oh, so yeah, we might we might go down a bit. One hour, yeah, yeah we might go down. Definitely, definitely, yeah. I don't think Marcus not gonna like that. We might go down a bit. But this level needs yeah. to be violated. I mean, we got a little volume uh, spike on the one minute, which is an eternity in Max's mind. But we yeah. should have one <laughs> in, on the one the minute. Food. Yeah, right. So we'll see what happens here. But the volume spike for that one minute candle, the bottom of that would be. 38,139 and the top would be 38,156. So Max, would you theoretically start taking buys above that candlestick on that on that one minute? Mm, I wouldn't take any, any I wouldn't I wouldn't take any trade right now on, until I no get trades, a signal. No, trade. no trades there, okay. no trades. But well, see if this candle closed, you see there's a volume there's a volume spike here. Here, yeah. you see, uh, so uh, right on top of this candle. So I, I'll be marking this level here. And if price close above it, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe okay. I might see. Yeah, see, if it close above it, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. Range if it bound. close above it, yeah. Still and it's, it's still respecting, it's still respecting the consequent encroachment. And I have a PO for bullish. If price close above here, maybe I might still thinking in a long. 
Okay. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I might take it long here and wait okay. for a retracement down here and take it long here. A similar level here. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. One, okay. Two. Max, well, what so price? Max, you're talking about taking along here. Max, what price are we looking at? Oh, taking so along. The, the price, uh, it will be, um, but it's, it hasn't come back. Now. 51, 50, 54, 50. 54, half, 54 half. Because I, I really like when price come back and we test the PO4 and then yep. go, go up. But this price is very, very strong. The bullish really, really want to push price up, but we don't know. Mm -hmm. It might be a fake yeah. out. Yeah, definitely they want to put price is very strong. Yes. See, Everything price, is you see price came out. down here to the to the premium Buyers and discount oscillator. Back. Didn't even touch the discount. And then we trace on top of the equilibrium. See, price wants what to push What are those, um, what is that, in, what's that indicator at the very bottom? Oh, it's a premium discount oscillator. Okay. Ah, so just cheap trades. So it's basically a cheap trade indicator. Yeah. Got it. So it just uh, helps, I... it just it just help with the overall analysis. So so for example, when price is down, so here I can see the bank getting in, and then it just help with the price analysis. So if price is here, this is discount, this is extreme discount down here. This is premium, this is extreme premium. So when price is okay. trending, price normally stay between the the discount and extreme discount within this line here. Never never cross above. And when price is trending here, it stay inside of extreme premium and ex and, and premium. So hmm. as you can see here, price tried to come to come back, and price was rejected very, very, very in a very powerful manner, and then it keep going yes. up. All right, let's see if we can get out of this five minute uh, this range here on the five minute in the Nasdaq trading. Here we go. Yeah, oh, we I'm go. gonna try Another shorts. push. Okay, Dolby's gonna play the range here. Yep. Five minute range, short <laughs> to. Are, are you shorting, Dolby? Yep. What? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> You're not, so not based on what? Based on what? You're shorting. Based on what? Do you have any? any do you have any? Um, what is the what is the idea behind the short? Five minute consolidation. Plus 32,000 Delta in the ES. Boy, the longs oh God, are that's so much piling delta. in right now. So much Delta. If they're wrong, though, Dolby, they're going to have to puke. If they're wrong, Dolby, they're going to have to puke to the downside. I don't know. Max does not like my trade, and I don't like my trade anymore. Max. <laughs> <laughs> still catching a bit, it's still catching a bit here. Back you, when he's back down. All this analysis, point by point, you know, even in the 15th second, you know. Sometimes, I mean, some I, people I, just want to suffer, least, Max. Sorry? <laughs> Some people just want to take their trades and suffer. I need I need a trade. I have to journal today. I have to journal about this one today. <laughs> Nick know, T, it's, it's love our is, live funny trader, says know. NQ needs to clear 170. We're trading 172 right now. I think you want to see some more follow through. Nick T, one of our best funded traders. So we've got to clear 170 in the NQ. Stop. Currently trade 174. Yeah, I'll catch you in a bit here. Yeah, I mean, S&Ps and Dow. Yeah. This is this beautiful. This is not too hot. <laughs> This is beautiful. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Just, Max, uh, did you get long? Max, did you get long? No, I did it. I did it. I, 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 oh, I, okay. One to oh, fine. But it's so difficult. <laughs> we go. Uh, as long as you're not act actually fading me actively, then I feel a lot better about that. Here we go. We just hit 45, no, 15 no, minutes I, left. You see this huge PO4 bullish in the five minutes. <laughs> Pushing Coach out. Jay says 194 is key in the NQ. We just cleared 170. Yeah, this trade is because terrible. Because price was in deep discount today. Very, very deep discount. Beautiful long. Oh, Hope you guys took that. I, I should have Gotta taken the journal out. <laughs> Don't fade. Anyway. Dear journal. Do dear diary. Fade. Don't dear fade. Journal. How did Max. you know that? Dear journal. <laughs> do fade. not fade the guess. <laughs> Do not fade Dr. Max Maserati. <laughs> All right, here we go. 15 minutes left. Uh, boom, heavy, heavy tilt in the YM. 85%, 79% long in the NQ. And then ES, we're jumping around. 80% we long in NQ. Out. Everyone's long. Yeah, so that was a really nice um, 
uh, bounce. So 30 minute consolidation. And then it ended up getting a five minute support within the range and then and then bounced. So that was a really, really good so uh, out, what? Long, whoever whoever took that one. I, I got stopped out, yeah. So yeah. I definitely could have made a uh, a case for a long there because we did have the five minute consolidation and we did have a kind of consolidation with any consolidation. So we have a 30 minute range and then the five minute <laughs> range was like down here at the very, very bottom and it was very, very tiny. But that would have been a nice long uh, if I was directionally sound because it would have been a cheap, a cheap trade. So I was expecting continuation to the downside. So it might look like this trade was really bad, but this kind of trade would have been like really good, say like up here maybe for for a cheap short or something or even further up. So live, live and learn. We'll be okay. But remember as well, like when you're in deep discount like that, and then price just take um, this uh, uh, four hour uh, low. So you might price highly likely reverse a little bit. And then if it doesn't reverse, it might retrace. So one of them should happen. So mm -hmm. that's why I was like, okay, price in deep discount. So at least I should have a retracement or a reversal here. At least minimal. Yeah. Yeah. Sony, that is not nice. Yeah. That is not nice, Sony. <laughs> Uh, it's not, okay. You can't, you can't just have Dakota all the time, chat. Yeah. You can't just be like, I want Dakota all the time. He, he literally has to sleep at some point in time. It's Yes. Uh, he's got a paper route, so you know, leave him alone. Yeah, I, seriously. If you do <laughs> like Dakota, though, join him. 8 p.m. Central Time, Monday through Thursday, for Slow Markets, the hottest new show on Top Step TV. Dakota <laughs> yes. is right. He is trading absolutely out of his mind, in the zone, in the pocket. So, so, so good. Yeah. Oh, back to my entry where <laughs> I first shorted. The 15 second chart. The 15 second chart here at 51.675. 51.675. You got to switch to your, switch your chart. Hold up. We'll get you there. We go. Yeah. go ahead. You see here, you see here, this is the, the very nice spike of bullish volume, right? See, hot yeah. price close below it. If I'm on the trade now, I'm out. You see, price close below it. And then, so we're waiting for price either to retest this level or just if price retest this level here, come inside of this fair value gap and reject down, which means like price will, will no longer go up. But highly likely now, price either being like retracing or reversing, one of them. Retracing to yeah. go higher or reversing. But let's see. Yes. So this volume, yeah. you see this volume spike, they are very, yes. very important. You take, to you the, take the largest one and then you compare it. We, <clears throat> if price close above it or below it, if you're on a trade, you just get out. See? Now price came back to it. Let's see if price will react or reject the fair value gap going down. Will it respect it? Will it close above it? But let's see. But highly yeah. likely this, this might be a retracement. You see the premium and, and discount oscillator now. Price came to the equilibrium. The equilibrium is supporting price here. Yeah. So now it's, it's did, all yeah. about like if price closed above here yep. or above this, this high and then the rest is history. We, we might keep going higher. Yeah, it definitely might keep going higher. Yep. Buyers will just not give up. We have a Delta now of plus 34,000 in the ES. We've got 80% long in, uh, where is that? It's YM. So everything's over 70% long, ES and uh, NQ as well. Buyers will just not give up. Uh, like Max was saying, discount plus 35,000 now in the Delta. As we just hit uh, 10 minutes left in this session, left in this week. Yeah. Nice rejection. All right, we got the uh, MOC in balance coming in at 1.5 billion to the buy side. Nice, Back nice. to you, Andre. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Wow. All right, so everyone okay. wants to buy. It's very apparent. Damn it. That was a house account very, trade right very there. Very interesting. Yeah. Damn it, damn, damn. I mean, 30 minute range is really nice on the YM. If I did want to take a short, I would want to take it up at 38,280 ish. Maybe thirty-eight thousand two sixty-five. Yeah, price will go down. Might watch price go down. Yeah. Yeah. 
Because it, you uh, see, it didn't close the ball. It respected mm -hmm. the, the, the volume level here. And then, I mean, and then push down. Uh, this could be some pro very... just short term profit taking as well. People buying off the lows, a little short term profit taking here. Once, the, yeah, once they definitely. get out of the way, we could see some more room to the upside. Definitely. You think about it, see, we, we all got long, got long around 52s or 53s, 54s in the S&Ps. I mean, taking 10 handles out of a trade going into the weekend with nine minutes left. I think people will take that for a little profit taking. And then once they get out of the way, could see some more buyers come in here. I'm doing Max's little sneaky volume trick on this candlestick. <laughs> <laughs> sneaky. Max, sneaky. Eh? <laughs> oh? <laughs> oh, really quick. Hashtag power hour. Don't forget about the hashtag power. I'm hashtag because, power hour. I'm not the code you went, you went short. I'm not the, I, I'm not, I, I'm not the code. <laughs> it's not your fault. It's my, it's my fault. My responsibility. It's my responsibility. <laughs> I take full responsibility <laughs> of my trades unless my cat plays them. Then it's definitely his fault. Definitely his SSS fault. New lows on the close. We'll see. Yeah, so this a big, a big volume candle in the one minute has framed this five-minute bar pretty well. Kind of want to take a long, but it's not really yeah. in plan, unfortunately. If we can get... Uh, it's like only eight minutes left. I didn't have enough time to... Yeah. You basically get like no, one no, trade. No. That's like really all you get for power hour. It's just the, it, it flies by too it. fast. It Delta. Delta. <laughs> Last Delta reading there. Vladislav is plus 34,000. As of six yeah, minutes ago, I think that go. may have grown a bit. Update here. All right, yeah, I'm going to stick a long like right below this five minute range. 35,000. Wow. 34,000. Thank you, John. <laughs> Plus 34,000. I think we got Mick in the chat right now. Yeah, right, he's fired well, up. He's fired I'm up. on 38,187. Oh, yeah, Mick, are you actually taking notes on how to do it now? You might want to stick around or rewind the session. I could help you out. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, we tried along here. Not too great. 38,187. We'll see if this it's ends up strong. catching a bid. Let's see if this catches a bid. <laughs> Yeah, Mick, I don't know if you want to pick a fight with someone who's uh, only 5'6 uh, and talks a ton of shit, because that's kind of been my defense mechanism for the last Okay, well, do push-ups. <laughs> uh, uh, we are long here 30, uh, to 38,187. Uh, Let's go. 187. Let's see if we can catch a bid. Yeah, it might work out, unless it close above uh, 51, like 50 it. to 75. <laughs> like it going yeah. up. This it's looks like a very nice just below. Well, yeah, because like just we just came into here. this count here, and then yeah. as you see this blue candle here down there, seems like the buyers yeah. and the sellers are fighting. But mm -hmm. seems like but the buyers are in control, like a little bit in control. So once we have a green candle here, which means like the buyer pretty much right. won the fight, and then we are waiting here for a close above this level. This is the the highest volume spike we have for the for the for the for the bear. So here we expect in price to appear so we confirm the bullishness of of, of price. If it doesn't close above here, we still die. Okay, we going on hey, heads up, we got ten if seconds, ten seconds till fifty five has ten seconds, big liquidity yeah. injection perhaps coming. Yeah, so definitely the bulls yep. are coming in. Get ready. Here we go. Yeah, Come on, sweet chest, man. Yeah. Upside, Boom. let's go. Boom. Boom. All there right, let's go. take it there to the upside. Yeah. Let's cheerlead this trade. No worry, no worry. Come on, Dolby time. Peace out, Command 86. Have a good weekend. I commend it to go higher for you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hell yeah. We're going to break even. I commend the class. Let's let this roll. <laughs> Let this roll to the upside. <laughs> no, uh, you, you get you get your nice little trade. You see this huge volume spike on on on, yes. on the uh, bullish volume spike, and we have a mm -hmm. PO for now. Here we go. Catching a bid. <laughs> yep. uh, Mike, I have two lots on the YM, by the way. So uh, learn to count. It's a two. It's a two lot trade. Look at this go going up. to the upside. Push, push for Dolby time. 75% long YM Dolby. Push, 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 push. Love it. 
Hey, nope. we're break even. Nothing but upside right now. Let's see if we can get above this five minute range. Really need to get Ooh. above uh, thirty eight thousand to twenty ish. Let's see if that happens. Okay, let's see if we reject this level. <laughs> 51, 62, 75. Less than four minutes. Yeah, price rejected it. Here you go. You get your nice rejection from the level, and then price let's price will li highly likely keep going up now. You see on the yeah. on the 15 second. Check on the 15 second. You'll see a nice rejection from from, from 51, 62, 75. <clears throat> We're not getting a huge let's go down, let's, 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 buyers. Let's go. We're just going to run right in. But it's not pumping as hard or as fast as I thought it would initially. Dre, calm down. But it is it is going up quite Shit. quite slowly. <laughs> quite slowly. <laughs> Mix in here talking trash. <laughs> is it Anyways, focus on your trade. Focus on your last, trade, Dolby. We got less than three minutes. I was still in college. <laughs> Danielle's loving it's it. Okay. It, will, it will keep going up. It will keep going up. <laughs> it's, it is going to keep going no worry, up. No worry. Unless, unless it closed below 51, 62, 75, you're done. <laughs> Here we go. Unless it closed below this level, 51, 62, 75. Two and a half minutes. Long positive, big positive delta. It hey, last ask, pretty, please click yeah. like, please click subscribe. It's been one hell of a week. Like I said, we did cross 80,000 subscribers this week, so we will have a bell-to-bell -bell special for you sometime next week. I actually don't know what, exactly when, but we will have it. So tune in next week. Action Pack earnings going to be action, with uh, a lot of earnings next week. So get ready. Let's trade this up. Okay, whose race car was that? Whose Lambo was that driving away from the markets? That's what I heard in the background. I heard a Maserati. I think it's Mick so just pulling up to your house right now. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, this guy, like, <laughs> passing by with Lambo, Bugatti almost every day. Ooh, <laughs> they make fire things in life. Cool. <laughs> if the world was passing by, I'm like, geez. <laughs> <laughs> 90 seconds. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yep. I do want to take profit at the top of this high here at the 30 minute range. It is, I think it's very, very doable. We got, two, uh, maybe now we've got two minutes left. Yeah, so it we'll is. Probably it end up. It is, it is, it is. Price will keep pushing. Stay strong, Dolby. Stay strong. It's strong. No worry. Highly likely my close above maybe 51, Jim 57. Carlton. We don't know. Unless something crazy happened. <laughs> Yeah, uh, my reverse, my reverse, my reverse. We'll reverse. Just a quick heads up. Next Friday is the return of Danny Trades as well, and Stock Market Wolf will be back on Monday. So get ready for that. Oh, hey, we right, got a bunch right. of liquidity just hit the market in the S&Ps. Yes. Get ready. Buckle up. We got less than 60 seconds, 45, 40 seconds left in the trading week. Wow, what a week. What a day. Hello. Uh -oh. Whoa. God. Get up. That's a very nice. Too. A very nice. What? Very the nice muscle. growing spike. Yeah. Uh -oh. You're looking uh, very nice, Dolby. You're looking nice. Dolby. Max, <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Max, what are you doing on here hanging out with this guy, Dolby? Yeah. <laughs> oh, we got the risk manager's attention. Yo. Dolby's screwing oh. around. I got, I got my enforcer right here. I got the guard dog right here. And, um, oh, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. hey, everybody, 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 <laughs> hold on. How uh, are you looking for Dolby? <laughs> <laughs> everybody that's watching right now, everybody that's watching right now, do you know that Dolby's claim to fame in life is taking an $1,800 payout here at Top Step from back in the oh, day? Boy. Oh, claim boy. to fame, yep. 1800 bucks. That's true. He's talking shit. We can dish it out. We can dish it out. That is Dolby, true. how many combines you go through to get that eighteen hundred? Uh, uh, I mean, Who was this on the roast? As, mate? Not as many as a lot of people used to do, or currently do. Not as uh -oh, many. Uh -oh. It's a different time right, back then. Well, it's a different time. Well, His bounces I'm, just bounced. I'm so happy yeah. I've got good relationships with all these people here at Top Step that I'm I'm getting ping left and right about Dolby talking shit. So here I am. I wanted to just. <laughs> Wanted to come on. I wanted to cast a little shade your way. And um, I, I also, not only do I have good relationships with people here at Top Step, um, 
one of my good dear friends is also on the creative side of things. So I had her whip up a little something uh, for everybody's. <laughs> Get him, Mick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's my man. Cool. So, oh, God. Like, I hate uh, that joke. That's one of my least favorite jokes. <laughs> <laughs> one of my well, least favorite. Well, Nick perfect. Dobby. God damn it, Chad. Uh, <laughs> damn Dobby it. Dobby, thank you very much. <laughs> the Dobby uh, joke. Is in trouble. The talented the Dobby and powerful joke is one Abby. Of the worst. <laughs> uh, so, how did, you, all right, how did well, you know my weak spot? How did you know my weak spot? I've got people everywhere. I've got people everywhere, Dobby. I've got people everywhere. <laughs> Dobby. Oh You're not safe. You're not safe, Dobby. Right. You're not safe. Uh, no, all right, right, boys and girls. <laughs> that was right. cool. Does it feel like Friday or does it feel like Friday? Yeah, hey, Mick, let's get a drink, okay. buddy. Where you at? I know, I know. It's been a while since we uh, we stayed late at Machine Engineered, that spot in Wicker Park. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, I stopped drinking for like six months after that. <laughs> right there. Actually, <laughs> I, I can have that effect on people. Are you going? Are you going to Supper Club next week, Dolby? Or, I mean, Dobby, I so. Excuse me. I think so. Right. I think when I have to. Yeah, it looks nice. good. It looks All really right. good. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, there will be a pie fight at that dinner. <laughs> Great week. Great week. How do you take it away? That was awesome. All right, my friends. Uh, appreciate you being here with us today. Going to take a look into what we've got uh, for next week. Now, next week, Monday, early bird special, meat on the bone. we got our core retail sales. We also do have the uh, uh, retail sales. We've got, uh, oopsie, let's see here real quick here. We also do have retail inventory, six months, three months, bill auction, Atlanta Fed, GDP, and uh, we do have uh, FOMC member daily speaking again if they do speak. Um, off to the menu for tomorrow, for Monday, the 15th, which is our good friend Robert uh, Riz Cooney uh, will be his birthday. And of, of course, you know, April 15th, if you're here in the States, get your taxes in. I think they give you a one day grace period. But uh, early bird, we're going to be having an eight o'clock open. Uh, opening call with Hogue and Stock Market Wolf. Uh, coming in the fast markets, Andre MP, Stock Market Wolf, Hogue, and Deanna. Oh, this is looking good already. Uh, power players, Peter Tuckman, yes, the Einstein of Wall Street. Dolby, myself, and Robert will be in power players. Top quiz, Jack and Bonnie. We've got Andre and Mick for the shoulder tap, JD Ho and Hogue for group coaching. The afternoon segment is going to be Dolby, Hogue, and Anne Marie for Strategy Lab. And to end that day, yes, the dynamic duo, once again, Andre Dolby and Daniel Inski. Um, don't forget, we do have at the buzzer. That's going to be the only, um, I think, uh, the only uh, Discord coaching uh, for today. That's going to be Coach J and Coach Paul. Uh, but otherwise, very nice to have you with us here this week. I hope you learned something, and I hope you moved your trading uh, knowledge and education forward. But, uh, hey, I'm Eddie, and this has been Top Step TV. Stick around for this tune. See you later. Take care.